and we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye. Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even after we finish broadcasting live? Just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one PMP with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to sewingstreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Sewing Street is now available on Virgin Media, channel number 754. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? Check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Hello, welcome back. I must say, there is a really lovely sort of seamless blend into each hour today because this also has a bit of a Japanese feel to the panel and Sarah actually did Sashiko on the back of her bag. So it's all works in line with each other today. Now, flip and stitch. This is a technique I've never seen before. Sarah. Really? How exciting. So I'm excited to see how it's done. And it's nice that you can sort of I suppose transfer this skills as well. Is it something that you would have on a quilt? Or? You can have it on a quilt or it makes up into a really nice cushion as well. Nice. So it makes quite a strong fabric because of the way you've created it. So okay. um, it's quite good in anything that needs strength like bags. Brilliant. Uh, so the flip and stitch tote bag comes with a, a massive amount of fabric here. So you've got your instructions as always, which is brilliant. You're then getting a whole metre of denim so that's gonna be for the back and for the lining and i'm presuming you'll have back and facing in the denim back and you'll have and a good amount left over yeah because it's wide isn't it it's there's, a really nice denim as well there's a lot in there you then get a meter of your um like duck egg blue your cotton which is really nice is this for the lining, lining? and then Good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody today? I'm shouting and now I'll calm down now. How are you all? We had a fabulous day at the NEC yesterday. Look at my hair. Um, it's, uh, well, it's not hardly, is it? Uh, how are you all? When is this rain going to stop? When are the floods going to go away? When am I going to drive into work normally? Uh, anyway, moan over. Oh, oh! What happened then? Uh, anyway, shall we do today's early bird? Now we couldn't... Oh, oh, it's there, it's there. Ollie had trouble finding that the other day. Here we go then, today's early bird. Now, this shouldn't be an early bird. Uh, this is our studio sample, but this shouldn't be an early bird. Look. It's a bridge, water, stitch remover. Now, I know we've had... Uh, have we all checked that it's charged up? <laughs> uh, anyway, you know what it says? It looks like a little lady shave, but it's for... 
Yes, you know the Philips Lady Shave. Oh, there we go. Nicely charged up. You charge it up like this. Uh, you have got a little empty bottle there and you've got a little brush to clean it. What's it for, you saying? Well, it's to un it's basically, Sally Ann Harrison came in one day, didn't she, years ago, going, and she had a lady shave with her. And I said, oh, beard trimmer, a beard trimmer with her. And I said, what have you got that for? She said, undoing my... Anyway, she bought me one. Uh, and then we found this. And this is, it's like a, a little trimmer, but for, for, for removing stitches. Um, I know, if you can see on this side here, Look at this. Charlie did, I asked Charlie to do some stitching for me from one pick, and he's uh, uh, embroidered his own name on this piece of fabric. Uh, safe on that side, so it won't, um, it won't uh, ruin your fabric. And then on this side, if you can see there, can you see how it just goes backwards and forwards, and it takes them out? Right, should be £34.99. pence. Early bird special. Woo! £29.99. £5 off. Five pounds off. Ah, oh, no, brilliant, isn't it? Now, you can do it a different way. We have got films and everything to show. Oh, look, Charlie's done all these different... My word, look, Charlie's been busy on the machine this morning, the thing. Um, you can do it like this to just set it off. Oh, so it kind of takes away the stitches straight away. Doesn't damage your fabric whatsoever. And then the, what I like to then do is just kind of... I don't know if I've done that enough, but open it up. There you go. Oh, it's taken all those out straight away, look. And then literally just run along inside here. Uh, really good for if you've done patchwork and you've got 1.8 millimetre or foundation papers, you've got 1.8 millimetre um, stitches. Uh, fantastic. You can move a jeans pocket, you can move embroidery. Oh, there you go. How brilliant is that? 29.99. Uh, Sue so said, good morning, John. How's the voice today? Well, it sounds a bit better, actually, doesn't it? it sounds a bit better today. Oh, you did it the other day, Ben. Oh, Ben, I'll say this. Oh, it was dreadful. Claire says, good morning. Delia says, good morning. Love the shirt you wore yesterday. I was, at, I was at the NEC yesterday. I was trying to think where I was yesterday. Uh, June Marsh says, holding on to my seat after the camera tilt. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was um, Big Dan's fault, that one. Jill says, morning. Violet says, morning, John. Good to see you yesterday. Have a lovely day. Did you have a lovely birthday? Violet's husband, a very handsome man he is too, he bought her an Elna 782 for her birthday and then took her around the stone for pleasure yesterday and said, buy what you like. He's a keeper, isn't he? Uh, anyway, Patricia says, morning, John. Love you. Thank you, Patricia. The other Jan says, good morning, John and all. Good morning, Jan. 29.99. Make sure you go through for this. And once you've bought it, that should be in P paid for for the day, remember? Message on my bottom. Morning, John. I had one for Christmas. Best thing ever. What, one of these? They are good, aren't they? Uh, Deborah says, good morning. Delia says, I love this one too, meaning this shirt. Marcia! I've got Mar I, It's so funny. I just put on the dressing room and thought this is Marcia's favourite shirt. wonder if she'll be watching today. Good morning, lovely John team. You know what I'm thinking. Favourite shirt. There you go. Uh, anyway, uh, now, have we got one of you uh, taking off embroidery? A film with it taken off embroidery? And I'll just carry on with this one here. I'm not going to unpick the Charlie one. I'll just throw that in the bin later. Oh, thank you, Dad. Leave it on that side. That's perfect. Thank you. Didn't have time to make my... Oh, here you go. Here's the embroidery. Oh, I haven't seen that one before. There you go. That's the back of it there. Beautiful. $29.99. Check out, check out, check out. $29.99. You've heard people saying how much they love it. Go and check the Fifus. Go and check the Fifus. He's going a bit fast on that one. I'm presuming it's a boy, anyway. A boy or a girl? Are they ladies' hands? Oh, OK. I think your uh, Alice needs to moisturise more than if your Alice's hands are like that. Anyway, let's move on. 29 99 check out, check out, check out. Loads in baskets. Make sure you check out on that on today's early bird. Right, shall we have a look at today's menu? Do you know what? The other day, they didn't even have a menu ready. Oh, it was kale. Ollie. Ollie was directing that day. Uh, we've got sewing room gadgets at 8 o'clock. At uh, 9 o'clock, we've got the market day bag with Lucy. Now, it's not just one bag. The pattern has two bags in it. I know. Uh, now, at uh, 10 o'clock, we've got Permin of Copenhagen embroidery kits. Now, it's cross-stitch. It's cross-stitch this month. 
Uh, so a lovely Helen McCook's in to do that. So um, we're doing cross stitch. Uh, then at 11 o'clock, we've got the Clarendon bag. Again, there are two... What's that in the background? Oh, is, is that the green machine? Is that funny? It looks... Uh, there you go, uh, in PU. And then at 12 o'clock, we've got burying accessories and we've got a bit of hard danger. Bit of hard danger in that hour. Oh, sorry, got sweat in the picture there. Hard danger in that hour. Uh, now, three ways you can get in touch. First way is by email. Studio at sewingstreet.com. Studio at sewingstreet.com. Second way is Facebook Live, which is the ones I've been shouting at. Uh, Hilary says, lovely shirt, John. Thank you. Sharon says, good morning, John and team. Back off my holidays. I did a social with Lucy last night. Really enjoyed it. There you go. Uh, I wonder why she looked tired. And then the third way is uh, by the website, www.sewingstreet.com. You go there, your top right-hand corner, click on watch the show live. There you are, the white box on the right-hand side, write your message in there, and they're the ones that come on the bottom later. Scroll down the page, and in a minute, there will be two columns. Uh, the left-hand column with things you've seen so far. The right-hand column is things that are coming up on today's show. So here's your gadgets and tools. Gizmos. Magnet, uh, their pin thingies, pin catchers. You've got your vacuum there. You've got your thing to put on your ruler. You've got your Acupops. I've not got those little pegs. Don't know why they're there. Saddle stitch thingy pony. Uh, we haven't got those lights either. Maybe they thought it was Christmas. Little lights. Oh, the LSO iron. 99 99 It is not 99 It's not. It goes to 85 99 uh, then we've got that. We haven't got many of those things left, the ones that look like big old phones. Um, and then what else we got there? Thread cutters, all sorts of things. Keep going, keep going. It's, it's slowing down. There you go. Lucy's first out there. Beautiful pattern on its own and bundles and a couple of the panels on their own as well. Handles, retro, all sorts going on. Rivety ones, sewy on ones. Frogs. Oh, rivet. Uh, then we've got, here you go, Helen McCook. Look, aren't these beautiful? Oh, are there? Oh, he just does get crashed. I wasn't told that's in prep. And uh, there's a bit of hard danger. We're doing the hard danger at 11 o'clock, not at 9 o'clock. Then Lucy's back with her second bag pattern. I think it's called the Clarendon. Hang on, here we go. It'll be there in a minute. Zip pulls, four ninety nine. look. Yeah, you go, the Clarendon. Beautiful. There's some things in that hour that, oh, well, no, there's wash away quilters tape. You'll need some of that. Visaline Lamy Flix Glossy. I met the lady from uh, Visalina yesterday. Yeah, okay, Visalina. Visalina. Beautiful. Then we move on to... Oh, oh, there you go, here you go, Bowen. Now, last time we did these um, needles, by the time we got to the hour, they'd all sold out. Oh, ignore all of those, they're not in it. The arch ones, they're not in it. Ignore those. Now, did we ask, did we ask Helen about her little scissors? Because we haven't got those on the trolley for some reason. Oh, yeah, ignore it, ignore it, no, 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 no. Yeah. It needs to have a picture with it, Charlie. Oh, there you go. Who's doing it? Beautiful. Anyway, there they all are, the bowhins there. Yep, yeah, right, so let's get started then. What we started with, did you say? Ruler safety handle, because it's limited stock now. Oh, uh, I can get it myself. Oh, they sent me a new one. I know. I just, oh, hang on, ring, ring. I'm waiting for Paul to ring back. He hasn't ring back yet. Not little Paul. Um, buy a Paul upstairs. Little Paul was in last week, the week before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he just had one shift, I think, that was all. Right, I'll, I'll just pick up a little ruler because I can't find a big one at the moment. Right, so this is... Oh, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't do it on a little ruler. That won't fit on there, will it? Where are the long ruler? Oh, here, I can do that big square one there. This is when you want to hold a ruler, but you don't want it. You won't need it with creative, gri uh, creative grids, but if you've got a slippy ruler, what you can do with this, see this here, the two suction pads, you push those down, you press that down there and that down there, which causes a vacuum. And then you can lift up, you see, so you can do all your cutting 
like this. Your hand's miles away from the rotary cutter and it holds the ruler. Now, when Jane Alcock had a shop in Eccleshall, in fact, there was a lady at the show yesterday who used to shop in her uh, shop in Eccleshall. Um, she used to keep one on the ruler all the time, the 24 and a half by 6 and a half, and so she'd cut her fabrics with it all the time. So she never had to worry about cutting a hand or, or it slipping or anything like that. Nine ninety nine. Uh, hello, Alan. I'm feeling good. Thank you. Uh, Margaret says, good morning, John, Dan, Ben and Charlie. Oh. Uh, nine ninety nine. She's, she's, she's uh, on it today because she had an early night last night. Uh, nine pounds and ninety nine pence. Oh, half the stocks in baskets. Half the stocks in baskets. Not got many of these now. I've not got many. And then when you want to take it off, what you do is you release that one there, you release that one there. Now, I had an issue with this the other day, didn't I? Because it... Yeah, no, but even with lifting the lip, it wouldn't work the other day. There you go, that one's worked. And then this is the one that doesn't want to work. <laughs> you know, it's not going to come off straight away, don't you? Isn't it funny? It's yeah. always the same way. I don't know, maybe I, maybe I should have done that one first. No? That's really weird. It's because I've made my, my uh, vacuum so strong. Both of them are stuck now, look. It will come off, I promise you. There you go, that one's come off. But it's just this one that doesn't want to come off. Come on, Dan. Is Dan going to do it for me? Just what, Dan? Stop muttering. It's, it's not difficult, really. Just we can't, with boys who can't multitask. Anyway, he's going to take it away, Dan. <laughs> £9.99, £9.99. Beautiful. Right. What's next? June Taylor seam ones. Ben's favourite thing. If you don't want to use a roller, now they have that new... I saw Rebecca Reed had a brand new um, seam roller. It looked lovely. When I came to it the next day, it's all sold out. $13.99. So, what, yes, she is in Canada now. On holiday, visiting her boy. So, what you can do... What, what? Yeah. Uh, beautiful 13 99 so you can uh, uh, press open seams like that. You can even put this on your iron, warm it up, which helps it even more. Susie Duncan uses these all the time. Have we got the Bell Dre bobble remover in stock? I don't think we have. I've not seen it for ages, Margaret. Oh, and the studio sample's gone walking as well. The D bobbler. We'll have a look for you anyway. Uh, Love this show. Oh, love this show. how good the suction is. I know, Wendy, it's really good, isn't it? On the last thing she's talking about, not this, if you just tuned in. $13.99. Lovely. I think it's made of cedar, actually. I think. Or beach. No, I don't mean cedar. I mean beach. Uh, Use wand as it is, or heat wood with a hot iron for flatter seams. Hard wood. Oh, you've got it off. Dad's got it off. Have you broken the ruler? Did you snap the ruler? You used a credit card to wedge it off. Yeah. Hello, Tracy. Good morning. Good morning, Tracy. Thirteen ninety nine. Thirteen ninety nine. Just see if I've got an answer from Paul yet. No, not yet. Well, not, oh, what day is it? No, no, no. Uh, it was only supposed to be uh, 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 Kerry's at the thing today, NEC, and Haley's on a break on a holiday. Uh, but the rest of them meant to be in. Oh no, Ian's not going to be in either. I don't think. Because I went up, they were like trying to prep for the weekend. I haven't got time to prep now for the weekend. Though. We're not in. Maybe they're all just taking the day off. But Paul hasn't. It's very unlike Paul not to answer his emails. Anyway, thirteen ninety nine. Lovely. Oh, that's better. When I came in this morning, it was freezing in here. So I went and just checked. I put the aircon up just like two degrees, and it suddenly turned into a sauna. It's just nice now. Next. 
Yep. Now, I haven't got any biscuits or anything to crumble up to show you today. There's no bourbons. Somebody's eaten all the bourbons. Anyway, this is brilliant, right? If you, if you don't want to... Um, oh, actually, Dan, there's... Oh, no, sir. If you don't want to carry a, a vacuum cleaner upstairs, you've got a caravan, you've got a car you want to clean or anything like that, little, little... You've got cat hairs you want to get up, this is perfect for 34 99 What it is, it's like a little vacuum cleaner. Well, it is a vacuum cleaner. So you can do dry and wet vacuuming with, right? But I'd, what I would advise is you don't empty it before you do water. Just empty it after each time you've used it. So you suddenly have to pick, because normally if you're going to be picking up water, it's an accident, isn't it? You need it ready straight away. I only say that because it was full of biscuit crumbs once, and then I showed how to do with water. Then Kat just put it away on the cupboard, and it went mouldy because the biscuit and the water and everything like that. So always keep it nice and empty and ready for use. So this is your charging unit which you can either just leave on the side there, it's got a normal plug on it, or you see this, you can screw it to the wall and have it as your charging unit and your storage all in one, you see, like that, on the wall there. Make sure you put this, mount this on the wall though, near a plug, because it's no good being on the, on the wall over there and the plug being over there. Oh, I've got some... Ooh. I snapped it off, I didn't bite it off. All right then. Oh. Do you want me to do it? No, it's fine. Thank you, Ben. Well, I'm using it without a knock. Oh. Oh, what? It's wet where he's bitten it. Anyway, it, it picks up your crumbs like that. Now, it does. So you charge it up, right? You charge it up. You have two nozzles. This is your dry nozzle here. That's for your dry there. Oh, there we go. It's got the good. Hasn't got Auntie Pauline's glitter off the table. Oh, I so saw Auntie Pauline yesterday at the, uh, at the fair. She came to watch because we were doing demonstrations and I had Delphine on in the morning and Sandra Santangle on in the afternoon. And Auntie Pauline came to watch them both. She was there with her best friend. Uh, Auntie Sally says, good morning, John and team. Good morning. Uh, anyway, but you can also use the other nozzle. So if you're at Hannah's house and she spilled her red wine or something, white wine, you can use it to suck up water as well. £34.99. It's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant device. Loads of fifus on that one. Loads and loads of fifus. It's very powerful. It's very good. Stair, uh, ben uses this for his stairs. Um, I, I would use it in my car, but I need a longer... Uh, between the seats, I need a bit longer than that between my seats. But um, it's brilliant for the car, brilliant for the uh, garage. Uh, brilliant if you've just got a little flat and you don't want a great big hoover, you haven't got anywhere to store it. Uh, vacuum, vacuum, vacuum. Sorry, vacuum, vacuum. Oh, uh, Ben used this for his boot when he got back from Cornwall. Good morning, says Donna. Good morning, Donna. Anyway, thirty-four ninety-nine, brilliant buy that one. Absolutely brilliant buy. Uh, oh, it's all the way over there. No, you go. Stitch pony. If you're doing saddle stitch, now when yours arrives, it will be in two pieces. Dan's already put this one together for us. He likes doing building and construction and things like that. Basically, you can either put this unit here at the end there or in the middle there, depending on whether you want to put both legs over it or just sit on it there and have the stitch pony at the other end there. It is branded. And what it is, is you lift this, lift this, this lever here and that opens, you see. <gasps> oh, excuse me, hiccup. Then you put your work in there. It's when you're doing saddle stitching. Push that down. <coughs> it cl clumps. It clumps. Your vegan leather together, and you can do your, you can do your saddle stitch like this, so you don't have to worry about holding on to it. But also Mabel, uh, Lisa Lamb's little girl, she uses it when she's doing homework and things like that for artwork and things. Anyway, how much is it? Seventeen ninety nine. Yeah, seventeen ninety nine. Sounds like I'm what? Did you say? I was conducting, not stitching. I was conducting. Seventeen ninety nine. Bag making. What did you say? Leather making. Oh, leather work. Belt making, apparently. Where are you reading that from? Okay. Brilliant. 
Very easy to put together. I wouldn't say install, that's the wrong word. Assemble. Assemble is the word they're looking for. So, but you only have to do that bit there. That's the only self-assembly of the whole thing. 17.99. Now that looks like Beechwood as well, doesn't it? Do we get through a lot of beach? Oh, there it is with the, at the other end. There you go. There it is with the other end. Thank you, Charlie. 17.99. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, they still kept the blue square then. Oh, no, no, no. no I, I don't mind it on that. But it's when you have a quilt and you think you've got your quilt's got a blue square around the outside. Morning, John. Nolan in the studio. I've got the stitch pony for my husband's birthday a while back and he finds it very useful. Does he indeed, Teddy? What's he use it for? Because the husband doesn't make doll's clothes, does he as well? Oh, couple of messages about the, uh, the vacuum. Uh, I have one of these, excellent for picking up bird seed. Messy budgie. Chris. We used to have a, a minor bird, and blimey, they make a mess. I bought this back from Sewing Street. It's fantastic, says Teresa. She shouts, say, look. Oh, Reva, sending lots of love. I won't put the message up, but sending lots and lots of love. Uh, gorgeous, seventeen ninety nine. Oh, here you go. Making leather items for historical reenactment. Oh, your house is, your house is so full of fun, isn't it? Seventeen ninety-nine. Ben's trying to make a funny joke, but it's not working. Historical reenactment. He said, "Was it your first date?" I didn't say that. I Ben said that. If you want to complain, I'll give you the HR department. Oh no, you wouldn't have to go to HR if you're a customer, would you? Just go to the customer complaints. Good morning, Lynn Tewitt. Right, moving on. Where am I going now? Freezer paper. Now, I was in the... I was, well, I wasn't in the shop. I went past it the other day. Because I have to park there. Pardon? No, no, I was at um, the top of Stratford, where Tesco's is. Uh, this is uh, freezer paper which is very good for lining drawers. It's very good for wrapping your meat in and to put it in the freezer. It's very good for applique. Uh, or, now, someone else said applique this week as well. Uh, uh, really good. You've got kiddies around. They're going to do painting on the table. Use it as a tablecloth. One side... It hasn't got any glue on it. One side is papery. One side is waxy. But the waxy side will stick to your fabric. It won't leave any residue. Uh, so what, what Mandy Shaw does, the same as Tilda, is she draws around the shape and she just sews through the whole lot. Uh, but that's already been ironed to your piece of felt or something, your fabric. Elsewhere. Oh, it's gone up again. It's gone up again. £10.80 now at that shop. Exactly the same. Was a direct comparison. Was a direct comparison. £10.80. £7.49. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You wrap your meat in it there. And it says won't, it won't um, uh, impinge on your fabrics. You have to seal it with freezer tape, though, if you're putting things in the freezer. Write the date on what's inside. Oh, that's, I hadn't even thought about that. So you know what's inside it. That's if you put in your meat, your meat in your fridge. A uh, freezer. I don't have any meat in my freezer. Kinga's watching, everyone. Kinga. Now, I've had my last day with Kinga now. She's, she goes this week, but I work. And uh, next week, yeah, she finishes next week. Uh, 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 I think she's in two days this coming week. What, what, where are we? Where are we this week? Oh, yeah, so she's in on Monday and Tuesday next week, and then that's it. She's off to have her baby. Oh... Anyway, Kinga said lots and so, lots so of love. I didn't see her when... Because the other day she came on air and we had a big kiss and everything and ba had a baby kiss, but I didn't see her at the end of the show. Oh, we love Kinga. Anyway, £7.49. She's having a baby. Iron cleaner stick. I don't know why I've been given an opening. It's not like I'm going to do a demo, is it? 
Anyway, 4 99 This is brilliant for cleaning your iron. If you get anything on your iron. Now, this has been like this for, the last, well, at least the last 40 years. Because we had used to have this at Wimbledon School of Art. And I, I have it in all the theatres, all the shows I've worked on, all the films I've worked on. It's always the same. Basically, what you do is you heat your iron up. You melt this onto your iron. It goes brown. Don't do it indoors. Do not do it indoors because the smell and the fumes are disgusting. I, I, you use like a lipstick. You kind of, and it all comes off and then you wipe it clean. What you've got to remember to do is, I'll show you on this one actually, is wipe. So you wipe it off here, but always make sure you wipe across here. Where are you going, Charlie? Which way again? Wipe across here, right? Because obviously the brown stuff and then lips there. And also... If you've got a steam iron, before you put it on your fabric, steam it, because some of the brown stuff's gone in there, and you have to steam it out so you don't stain your, uh, your work or your, your blouse or anything like that. Oh, here you go. Oh, this is Hayley. She doesn't do it correctly, but here you go. So this is Hayley. Horrible iron. She, you, you keep your iron upright. Don't do it flat. Keep your iron upright so it dribbles down. She's taken those pictures. Oh, it must have been in the old studios. I think it was in the, where we used to be before, Charlie. I think it was in there, in that, in that funny kitchen behind where Elliot, where Elliot used to sit, in that corner there. Oh, it's not a home kitchen, no. No. Four ninety nine. That studio's now a beauty salon or something, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I'm going to go and have fat freezing done. I have, I keep, I, she's got no fat to freeze. Um, uh, but I think we've missed the offer of the cheapy. We can't go cheapy now. Anyway, 4 99 Now, this week, now, have we got the other one here, Dan, as well, please? Um, we only launched this this week. I think it was under that table over there, Dan. Or have you got it back there? When yours arrives, it will have its soulmate on like this. That's what it's called. This is called a soulmate. Right? Uh, hang on, let me put it on properly. So when yours arrives, it will have its soulmate on like this to keep the ceramics safe. People say you can also hang it like that. I wouldn't do that, personally. But they say, Alyssa say you can do, right? So what you do before you do anything... Thank you, Dan. Right, have I got a pressing metal? Or can I have a pressing metal as well, please? Right, so before you switch anything, well, I'll show you around the iron. So you take the sole plate off, first of all. Beautiful ceramic. Oh, no, let's do the price first before I start wittering away. It's on three-way split pay, by the way, look. Which is naughty. We did that for the launch. Thank you. At uh, £85.99. Now, we... Oh, right, OK. We couldn't find anywhere cheaper than that. Then somebody missed you saying there was one shop that was doing it cheaper than that, right? Um, one shop. Uh, obviously, there's another shopping channel where if you're a member of the club, you get it for £79, but obviously you have to pay to be a member of the club. So anyway, it's a brilliant price, that's all I'm saying. So you've got your lovely ceramic sole here. Um, now, they call it a mini iron, but actually, if you put it... If you put it... Oh, is it gone? There's a mini iron. Oh, but you be careful. Oh, yes, there. Thank you, Dan. I don't know, hobby maker move everything around, don't they? So they call this a mini iron, but look, that's actually a mini iron. That's actually the mini iron that we sell all the time. So just to show you the size. So a big iron would, you know, a normal sized iron would be bigger. This is kind of the midway point, isn't it? Midway point, right? So what you do is, um, before you do anything, if you want to make it a steam iron, you open the back here. Oh, no, I'm having... There you go. OK, so then you put your water in here. You do not get a jug with it. I'm not being, I'm not being negative. I'm not being negative, but you don't get a little jug with it. I'm just going to put some water in it now, because you have to see this steam up. I'm just using my drinking water here. Don't... Oh, what if I just said, don't overfill it, and I've just overfilled it. I've overfilled it a little bit, but never mind. Hang on, have I got any fabric on this side? Yeah, it's over there now. Right, anyway, so you've got to put your water in before you switch it on. Right, the other thing you need to do before you switch it on is decide whether you want it left-handed or right-handed. You go, what? An iron, left-handed or right-handed? 
If you think, well, actually, Janet Clare pointed out the other day, it's not only if you're left-handed, right-handed, because her ironing board is in a really odd place in her studio, and she has to have it. Oh, thank you, Dan, you're brilliant. Isn't he good? He's really good. He's really good. Oh. Let me just get rid of some of that water, because it's a bit overfilled there. It's a typical boy, not very good at taking compliments, is he? Oh, look at Gabriel Scrappy. Oh, my word. I've got Gabriel scratches on my hand. Oh, if Luther attacked me during the night. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So, 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 look, you see here, I'll show you from upstairs. Uh, the cable comes out that side. But if so, if I'm right handed, right? Let me get my pressing mat. It's not switched on yet. But if I get my pressing mat, right? I like my cord to be on the right hand side. However, if I'm left handed, it's all in the way, isn't it? So, what you can do is you can, oh, and I've just filled it with water. You can undo these nodules underneath here. There's just little rubber, the rubber's under there. You take them out. In fact, I can show you where you can see the instructions because the instructions don't come in the manual. As other people have said they do, they do not come in the manual. But if you go to our page where you buy it from, you go to more details and then see full description, right? Look, you see the top bit there where it says download content. You can press it on it if you want. Will it show up? Look, so that's how you change it from left to right. So it means that, I've got one here, look, you see. So you can either have the cable coming out that side or that side. So if you are left-handed, you see, let me just take that off there. If you are left-handed, the cable's on the correct side, it's not in the way. It now, it now, when you open it, the cable will still be attached inside. You just have to make sure you don't catch it or anything. Because you don't, you're not near any electrics and you're not near any water. So it does not affect your two-year warranty that comes on this iron, right? So then what you need to do... Now, which is one I'll put water in? <laughs> oh, it was the right-handed one, the right-handed one. Right, let me plug it in now. Let me plug it in. Hang on. It's got a 1.9-metre cable. Uh, plug it in. Switch it on. Then you see the red light comes on there. Press your button, Right? Then what you do is you see here where it's pulsating. Can you see it pulsating? That means it's not... Oh, it's reached temperature already. Oh, ow. yeah, it's reached, temperature. it's reached temperature already, which is fantastic. Now, oh, no, it's pulsating again. I was thinking about it. It's got a lovely old-fashioned dial so you can choose your temperature. So there you go, it's still pulsating. So that's telling you that it's heating up to the uh, required temperature. Of course, I put it on number three, which is the highest one. Now, whilst it's doing that, let me just explain this to you. If you're ironing and the doorbell goes, and it's your friend Sally from number five, and you end up chatting, it switches, if it's like this, it switches off after half an hour. If you leave it like down, then it switches off after 10 minutes. However, if you knock it over, or the cat knocks it over, it switches off 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Right, now, this is the fabulous bit. Can we have the lights down, please? Having the lights down because, look. How brilliant is that? When you're ironing, to highlight the bit that you're ironing. When you, Rachel kept saying, oh, if there's a power cut, you could keep ironing. You can't because it's plugged into the power. But, you can, but what it means is you can see, if you're doing a little seam, you can uh, switch it off. Look, switch it off when, it, when you put it back up again. Um, oh, and also, when you drop, knock, don't knock it over, look. Can you see? Is it flashing? Oh, hang on, let me see. Oh, there you go. So if you knock it over, it's going to attract your attention if it's full over. It cries for help, but 30, it's switched off in 30 seconds. Now, steam-wise, you see on the bottom here, you've got lots of steam holes. You've got front steam and you've got... Or top steam and bottom steam, right? Top steam... Right? Look at that top seam, right? You just press the button on the side there and you get your top seam. However, if you want bottom steam, right, look, bottom steam. Look how powerful that steam is. Now, you see, Rachel kept making me turn it to the left or the right. I think it's better full frontal, don't you? Right, but then if you want power steam, press both buttons. Look at that, look at that, look, 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 look. And, and you can do it vertically and horizontally. You see? So, it's so if you're doing your curtains, I mean, it's brilliant, isn't it? It's absolutely fantastic. Um, right, is there anything I've forgotten? Charlie, is there anything I've forgotten? 
It's a gorgeous little iron. Oh, it's a, oh, 1.9. It, uh, no, hang on. 0. 0.9 of a kilo or two pounds is what it weighs. And it's got this lovely ergonomically designed handle. Yeah, well done, Charlie. I knew there was something else. If you go abroad, right, so it's 110 or 220, the voltage, isn't it, right? It automatically recognises it. So, so if you go to 110 or 220, what are we? Are we 220? And in America, is it 110? Yeah, so it automatically recognises it. You have to switch it or anything. Obviously, you'd need to put it on one of those um, converter plug. Not what they called adapter, adapter. If you're in America, but yeah, automatically recognises it. Automatically recognises it. Eighty-five pounds and ninety-nine pence. Three-way split pay. Look, twenty-eight sixty-six. Check out. Check out. Check out. Now, what day did we launch it? Was it uh, on Sunday? Tuesday. Was it Tuesday? Oh, yeah, because it was. It, I knew it was my first day. It was when it was with Janet Clare, wasn't it? Uh, launched it on Tuesday. Right, can I, I can tell you, we have sold hundreds and hundreds of these. So we sold out on the first day. Well, I say sold out. When we left, there were way too many people in baskets. Not everyone checked out. Then we got another hundred for the next day. They must have gone because I've got the same amount again today. So we must have got more in now. But nowhere near as many as we had on the launch. Nowhere near as many as we had on the launch. Look at the split pay, 28.66. You pay 28.66 today. If you haven't bought anything else, you pay your 3.95 PMP. But if you bought anything else at all, you only pay one PMP for the whole day, remember? I know it's fantastic. From midnight to midnight, one PMP, you don't add anything. And also, the split pay is completely free of interest. Right, so we charge no interest whatsoever because we don't send it to an outside um, loans company. We do it in-house. Um, but also, we do not charge for the service of split pay. Just saying, so you know, just saying, just saying. Very good. Now, there's loads of you there you need to check out. Good morning. I've just had an happy email saying my order is on the way. Oh, I ordered it on Tuesday. Very good service, saying straight. There you go. Oh, so nobody's received theirs yet then. Uh, I think this is. I think this is it. Eighty-five ninety-nine. Now it's it's a lovely, lovely car. Oh yeah, now the three-way split pay may not stay. It'll always be on two-way split pay, because it's meant to be the recommended retail price is ninety-nine ninety-nine, which means we go onto a two-way split pay. So each time we do it, we crash the price, right? So um, so it'll always be on two-way split pay. The three-way split pay may go. That's all. So this is the aqua version. We've only got the aqua version. Ian was going on when I first saw... OK, so bone, right? They gave me one. Paul, buyer Paul, gave me one of these last week. He said, this is your iron. This is for you to take home, to practice with, so you know what you're talking about when you come on now on Tuesday. Then Hannah sends me a message going, Hayley says, on no account must you keep that iron. Bring it back tomorrow. My iron... I came here, there was another sample in the studio. We only normally have one studio sample, don't we? So that's mine, and this is the studio sample. I know. No, I can't take it. The other thing I meant to tell you about this, this the soul mate, no, they'll know, won't they? Because Paul will come and get that one. Um, the other thing I told you about to tell you about the soul mate is if you, so when, when you get it, it fits in there. When you turn it over, it becomes your resting mat look as well. So it sits on see that from the front, Charlie. There you go. Yeah, you know how you have, you, you get, we, we sell little plates, don't we, just to, to put it down on your ironing board. So, like, so that's when, if you leave it like that, it'll switch off after 10 minutes, right? You see, don't leave it on your ironing board for 10 minutes. You leave it on the rest, the, 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 the soulmate, for 10 minutes, right? And then if it falls over, look, flash, flash, switches off after 10 seconds, but that, what, what Rachel was saying, that's really good because you might be on the other side of the room, not realise you've knocked it over, and you sort of think, what's that flashing? What's that flashing like? I know. Isn't it brilliant? Should we do that? Should we just do the, the light one more time? Lights down. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be an Aliso mini iron in aqua. 
Beautiful. Okay, there you go. Let me unplug that one now. There are loads in baskets, loads and loads of loads you've got in baskets. Uh, when you put it away, put the soul, uh, the soul mate back on, but wait for it to cool down. Wait for it to cool down. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, that was the other thing. That was the other thing. You don't need any special water for it. You can just put tap water in it. Most, nearly every iron you're supposed to put special water in. You're not supposed to put tap water in most irons because it c calcifies, which is why um, some of our Beldre ones say um, uh, self... Uh, what's it called? Yeah, like self-cleaning, so it decalcifies it for you. But most irons you're meant to use distilled water. Yeah, 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 just use tap water. Just use tap water in this one. It's designed just to use tap water. Fantastic, isn't it? Well, a lot of people don't know that. Well, I mean, I just bung water in my iron at home all the time. But I mean, that's why it goes all white and calcified and things like that, because you're using... Yeah. Right, hang on. Is that the hot one on the cob? That's the cob one. No, don't, don't, not taught these things. You don't know, do you? Right, OK, there we go. Brilliant. Joanne, morning. Just hung the washing out. Can I ask if the pressing mat is available, please? What, th that one... It's a cutting and pressing mat. June Taylor, we'll check for you now, my love. I don't know what you'd use this for. It's cute and it folds down, right? I, I suppose it's good if you're doing little half-square triangles and things like that. What's the matter, Dan? Dan's laughing at me now. Oh, would you? So Dan would, uh, Dan, not Dan, Ben. Ben would use it to display his Aliso iron. So it's brilliant if you're doing little half square triangles or something like that, isn't it? It's not quite long, well, it wouldn't work as a sleeve board because that's in the way. £7.49. Beautiful. How did you do that then? Beautiful. £10.49. Beautiful, beautiful. £10.49. So tell me what you're going to use it for. Tell me what you're going to use it for. Yeah, yeah, it'd be brilliant for um, uh, little seams. Uh, FPP, if you're just pressing your seam. £7.49. More in baskets than we've got stock of now. No, it's a quilter's cut and press. Beautiful, £7.49. Gorgeous. Keep going through, lots of you there. Too many people got it in your baskets. Quilters graph paper next. Says, now, this is what Becky Swarm was talking about the other day. When we, if you bought the um, alphabet builder block, and she said you can write Greek letters or Chinese letters. Well, no, she said Chinese, because she's Chinese, so they're a little bit more difficult. If you, want, <coughs> if you want to write Greek letters and things like that, get yourself some graph paper. If, you, if you're used doing a Janet Clare and you want to do colouring in of her, you know, kind of working at hers, then this is perfect for that. Oh, I've got a pimple coming on my face. It's because I don't wash my makeup off when I go home. I should get into that. I know. Slutty. 6.99. Who's in there with you? Oh, it sounded like there was a girl in there. Was it? No, it wasn't. It wasn't in there. Anyway, uh, you can do... Well, it says here... Oh. Did they not used to say... Four? Oh, yeah. 12, 8 and 4. But you can do any size you like. That's 4. That's 8. That's 12. You can do any size block you want to. You can do a 6 by 6 if you want to. Up to you. Six ninety nine. Oh, is a massage. Can't say I put my saddles in. 
Hi, John. Who's Grass Paper Designing Knitted Squares? Oh, there you go, Ruth. Thank you. Where's Ruth? In Worcestershire. Why are we in Worcestershire here? Are oh, we? It's really, it's in Worcestershire. I never knew that. Mm, 6.99. It didn't work, did it? Beautiful. Uh, right, who wants it? Joanne? I've got it here, the pressing mat. It's more than a pressing mat, though. So this side is your pressing mat. Right? But this side is a cutting mat. Now, this is... Yeah, who's opened a new one? Where did you get this nice clean one from, Dan? Did you open it? Especially. I don't know. I don't know. Um, you see this here? They, they've got... Um, uh, in inventors who work at June Taylor, right? And this fabric here, when they print it up, they print it up bigger and then they bake it in the oven and it shrinks down. So that is exactly an inch and will never change from being exactly an inch. And the numbers are on the outside. So if you're measuring a block like this, see? You can see your numbers on the outside there. Uh, I don't know what's in here. It's really lovely and squidgy. But then this side, now, this cutting mat is not self-healing. In fact, you know what? You, that side might be nice and clean, but someone's really been going at it on this side here. Um, what happens is, is this is developed so that your rotary cutter goes along. It doesn't go into the mat. It only cuts the fabric. So it doesn't need to be self-healing. And it means your uh, rotary cutter blade lasts longer. 40, are they only 49.99? I thought they were way more than that. Oh, okay, that's a brilliant price, forty nine ninety nine. <coughs> Joanne, I hope you got that, my love. Right, yeah. Next, easy quilting needle gripper or a hemostat to you and me. There you go. Uh, these are very good for stuffing soft toys if you're doing them, but also excellent if you're doing um, hand quilting because sometimes you can't pull the needle through, can you? These, now what you need to see, see this here. A lot of people get theirs home and go, oh, my, don't work. You need to separate that there for them to open. Then what you do is you pull, put your needle in there and you pull it through like that so it's got total leverage because you can lock it closed so it holds the needle. Eleven ninety-nine. Brilliant. Daisy thread cutter. This is a thread cutter that you can take on an aeroplane with you. Because the blades are hidden, the blades are in there. So you cut your thread on the blade there. It's got a lanyard so you can wear it around your neck so you don't lose it. Suitable to cut thread and yarn. And... Oh, well, hang on, John, come on. It's got... Why can't I release it? It's got a built-in... There they go. Got a built-in needle threader. It was me trying to pull the whole thing. You just pull the top bit out like that. There you go, like that. Cute, isn't it? How much is it? Four ninety nine. ideal little present. You need to start thinking about Christmas presents now. Stocking fillers little stocking filler or little summer birthday gift. And the, the lanyard, you can detach the... No. Look. Look. I'd rather have a chocolate egg for Easter. Now, what date is it? Oh, yeah, you'll get it in time for Easter because it's the 29th or 30th, isn't it, Easter weekend? Yeah, I'm on all that weekend. And, 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 um, clocks go forward that night as well. Yeah, it's bring forward. So on the, the Saturday night and Sunday morning, when I have to get up for work, no not only is it Easter Sunday, it's also an hour less in bed for me. I know. Uh, Four ninety nine. Lovely. Quilters roll clips now, or Pat Butcher's earrings. Uh, these are for when you're quilting on your domestic machine and you need to roll your quilt up to get it underneath the throat space. Two ninety nine. This one. Two 
$2.99. Gorgeous. I don't think mine are blue and yellow, mine are orange. Do you mean these? So easy machine quilting finger grips. Code, code, G C E Z W twelve. Yep. Yours might be blue and yellow. Because the picture on the website is blue and yellow. You get three big ones and three smaller ones. Their size is twelve and fourteen. Well, they're, they're things for counting your pound notes with, look. There you go, they're the big ones. Oh, that one's even too big for me, that one. And then they're the little ones there. Um, it tells you, uh, allowing easy movement and control of quilt layers while machine quilting. Oh, I see, so they're saying you put them on your hand like that. Oh. To grip the fabric while you're quilting, maybe. Also very good when you get a new 10-inch uh, layer cake. You know how I try and flip them and they get stuck all the time. These would be brilliant like... We used to. We used to. Yeah. It was when it was sewing quarter. Soon, I don't know. I think you'll find that was Ian. Here we go. Lovely. What's next? The button here. The button here. They haven't sent me one that's open, so I can't show you how to use this today. But, oh, now hang on. That's the refill pack you put in. So there's the refill pack for $9.99. There's your refill pack. You do get some in the actual machine itself, but that's when you want to have more. Now the button here. Quick and easy to use, 40 fasteners included, instructions on the back side. $24.99? No, no, no. No saying necessary works on most fabrics. Great for home, office, school, and travel. Uh, it's really good if your um, hem drops down. You use, oh, 21 99 Twenty one ninety nine. Support thimble for e uh, uh, easy application. Fasteners are inside the little handle there. You can replace buttons, repair a loose strap, hem pants, skirts or loose linings and decorate crafts and clothing. It's like a little Kimball tag machine, look. Okay. I'm going to get the fan out. Now, I didn't... Oh. <laughs> I didn't think it was this colour. There we go. Like a soft dove grey, this <laughs> one. Oh! Half the stock has gone on pre-order. Half the stock's gone on pre-order. 34.99. And it's on three-way split pay. That makes it about £11 something, doesn't it? Uh, so, I've switched it on. So you've got your different... Oh, the light on it. You've got your different... Look, you've got your different power. Hang on. No, that's on and off. That's your light. How do you make it go to on different power? Oh, there you go. Well done. I'd done it, I'd done, and I couldn't figure out what I'd press to do it. There you go. So you've got your fan there to make it. Now, you can also make it bigger by unscrewing the, the... There you go. Hang on. Come on, John. Oh, is that it now? Uh, uns, uns, oh, no, there you go. No, the thing's for making the angle, doing the angle, not making it bigger. Um, and then this also tw tilts as well. Oh, that's nice. Thirty-four ninety-nine. Beautiful. Switch that off. I also seem to think 
I'm sorry, I haven't prepped this one properly because what happened was I gave it to Dan first thing and said, this needs to be charged up and then completely forgot all about it. It folds up. Yeah. Yeah, but then how do I get that to there? You have untwisted that. All right, let's untwist that. There you go. There you go. There you go, and then it slides along like that. There you go. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Imagine it fell off. So where's the leg then? No, it doesn't go that tall. Does it really go that tall? Yeah. Thirty-four ninety-nine. There's only one left. One left now. One left. Oh, we're going for a break now. Lucy Pickles is up after the next one. Show, show you the picture. The market bag, isn't it? First, <coughs> market bag. There it is. Uh, you get both patterns. You get both patterns. See you back here in four. <laughs> Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also applique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Sewing Street is now available on Virgin Media, channel number 754. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye. Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, even after we finish broadcasting live? Just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one P&P with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub and UK customer support is available 24 seven. So head over to sewingstreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Are you having trouble finding the ideal gift for that someone special? Then why not treat them to a Sewing Street gift card? Simply head over to the website and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click where it says gift cards. You can decide between posting the card or delivery by email, then decide the value that you would like to send. Whether it's for a birthday, a special occasion or just a way to say thank you, the Sewing Street gift card is the perfect answer. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. 
You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? Check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items, you can spread the cost over two, three, four, or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with Split Pay. Are you having trouble finding the ideal gift for that someone special? Then why not treat them to a Sewing Street gift card? Simply head over to the website and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click where it says Gift Cards. You can decide between posting the card or delivery by email, then decide the value that you would like to send. Whether it's for a birthday, a special occasion or just a way to say thank you, the Sewing Street gift card is the perfect answer. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items you can spread the cost over two, three, four or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with split pay. Blimey, if looks could kill. I just said to Dan something and he went like this. Like, evil eye. Like that. He doesn't, he's not listening. Lucy Pickersley's here, everyone. Hello. So, Lucy Pickersley, how are you? I'm really well, thank you very much. She is wearing Tula Pink. I've just noticed she's wearing Tula Pink. I am. I made this yesterday. Oh. Yesterday afternoon. Right, isn't that quilt backing? Pardon? Is it quilt backing? It's, it is, but it's, so it's extra wide fabric, yes, um, but it's quite tensely, quite soft. Drapey. Oh, that's no, gorgeous. Really gorgeous. Right, so what's the first... Where are they, the bags? Oh, behind Lucy. Right. I can't come and get them. Okay. Uh, so now this is a pattern with two bag patterns in it, isn't it? Yes. Two bag patterns. You've got one bag pattern like this, like a toty bag. And then this gorgeous bag here. We're loving it, loving it, loving it. Now, we've got three different colourways for you today. Let me put that there so you can see it. We've got three different colourways. You get a panel and you get some fabrics and you get your instructions, obviously. So, which one first, please, uh, Ben? Beekeepers one, right? This is the beekeepers one, right? So, you get the instructions. Then you get a metre of your rose. You get half a metre of your chambray. And then you get <coughs> this, a panel. It's huge, this panel. Yes, I heard you first time, thanks, Ben. OK, lovely, beautiful. The only way you can get this panel is in... It's upside down, isn't it? Is in this kit. Is in this kit. OK, there you go. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Are you, you're not using that one, are you? No. No, it's huge. It's huge. So for thirty-two ninety-nine, you get your pattern, you get that massive panel, and you get a metre and a half of fabric. Uh, you will need some um, stiffener and things like that. We'll go through all of that in a second. Um, but this, the other panels I'm going to show you in a minute, you can buy those individually. You can't buy that on its own. It's only what's in the kit. Right, so that's that one. That's your beekeeper or... We can call it B. Oh, you think it's called Beekeeper? Right, next. Retro. This one. Right, so this one, you get your uh, chambray denim, half a metre. One metre of your hot tomato, that looks like. And then. Yep. 
Oh, it's paprika. It's not hard to It's paprika. There you go. And then this is gorgeous just on its own. Now, in a minute, I've got this on its own in a minute. $32.99. Beautiful, isn't it? I love all the stripes and the flowers and everything in there. Beautiful. No, I'd say it was earlier than this. I'd say very early 70s, that is. Very early 70s. Not the disco 70s. Early 70s. We had a fab time designing them, coming up with the three concepts of what we wanted. I love a bit of vintage. Uh, yeah, exactly. Great. Right, so that bundle there is £32.99. Beautiful, isn't it? And that is what you're going to be using yes. over there. That's what you're going to be using. And then the last bundle I've got, which is this one here, which you have your metre of your pink <sighs> and your half metre of your chambray and your, pan and your instructions and then your bright panel. This is mine. <laughs> this is the one I have. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, oh, gorgeous. I love that, love that, love that. So £32.99, that one. Now, if you'd like the pattern on its own, available, I'll show you the pattern on its own here. Been very, very popular, to be very, very thorough, as always. Look, gorgeous. Oh. Oh. Is that the only pattern piece I need then? Yes. Indeed. Brilliant. At nine ninety nine, you're getting two patterns in there for your nine ninety nine. I know your tote bag and your um, what would you call that? Market bag. Market bag. Gorgeous. Nine ninety nine. Now, if you'd like the panels on their own, you can't have the beekeeping panel on its own, but you can have the bright one. <coughs> abstract, it's called. Abstract. Huge, this. Now, it should be more than 19 99 shouldn't it, Dan? Yeah, well, you're only good. showing about half of it there as yeah, well. Yeah, that, that, that. just did our Lou do these with you? Absolutely. Oh, God love her. Pink-haired Lou. With her weird cats. Oh, single figures on that one already. Single figures on that one already. I'm not surprised. When I took these home and my mum had a look at them, she said, oh, I don't even want to cut them up. I just want to sort of hang them up on a wall or just piece them together as they are, really. Oh. Well, you can do anything with them. If you buy the panel, it's, you can, it's up to you what you do with them. Then we've got the vintage. Uh, retro, sorry, retro. Right, I had more of these for some reason than I did of the brights. Very popular, this one. Very popular at 19.99. Beautiful. So it's just big squares yeah. of fabric, isn't it? Yeah. And then you've got some detail strips down the side. They're just bits of extras, but I, I'm going to show you how you can use some of those. Brilliant. To divert from the pattern just a little bit. Fantastic. Right. What else do I need to actually make the bag then? We well, need something to give it structure. So I've used um, fusible foam. So Bozal. That yeah. Be absolutely fine. Where's the H640 one? Oh, have you, is that the I H640? Did, yeah. All right, I need yeah. the H640 down off the 11 o'clock trolley. Um, so, yeah, I just use foam in the example that you can see there. So that's got right. bosal in it. Okay. That's just got bosal in it, yes. Okay, yeah. here's your bosal in our form. Now, is half a metre enough? Is yes. it a half metre piece? Yes, yeah? it is, because that's lovely and wide as well. Yeah. 13 99 So that's single-sided, single-sided bosal. Thank you. Or if you want it slightly squidgier, you could have the H640. So now, would half a metre of that be enough or do I need a bit more? Yes. Well, what I actually suggest with the H640 is actually you use that if you want to in the shopper bag. The shopper bag's been designed so that it will fit, fold up and fit inside oh, this the one. market bag. Yes. So that's with our H640. But if you want to give that a little bit more shape... OK, I'd so don't H640. use H640 in this one. No. OK. No. So use Bozal in this one. Uh, you can either make that one with or without H640. That's right. Lovely. And what else do I need? If you want to add anything into the base to make the base even stronger, yep. instead of using something like your Decaville, Lovely. and it might be you want to use a few layers, just one layer, whichever you like. Yeah, because you could have a few of those. Is that what the, uh, the pattern piece is? In the yes, absolutely. Part. And for the oval shapes that you need to cut for the inside and out. 
Well, in eight ninety nine. <coughs> Uh, I'll do handles later when we get to that. So let's, shall we start at, at start a demo? So I've got the three kits, remember. The panels are selling incredibly well. The instructions on their own are selling well. So check out your basket if you've got any of those. So you're going to show us today what? I'm going to start at the very beginning Brilliant. for you. Okay. So when you get your panel home, you've got lots and lots of squares out and there are more there, there's a few more there than you need which is great because the first time I cut it out of a panel I did cut it wrong but there's, uh -uh. there was enough there for me so and don't get if you do make any mistakes don't get rid of anything because you've got, always got opportunities to reconnect bits if you needed to okay so I've done one panel already because I know you guys really like to see how these fabrics come together quite quickly so you can make choices so I've done the front of the bag already so you can see how they blend and uh, mix together. So there's lots of squares there and you just need to work out how you want to arrange them. Now you've got a front and obviously you've got a back. Um, when I place mine, I just do it brick style. So two, three, two, three, two. If you want to be incredibly fussy with how you do your panels, then I would recommend you cut both panels out, all your strips of pieces and lay them side by side. And as one of my testers did, what she did is where she has the half pieces, she made sure that the half piece that sat on the, on the, the opposite side matched on both sides. So it shows, shows that continuation all the way around. I haven't done that, but it does look very effective, but it obviously gives you choices. So you'll bring your, your panel home. Give it a spray with your best press if you want to. Uh -huh, best press. We like, we like a bit of best press. The cherry blossom best press we've got today. Yeah, very nice. I use that flavour, actually. It's lovely. lovely. And it, it makes your room smell gorgeous, too, doesn't it? So I give my panel a bit of a spray all over straight away. You don't need to pre-wash it or anything like that, but give it a little bit of a spray and then cut those squares down to size. They should be spot on, but just in case, just give them a quick check over and make sure you're happy with the size. And then what we're going to do is we're going to subdivide those squares into the numbers of pieces that it says in the pattern. May I borrow a pattern, please? Oh, Thank sorry. You. So inside the cover, we've got a cutting table. Doesn't look too scary at all. There's not lots and lots of pieces. And that's mainly because we build the pattern up, um, the next panel pieces, are, uh, maybe in a, in a later stage, from what we've already built. So it's going to be a, a U-sized market bag, really. So it says up here from our 10-inch squares, it's telling us how many pieces of fabric we need to cut and how we need to, um, to the, the widths that we need to cut the, the, the squares into. And then it will also tell you how many of those to then subdivide so they become these half pieces. So when you've got those, lay them all out, like I say, so you, you feel like you're happy with your arrangement. And then it's just a case of piecing them together into strips. So I have mine all prepped here. And they just all need joining together. So I'm going to work my way through now, um, connecting these and making my little strips. So... They are all ready, um, pressed, neatly cut, and all I need to now do is make sure I've got the quarter inch setting on my machine. I'm using the excellent Elner 782 today, which has got a lovely default setting to the quarter of an inch, and it will also know that I want to sew at a shorter stitch length. So I'm using a 1.8, which is a standard length for quilting. So I like to press as I go. However, I'm just going to pop these to one side. I should be pinning because look what I've done straight away. But that's absolutely What have fine. you done? Oh, it's just slightly off. And, you know, I can unpick that if I want to. I should get my pins out. So, yeah, so we're always making sure that the short pieces are going on each end there. And we're going to join just like so. Do you, do you always pin even if it's a short one like that? No, it's only because I've just gone off a okay. little bit there. I'm oh, can't be doing that, can I? So, take out the pins as we go, unless anybody's not looking. And it doesn't take long at all for this to come together. Do have a look at your patterning, and remember that um, you can rotate a lot of the patterns that you've got there. So, for example, if you've got two that are the same patterns but different colours, you might have one, one pattern, so it's like on this one, for example, where it runs down. On the next piece, 
Oh, I think I've come and threaded. Yeah, I have. Um, you might want to rotate your square so it's going in a different direction. But do look out for those flowers. Obviously, we don't want upside down flowers, really. Uh huh. There we go. Do that one again. And then we just work along. It's a great little machine, this, because you yep. don't have to worry about um, lowering the foot or anything. It does it all for you, doesn't it? Yep. You have to set it to do that for you. Can you? You have to do, you put it in your oh, setting. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, so if you, some people don't want it to do that, so uh, you can have it with it without. I do. So we're just going to work our way along now. And then, I'll, like I say, I'll do all the ironing in one go. I'm going to have a play with the Alisso today because I haven't got one. Mm -hmm. Neither have I anymore. Have you had to surrender it? Yeah, they gave it to, Paul gave it to me. And then Hayley sent a message saying I have to bring it back. Oh, that's mean. Yeah. That's not playing kindly, is it? <laughs> So you want to just keep an eye out that maybe keep some of your fabrics away from each other. So you'll see here where we've got these lining up. I just make sure that the flowers are a certain distance from that one. So here, for example, I wouldn't really want that one to go there. So I'll do it at this end instead. So just um, observe and look as you go. And it will come together quite quick. And then what we do when this is all ironed, we'll obviously be joining all those together yeah. um, to make one big block of fabric. When the block's done, it might not be exactly neat down the sides. I wouldn't really expect it to be, but you just go through and you just trim that down to the size that it should be. Lovely. Shuffle those all up so you can see them. I love all these brown colours. Yeah. Oh. oh, looking at the wrong one. There we go. Oh, yeah, it's a two on this one, not a three. Yes. They do come together very quickly, these bags. There, and they're quite nice and giftable, I think. Oh, yeah, definitely. What's your angel policy? Um, same as always. Um, just enjoy making them. Sell them if you wish to do so. Your favourite old line about John Lewis still stands. Yep. It's fine. Go well, they've gone into profit again this year, haven't they, John Lewis? Have they? Yeah, none of their partners are getting a dividend, though, but they've gone back into profit. Oh. Well, they lost something like 280 million last year, and this year they've made, profited 50 million. I reckon, it's, I reckon it's Waitrose, the food bit, that's the most popular. Yeah. Just get my little iron in. Oh, you plugged in? How. I am yeah. plugged in, yeah. So let me just quickly shuffle these, stack them up. Just don't want to get them out of order, really. And then we'll give them a quick iron. Now, it's up to you whether you want to iron your seams to one side or whether you want to press them open. Open and flat would be quite nice to keep them all, you know, as less bulky as on. possible. Pardon? Yeah. Iron's not on. Oh. Oh, flip. I'm not used to that. You have to wait for the pulsating now to go down. Look, see, when it pulsates oh, like that, yeah. it's heating up. That's all. Clever, isn't it? Yep. It's like neither a... Like, I'm used to using my, my, my mini iron, but it's, it's got a bit of heft. It's at 0.9 of a kilo or two pounds. Oh. What, it actually costs two pounds? No, weighs, oh. two, weighs two pounds. Cost My error. 5 99 three way split pay. No interest charge whatsoever. Beautiful. Sold hundreds and hundreds of them. Very nice. Oh, Lou saying she loves the colours that you're working with. Who says? Lou. Oh. They are nice. This is the panel that my mum didn't want cutting up. <laughs> oh, okay. <coughs> nice to have that as a little mat as well, isn't it? It's what? Nice to have that as a little mat. Yeah, yeah. It it's onto. the soulmate. It's called the soulmate. Soulmate. Nice. Yes, 
Yeah, I could imagine taking this onto a, like, a, if I was going away, sewing. Uh-huh. Which, by the way, I am this weekend, so shall I borrow it? Mm -mm -mm. I think you find just getting to mine this weekend. Is that? Oh, no, I'm here all weekend, don't I? Yeah. Have you done yeah. any sewing recently? None. But you see, I'm busy planning the, uh, well, I'm been too busy, but I've been planning the John Scott Cruise for next year, where we'll be doing sewing. Ah. John Scott Cruise. And will you be sewing? On what, the John what? Scott Cruise, will you be sewing? Oh, will I be? Well, I yeah. can do I suppose. I've got nothing else to do. Oh, I think you should. We'd love to see you sew. I might come. Oh, there you go. Although, I did get some bad news yesterday, can't uh. lie. So, universities are in trouble and we all got called to a, one of them emergency meetings. Oh, no. They want people to be handing in their notice if they can. Oh, no. Yes, otherwise we will be instructed instead, so... You'll be what? Otherwise, we're at risk of redundancy. So we've, we've got the choice. Yeah, you know, why would you hand your notice? Are you, what, you mean take a no, voluntary redundancy? Yeah, no, oh, right. we're being offered a chance to take severance pay. Right. And um, we've got seven days to decide. Oh, seven no. days, and we got the notice yesterday. But then... but then. Otherwise, we might be made to do, the, to do the jobs. Exactly. And they need to get rid of a lot of people as well. They, want, they need a lot of people to yeah. go. They need to save 20 million. Yeah. So, so you can see that's done really quickly, hasn't yeah. it? Now, when we piece them together, um, you can just go for it. That's absolutely fine. Or what I tend to do is I give this a little iron. I make sure those join, those seams here. Can we see all right? And then when we're there, I just finger press yeah. so that I know that's my center point. Oh, okay. Give myself a little marking and then I take the join here yeah. and I make sure it matches. So I'm almost working centrally out as we go up. Yeah. Which is why we're going to get this little overhang at the other end, which is fine. Grab my pins. Because we trim it down, don't we? We do. Yeah. Yeah. It's better than you um, trying to make sure it falls bang on point and it being slightly out. Yeah. It doesn't matter. That's why I don't really massively like using templates because... People, especially if you're new, you can get quite hung up on, if I say something's got to be 17 inches and yours come out at 16 and a half, it's like, oh, where can I possibly go in wrong? And then it ends up in the bin and abandoned. Yeah. And actually, it doesn't matter in a lot of bag making. Yeah. So I like to give a, a base to work from and then it will grow to your size and it will be right. I'm positive about that. So that's two strips put together. So now we're just going to sew the full length again, quarter of an inch. And then again, decide whether you want to press that open or up. And just for a bit of speed at this point, I will just press it upwards so we can move forward and attach the next strip. Uh -huh. I don't tend to do these in pairs and then regroup them. I'll just work up now. But I'm really firm with my ironing at this point, really pushing that seam open. It almost, I want to just try and show you. Sometimes when we flick it over, we think that's enough, but then we can create this like, almost like a shadow down here yeah. um, where it's not quite pressed over that. It's like a, I mean, it's a hair's breadth really, but I like to really make sure that we're pushing it right over. So now I'm going to go to this one and in a similar way, I'm going to make sure these areas here join like so, so that I can finger press down there. I'll do the same at the top now as well. Open it back up, always looking for the direction of the flowers, and then I'll pull that one down so that my crease matches the centre point. And then I pin, and I work my way out again. Yeah, because some of the fabrics have got directions and some haven't, have they? Correct, yeah. And the ones that don't have direction, like I say, don't be feeling like you've got to stick with everything going that way. If you want well, no, to no, they're like way the chevrons well. on this. You've got the chevrons going yeah. up and down this. It's nice, yeah. It's nice to create a bit of variety. And we work along.
Uh, Christine, I was at Sound for Pleasure yesterday and Lucy's there this afternoon doing a demonstration on the stand this afternoon. Uh, Vix is there on Sunday. Um, I'm not sure who your presenter is today. Is it Brian May? No, I don't mean Brian May. Nigel uh, May. For some reason, I thought I was on with somebody called Adam. Is, have I made that up? You've made that up. Have I? Yeah. It was a name um, I didn't know from here, you know? Uh, oh, right. Uh, Adam's the social media man. He might be there. But right. you've got a table with chairs in front of you to do your demo on. Yeah. Uh, and uh, who's, the, who's the presenter tomorrow, then? No, 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 no. At, at the NEC, it was me yesterday, Vix on Sunday. Uh, Nigel May, today, I think Nigel May's on today. Must be a hobby maker one tomorrow. Well, it'd be nice to see people there. Yeah, yeah. Nice little show to go around. You'll know loads of people there. The ones yeah. That, like Catherine Wright's there. Perry's there. Um, uh, Mark and Clive are there. There's lots of people that you'll know. Exciting. And it's actually quite easy to get to, isn't it, I think? Mm -hmm. Quite easy to get to. Yeah. So continuing my way up, um, when you get to the handles, um, we've obviously got some beautiful, beautiful handles here, yeah, yeah. which I would highly recommend personally, um, but you can always make handles if you want to. Well, you've, I was going to say, you made them for your tote, haven't you? But then on the, I, I think on yeah. the market bag, the, the, the new hand, the other handles are lovely, but the tote bag yeah. is kind of... Um, you hadn't made hand. Yeah, I do think, I mean, I have made it out of, you know, leathers and such like, but the handles here, I, um, I'm, not, I'm not just saying this, I really, really like them. They've yeah. got a real nice kind of grab on them. Yeah. Um, easy to attach. And I just I think, think they're think all fur. Are they, they are all faux fur. leather? Are yeah, they? but they, um, they really finish the look off. And I think it just takes it from handmade yeah. to... I don't know, just a little bit more somehow. No, homemade to handmade. Yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that. Uh, morning, Lucy and John. Lovely show so far. Lucy does such a calm, clear demonstration. It's from Jackie. Oh, Jackie, your Heather was at the show yesterday, hassling everybody about badges. If anybody wants to know what that noise was a second ago, what? I've just dropped my whole tin of pins on the floor. Oh, no. The lace ones as well. So, I mean, there's about 200 down there. Yeah, no, that's right. We've got... Um, <laughs> no, where is it? Dan, have we got the, um, the uh, pin dish that looks like a big Ooh. pill? Oh, bring the cameras oh, down. Just bring the open. cameras down. I know. I'm just seeing if there's one on the set. There's normally one on the set somewhere. Can't believe I did that. Oh, I could use that one. Yeah, that one's not the one I'm thinking of, but that's fine. Thank you. Oh, I can do it in the break. Oh, it's Don't a Sizzix. I'll do it now. It's a Sizzix, right? We've got a Sizzix launch on Sunday. Where are they all? I They've mean, gone underneath the yeah, desk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did a good job. Yeah, I'll do I wasn't that. messing around. Oh, blimey, what's <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody get the maintenance team in, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this morning I had to bring some flyers in for, for Lucy Marketing. And I was at the house and I thought, I should put them in a carry bag. Oh, I can't be bothered, I can't be bothered. I'll just put them in the back of my car. I got here this morning, I lifted them up like that. And you know when you have a big pile of, like, <laughs> flyers? What's come off now? <laughs> it's not me. And, I um, didn't do it. And I held them like that, and the middle fell out like that, and all these flies were all out all over the car park because it was raining when I got here this morning, so they're all soaking wet. Um, I can't remember who's on today. I'm sure it's definitely um, Nigel May. In fact, I could look up the email now, couldn't I? So, I am nearly there. So just whilst you're looking, John, I'll just say what I'm going to do next. Yeah, please. I'm going to press it upwards just to finish this one off, and then I'm going to trim those sides down. But this time, I'm going to make sure that I trim them down to match its 
partner panel that's already completed. Right. So I'm going to do that next and then on to the next step. I do need to find a long ruler for May. Oh, Dan, can we have a long ruler, please? The 24 and a half by six and a half, please. Oh, hello, Roy. How are you? Yeah. Yeah, what are you doing? Spray? Yeah. What kind of spray? Is it your um, hair growth spray again? Is that what it is you brought? That's lovely, Roy. We don't see any more. Hey, what? Don't start now, he says. I see Roy every time I come Oh, in. he's brought some more best spray. Isn't he lovely? He's adorable, I love. Roy. I love Roy. Right, I'm just going back to looking for the emails. So I'm just trimming it down. See, it's only taking a bit off. Yeah. It just tidies it up nicely. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be fusing that to our um, basil foam. Now, if it's, is yours, is this um, fusible or uh, not? One-sided. Is that basil you've got there? It's one-sided. Do yeah. you know, sometimes you can't tell, can you? No. But I'll just give it a try. And if it isn't, then what I'll do, back up, back up, is get some spray glue. And I'll just spray it into place and it'll be fine. But I'll just see how this goes first. See if, okay. see if it does anything. Sometimes I'm convinced it sticks even if it's not meant to stick. I can't get into my, it won't let me into my email. So it's suddenly no, it's asked not. me to sign into my Microsoft. I don't know what that means. Any possibility of some spray glue? What do you want, some 505? Please. Got any five? Oh, yeah, we should have some 505. You got any 505 there, Dan? Yellow and blue tin, it is. <coughs> Perfect. You don't think, well, it shouldn't... No, well done. I don't need it, no, thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> so I'm just going to give it a very gentle spray. I'm going to spray the... the um, Basil the foam, yeah, rather than the fabric, and I'll just smooth it across. And then I'm just going to peel this half back, and I'll just do the same over here. Always do it in a ventilated room. Absolutely. Now, I'm not going to cut back just yet. I'll just hold back. Now, what I'm going to do next, and it's an optional step, but I think it looks beautiful to do, I'll bring this one in again, is I quite like to extend my stitch length. I put it onto a four in this case and just do some stitching, sort of a quarter of an inch away from the join. You could do as many as you want as you go along, but I'm just going to do one row of stitching below each of the seam lines. Um, and then if you wish to do so, you can base those edges all the way around. So I'm just going to run that through. It won't take me long at all. If you've got a walking foot, pop it on. It's going to make your life just a little bit easier. This is managing perfectly fine without. No need to reverse at each end. Bring it straight down. And we're going to go in again. I'm watching the front toe of the foot rather than what the needle's doing. And okay. when I watch the front toe, it's making sure that I go nice and straight because I'm not really holding this fabric. You know, we're normally like this. I don't, I'm very relaxed in my sewing now. But by watching that toe, it will make sure you stay straight. We've got a couple more rows to go, and then we're ready to move on. If you've got any handmade labels, consider uh -huh. popping them on. It does look nice. Yeah. Especially if you've got some of them nice leathery ones. Yeah. What I've put on. And get your rivets out. Have a bit of fun with your rivets. With your green machine. With your green machine. I only met him for the first time during birthday week. He's lovely, Dave Green. Nice chap. Uh, he's lovely, really lovely. We wouldn't say any different, would we? Yeah. Oh, OK. <laughs> I wouldn't. 
No, no, what you do is you just don't mention it. You just don't say anything. So I'm just basting this top edge now more than anything. And I'll quickly do the same again at the bottom as well now. And then I will get my rotary cutter to this and trim it down so it's nice and rectangular and even. And then we've got our fronts and our backs done. Lovely. That didn't take long at all, did it? No, not at all. The biggest part of the job is managing that massive panel when it comes home. Yeah. And laying that out. What's nice about that as well, and um, particularly on the brights, I notice what Lou did with that is she used the same print in places, but she did it in different scales. Oh, okay. And, and that looks. Oh yeah, like the really burgers. The burgers are big and small, aren't they? Burgers. Burger these. Oh, you put them sideways. The burgers sideways here. Burgers. <coughs> I don't know that I saw them as burgers. What would you call them then? Can we have a look circles. at circles? Which I need. Half circles. Go upstairs. There you go. There you go. Strawberries are lovely, though, aren't they? Macaron, they're saying upstairs. Macaron, yeah, macarons. We'll go with that. Yeah, I don't eat nuts, you see, so it'd be no good. Is there nuts in macaron? Huh? Almonds. Almonds, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the judge on um, Great British, they're not saying B, what was that? Great British menu last night couldn't eat nuts, so they had to keep making different ones for him. I've been watching that um, interior show. The what? Again, you know, the is it called the Great British Interior Show or something? Oh, um, is that the one with Alan Watts, isn't it? Yes. No, I don't watch that. Yeah. One. I love the menu one. Uh, he was a, a pentathlon. Uh, um, uh, he, no, he was a, um, oh, what do you call it? Olympian, Olympian, athlete. Right. And so they have the three cooking judges and then they have a guest because it's all about the Olympics this year. So he was the Olympian. <coughs> but one of the judges can't eat um, shellfish, so they always have to make a separate one. Right, we have, I'm pleased to say, a front and a back. Yeah. There we go. So then we would move on to organising the base. Right. Now, the base I've already made, but I'm going to talk you through it. Right. So, at this point, you're going to get your booklet, and just inside, we've got a template that you'll think, oh, gosh, that doesn't look big enough. It is the right size, I promise you. Right. Just cut it out on the fold line. And we're going to need a couple of layers. So, we need the denim outer layer. That's what I use, and that's what you've got in your kit. Yeah. And then you're going to want to apply that to your foam again. And then, obviously, you need to cut one in your lining fabric, too. What I've done with mine, um, and there's some pictures in here I think I put in, um, I just kind of put lines through it. Did I? No, I didn't. I'm making that bit up. But you can leave it plain. You put lines through that one there, the real I, one. But I put lines through this. Um, I sometimes just do them nice and wide, just through. It just keeps everything together. But more than anything, it's just creating interest. It's not structurally doing that much, but it does just gives it interest. Okay. So I quite enjoy that. Yeah. And then you're at a point where you want to start thinking about, do you want to bring the outer bag together? Before we do that, though, what we need to do, and it goes back to what I was saying earlier on, is we use the panels we've just made here, and we're going to use that to cut our two lining panels out. Right. Okay. And all being well, we've got the right size. All being well. Yep, they're fine. Okay. So before I put that together, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to actually do the pocket piece on the inside of the bag. Again, quite optional. Um, and it's up to you which fabric you use. Because obviously you're going to have some denim left. And you're going to have, if you've bought the panel, you're going to have some lovely detailing down the side. So I would be tempted, as I've done here, to maybe think about using that. So what I did is because you've only got a thin strip that yeah. runs that way of your patterning, is I actually took a few of my extras and I actually joined it together. So you see, this is two pieces of fabric. Yeah. I've joined it and then I've cut it down to the size that it says in the book. So that looks lovely. Okay, so that's and my pocket front on the inside. That's for the inside of the bag. Yep. Okay. If you want it to be super strong or super squidgy or anything like that, then do add a little bit of H640 
um, or some interfacing to it. I would say these cottons, though, they do feel quite strong to me. Yeah. And I don't feel a massive need, structural need, to add anything to this. So just making sure that my fabrics are in the right direction, like so. I'm now going to flip them and pin them right sides together. Lovely. I think there might be a story here from Danielle. She says, morning, John and Lucy. Watching live after all. Turned up at work, but they'd forgotten to cancel me. <coughs> Were you not meant to be in today then, Danielle? Stand-in teacher. What job did she you is. do? Hmm? She's a stand-in teacher. Oh, do you know her? My tester, one of my testers. Oh, OK. Is that all it said? Yeah. Oh. So this is the bottom of the pocket. Yeah. So I'm going to start about here. Ooh. Oh, be careful. And I'm going to sew all the way around and I'm going to stop about here. Right. Which will give me a little bit of space to turn everything through. Remember to turn your stitch length back down again to somewhere in the region of a 2.5. Revert back to a one centimetre seam allowance now and work your way around, remembering to reverse at the start and the end of your sewing. Lovely. So we're stopping about one centimetre away from the very edge of our machine, making sure our needle is in the needle down position, rotating around and up to the next corner. Stop one centimetre, one little stitch away there, and rotate. To that corner, and rotate. And rotate. What you'll need when we turn this through is one of those little turning tools really to push the corners out. I'm just going to snip the corners off to give me the space that I need to make this nice and square when it turns through. And then when we've turned it through and we've ironed it, we're going to top stitch that upper edge before we place it onto the fabric. Mm -hmm. Now, just to sort of walk through as well, just in case we don't get there, we're going to make the outer of the bag and put it all together. And then we're going to do the inside of the bag and put it all together. And then we're going to pop one inside the other in its finished look placement setting. Mm -hmm. And then we bind the top. You can bind it however you like. Oh, so there's no bagging out? There's no bagging, no bagging out. Right. Now, it could be that you want to do that, but there's going to be a lot of fabric there. Yep. Do feel free to give it a go. Just remember to leave a hole in one of your lining pieces. Well, there's no point in binding the top. There's no point in binding. No, no. But if you hate the thought of binding, it's yeah. an option, isn't it? Um, I don't mind the binding. I just don't like the finishing of the binding right what, at the, the end. The hand stitching? Well, no, not that bit. The joining the end. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I get a bit clumsy with my hands at that yeah. point. Um, but the hand stitching doesn't worry me in the slightest, John. Oh, no. You've got time for it. I've got a mum that does that bit. Oh, OK. That'll be why. Yeah, she doesn't mind the hand stitching. So, I think you either love it or loathe it. I sewed six buttons on last night. That'll do me a while, mm -hmm. that. So, OK. Is your mum not available to sew the buttons on, then? No. Right, so I'm going to stitch across the top now. Again, okay. this is really just about detail. I'm going to turn it up to about a three. Stitch length of three and drop my foot down. And give it a little trim. And then we can place it into one of our lining pieces. So we'll find the centre point just by giving it a... It needs an iron anyway, so I'll iron it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I make this nice and crisp down here mm -hmm. as well. Saves all the measuring and marking. like so and then we take the center of this and make sure it matches up there's a measurement for placement but um this will be absolutely fine it doesn't matter too much where it goes uh -huh. and then let's do something interesting in how we sew it in now normally you just obviously just sew around absolutely fine but i'd like to show you how i sometimes do them 
like for example how I've done it on this shirt on the pocket which is a transferable skill that you can add to any of your dressmaking, bag making or whatever. Uh -huh. So again, if you've got an edge stitch foot, you might choose to put that on now. Um, so it'll allow you to go really nice and close and evenly to the outside of your fabric. Turn your stitch length up to about a 3.5 if that's your preferred top stitch thread, uh, top stitch length. And what I'm going to do, let me see if I can draw it on first actually. I wouldn't know. I'm looking for my friction pen. I've put it in a safe space, which is probably on the floor. No, it's here. You got it. Okay. So I'm actually going to start by turning the fabric around when it gets to the machine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start down on this side here. Right. Can we see well enough there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll wait for it to come in. There we go. Okay, there Beautiful. you go. Beautiful. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to do a very short row. Of stitches might be two or three stitches yeah. but then I'm going to go outwards like so at an angle and then I'm going to come across and then I'm going to come down so I've made a triangle in the corner to reinforce okay. I'm going to go along and up and then when I get to this side I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to kick outwards and then I'm going to go back across which will be about two maybe three stitches and go back down and I'll overlap just a tiny amount just here just to make it nice and strong. Brilliant. Just tiny tips if you want to just do something slightly different where you can feel slightly proud of yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you needed to, you could slow your speed down there as well. So now I'm gonna tip that off so I can create my little triangle. What I was aiming to do there was finish on the line of stitching to match the top stitching. Before you carry on, snip your thread so it's out of the way. And then we're going to sew for about two, three stitches. So that's one, two. Yeah, I'm going to stop at two. That works for me. And now we're going to work down. Down to the corner. And across. If you want to subdivide your pocket, you may prefer to do a line to follow, but you would just stop at this point or a little bit further up across one stitch and back down again to continue on i'm going to leave this one open it's one nice big pocket mainly because when it's one big pocket i know my shopping bag's going to then fit in it but when i go out and i've got all my shopping and yeah. i realize i needed to buy a bag of spuds and i need a bag for that now mm. so we carry on up we stop we angle it we're stopping on that stitch line. We're coming back for two stitches. That's one and two. And now we're coming back down to the row we've just sewn and we're gonna overlap ever so slightly. And reverse or use your lock stitch uh -huh. to complete. And that's your pocket now fixed in place and looking rather nice quite sharp I feel okay so shall we build the bag yep let's build the bag right so we take our outer panel and we're going to find the center point just here at the bottom that is I'm gonna get rid of some of this so you've got a clear desk so you can really see what I'm doing quickly oh to retrieve the bag bottom okay so we've got the center point just here yeah I'm going to do the same on this panel finding the center point cut a little snick out of it you can just see it there and then we're going to find the quarter points on here so we fold this in half and we take a triangle out the top here we mm -hmm. take a triangle out here we then fold this piece so those points match. And as we finger press over, it'll give us our quarter marks just here. We need to join the front to the back along the sides. So if you just cast your eye over the join lines and make sure they line up and then sew together, clip and sew with a one centimeter seam allowance. Two 
Do clip. Don't try and do this the way I'm about to do it. Do what? Clip. Do clip. Don't yeah. try and do this because you really, it does look nice to have them nice and even. Especially if you're doing what I said before about making sure those half pieces match all the way around. Yeah. And the same over here. And then it's just a case of joining the back base into it. So do get your clips out for this bit. Which are all in here somewhere. Okay. So now we are working with our right sides together. Let me just make sure I've got the bottom, which is correct. So right sides together, centre point to centre point. And I clip to hold. Go directly to the sides now. So the side join we've just done and take the centre point of the side of the base and clip. Be really firm with it. Be the boss of your fabrics. Don't let them take over you and just work away around, clip to hold. Whatever we do on the outside, we are going to do on the inside as well, like I say, just to repeat. So when those four anchor points are in, now we're gonna make the rest ease in. Now it might be that on the outer panels, you need to create some little snip marks on the four corners, which will allow this to ease into place. Right. I'm just gonna be firm. So now, let's see how we do. And again, you need to be firm holding this underneath your machine. I'm done with that, really. You can hear it chugging away. What? The iron? The iron, yeah, and it doesn't need to be on, really. It's because it will have switched itself off, because you've got it flat down. Ten minutes in, it switched itself off. Oh, right. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. <coughs> So you see, that's fitted beautifully. <coughs> Fabulous. And then it'll be a one centimetre seam allowance to stitch that in and hold it permanently. If you want to, do a second row of stitching to make it super secure. Never hurts to do two rows of stitching. Well, just one line of stitching on top of the last one. Or I, I tend to do it about, um, I don't even want to say one millimetre, it's more like a hair's breadth away from yeah, yeah, yeah. I, That's what I tend to do. So now we're going to take this under the needle. And this is where you do need to be really firm. But remember, you're not going to hurt it and it is going to bounce back, okay? So let's get that under. I'm afraid my arm's probably going to I was gonna say, we can't see anything dominate the bags that. In the way. Yeah, there there I'll go. try and do that. So you can see. Yep. Do remember to reverse your stitching as you go. Keep those clips in. Don't be too keen to take your clips out. Yeah. While you're doing that, I just need to recap of the three bundles. So where would you like to go first? So which one? B, B one first. Now remember, this uh, B panel is only available in the kit. So you get a metre of the pink, half metre of the denim, the instructions, and then this gorgeous B panel. Huge, huge, huge panel there. <coughs> Excuse me, 32 uh, 32.99. $32 then we have the bright one next, or the geometrics one next. Most popular of all of them, this one. So you get the instructions, you get the bright pink, you get the mid, uh, or is that the pale? No, the pale denim. <coughs> Excuse me. Plus the panel. <coughs> there you go. There's the geometric panel. That one looks a little bit like Cave Jumble in the middle there, doesn't it? Beautiful. And then we've got the retro vintage. The one that Lucy's mum liked best. So you get the pattern, the dark denim, you get the paprika, and then you get the um, big panel. There you go. 
Beautiful. Now, oh, actually, I'll do that panel on its own while I've got it out. There it is, 19.99 for that panel. Very, very popular on its own. We also have the Geometrics Bright one on its own as well. There you go. Beautiful. It's upside down. Cats, strawberries, macaron. Beautiful. Uh, pattern on its own. Very, very popular. Oh, bright panel sold out. Bright panel sold out. There's your instructions, 9 uh, I'll tell you what, I'll do all the handles and everything in the 11 o'clock hour, rather than run through them now. But I will do Bosel now. Bosel in our form. Oops, the bag's just fallen on the floor, Dan. I can pick it up, it's fine. 13.99. And the Decavel, should you want to make a solid base, is this one here. Use a few layers of it. Oh, he's coming to check, check out where the bag is now. Oh, no. 8.99. 8.99. Have you finished around that base now? Me, I've done the outside, yeah. I'm just working on the inside, having fun. Don't forget as well, we've got that shopper bag as well, which isn't just a plain front and a plain back. There's been a bit of work going into that too. Right. And like I say, folds it beautifully to go inside the pocket of the shopper bag. Perfect. Uh, the market bag, should I say. Lovely. Right, we've run out of time, I'm afraid. I want to carry on playing, really. You can carry on playing, that's Hi. fine. Uh, we'll see you in an hour when she's doing... Um... Oh, it's really lovely. Now, it's not a thing, it's not a wash bag. It's not. not a wash bag. It we, is not. No, no, when we were prepped the other day, we told you it was wash bag. And we came and said, it's not a wash bag. It's project bag. It's gorgeous. But again, two projects in one. Two projects in one. Lots of PU and zips in that one. Uh, we'll see Lucy in an hour. And you'll see me in four minutes with Helen McCook. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Sally Ann Harrison and I am a patchwork and quilting fanatic um, and I've been sewing all my life. I'm currently based um, here in Bristol um, but I used to live in the USA and that's where I picked up the sewing bug big time. I suppose you could say that my sewing journey began when I was about eight or nine. I distinctly remember the first thing that I ever made um, and it was I, I, I say I ever made on my own, obviously I did sewing at school, but I came home and I chopped up one of my mother's old uniforms and she used to work in a store. I cut up these little pieces of cotton and I made myself a bikini top and I can remember the absolute thrill of putting this little bikini top on and going out on my bicycle and riding up and down the road and that was the first thing that I ever made and I was totally, totally smitten. My claim to fame has to be um, demonstrating at the Houston International Quilt Show. Um, I am very heavily into wool applique and I developed a technique where you would use a perlay thread on the top of a sewing machine and they were interested in Houston I actually went along to demonstrate in open studios, studios whilst the show was on. It was really, really magical to have so many people that were interested in what I could do with a sewing machine. I am one of the longer running um, guests now on Sewing Street. Goodness knows how that happened. But I still get an absolute buzz every time I come up and do a demo and I love receiving your messages and the feedback after the show, it's, it's absolutely amazing. I'm hoping to bring you lots of new techniques and different ideas, so do stick with me and follow my Sewing Street journey. Oh, Permin of Copenhagen. These embroidery kits are gorgeous. Helen McCook's going to be stitching them. And then she's got Bohin accessories. You know how they flew out last time. You've got to come in and get them. Sewing Street is now available on Virgin Media, channel number 754. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one PMP throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard PMP is £3.95. 
Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8am till 1pm and you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items you can spread the cost over two, three, four or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with Split Pay. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye. Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, even after we've finished broadcasting live? Just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one PMP with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to sewingstreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the Schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Our UK-based call centre is always on hand to assist you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Lovely Helen McCooksey. It's so lovely to see you. So good. I shouldn't be hugging you. I haven't got a lurgy. It's um, tree pollen. I don't think it's the cold. It's but um, things in the ether. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't but, worry about it. The amount of people I see and the amount of places I go to. I know the I'm thing like is. An, I'm like an air hostess. It's like you know those people and teachers that are exposed to constant germs. Oh, you're so you're so used to it. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So don't you worry. I'm it's not nice. worried. It's lovely getting a hug from you. Oh, well, it's lovely to see you. Thank now, you. now, now, we've got something different again today, yes. haven't we? Yes, we have. Um, first of all, how are you? Good. Thank you. What have you been up to? Yeah. Um, oh, lots of teaching, lots of making, lots of designing, planning for next year as well. So. And why is your house still a tip then? Oh, because I'm never there. No. I'm always in the middle of another project or I'm off to somewhere else. So, yeah, it's constant. But like, we'd rather it like that. We'd rather it was like that. You know, that, right? it's one of those things. You know, when you, I opened the door to my office and I'm like, oh, and my partner, who's a minimalist. Oh, no. I can't go in there because it makes him sweat. <laughs> <laughs> he literally, you can see him. If he ever brings me a cup of tea while I'm in there, he kind of does this and he goes, you can see his eyes roaming around the room going, 
Uh, and you can see he's about to hyperventilate. He'll just kind of oh. like put things down really quickly and then leave. So it's the rest, the rest of the house is all immaculate. Yeah, it's reasonable, it? yeah. So oh, reasonable. Yeah, well, you know, he, his dream house would basically... He showed me a photo of his dream living room. Oh, right. It looks like nobody lives there yet because it had got a sofa and TV and a lamp. And I was like, where's the bookshelves? Where's the coffee table for when you're putting your... Yeah, your yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's no, there's nothing to put your feet on. So not though. practical at all then. No, but he he really does like clean sweep, and I'm like, yeah, that's you're I'm you're with gonna, the I'm just going to do something. Yeah, you, 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 I'm going to have to fiddle, fiddle with, with you for me. a little bit. Fiddle away, it's fine. Right, so you might care. I just need to just put it in there Thank like that. We you. might see because you've got a lovely silky blouse it's on. It's, it's gone a bit. It, just blouse let me know, Charlie. If it, um, I've got a friend called Jonathan yeah. whose whole flat is like that. Oh. So you walk in and it's like a, a, a like a joke set, like something you see on Ab Fab. <laughs> you go into the lounge and it's white, right? Oh. And there's a white carpet, a white sofa, and that's all you can see. Oh, no, 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 that's a lie, because there's then three cannonballs on the floor for some reason, right? <laughs> three cannonballs. Statement pieces. Statement pieces. <laughs> so I was like, where's the telly? Where's this? He goes, oh, here's the telly. Oh. Where's the bookshelves? Here's the bookshelves. I mean... I mean, my partner would love that. It would be... He, oh, that drive would be me mad. Dream. But I'm like, nobody lives there. Where's the bits? Yes. Like, no, you can't tell who lives here. No. At all. No. So, yeah, so for me, that's not... But their bedroom's the same. You go into the bedroom and there's just a white block in the middle of the room with a white mattress <laughs> on or sheet. And, the, and you climb up. You, it's really weird. You climb up it like this to climb into bed. I'd roll out and fall out. I up. was going to say. So it's a white room with white walls with a white block in the middle. And I said, where's your duvet? Where's your pillows? <laughs> and they go like this. Oh, they're in here. And there's, where's your clothes? Oh, they're in here. So all in the base of oh. this bed. So every time you want to go to bed, you've got to that's, put the That's a lot of faff, isn't it? Isn't that a lot of faff? Exactly. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I couldn't live like no, that. No. no. <laughs> Come on then, let's get on, yes. let's get on then. Get so on. we have got Scandinavian art needlework. So what is this then? Yes, what is this? Oh, hang it's, on, which one am I doing first? Am I doing so the cushion? Or, let's I've got do the, the cushion, cushion right, yes. The cushion here. So what we've got is um, a lovely kind of spring look to it. So we've got the lovely birds, the spring flowers, and the idea is it's on this really lovely size of Ada. Um, so and it's kind of got a natural, it's got linen-y look to it, but it's Ada. So it's right. nice and easy to work on and it would develop quite quickly. So you can, you've got the fabric for the front and back of the cushion. So you then just need to stitch it together. Okay. To the for the pillow. But what's the technique then? So it's cross-stitch. But it's not cross-stitch, it's not drawn for me, is it? No, it's not pre-printed, it's a graph of cross-stitch. So you get the chart right. and you're going to count your way through it. Can I move your chart? Absolutely do, yes. This is the chart you get then here. Yeah. So, yeah, so you can see I've started to mark on bits with highlighter that I've actually started. Right. It comes with arrows to show you where the centre. So what you do is... You fold your fabric in half because you yep. can see this is a massive piece of fabric here. Oh, and that's right. That's the front and back of the, of the cushion. Oh, okay, okay. So what you're going to Oh, do so don't go to the centre of that then. No, you're going to fold it in half and then you'll fold it in half again to find the centre that you're going to work right, on. Right, okay. So then once you've found the centre, you can mark it with a pin or with a water erasable pen or an air erasable pen. Mark what you've got in the 11, we 11 have, o'clock We have, we have, yes, all prepped. 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, yeah, 12, 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock yeah. yes. And then what we do, that gives you the centre and then you can see on the chart... They've got arrows. I like to just get my pen and just find the actual centre because I lose my way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, you know, if you pick it up, putting it down, life, you know, yeah. generally, you need to make it easy for yourself. So you find the centre, find the centre of the thing and then start working. And I always think it's a little bit like an ordnance survey map. Do you remember when you were in school and they taught you about ordnance survey yes. maps? Yes, God, I'm going back a bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, nobody needs maps these days, no, do they? So, no. you know, you can separate, separate the age groups. But anyway, so you've got these little symbols that represent the colours. Yeah. So you've got all of these charts down the side here. Yeah. And it tells you what symbol is what colour and the number. Yeah. And then with that, you get these lovely threads. I'll just bring this one over. It's got all the numbers on already. But what I then do is I like to draw the symbols into the box. Oh, uh, oh clever. Visual person. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'd be a great. Okay. Now, before we go any so, further, yeah. this is the cushion. That's not your price. Oh, sorry, wrong camera. That's not your price. Not your price. So this is the cushion. £49.99, £10 off. We have also got the... Now, what would you call that then? Is that a table runner? It's, it's a runner, yeah. I'll just do this one because they're both the same pattern. We'll both do both these straight away. There's your, uh, so in this one, that's the cushion you've just seen. We're now going to do the, the details for this here. Uh, £59.99, £10 off that one as well. 
But now, would I do exactly the same with that one? Do you want to talk about this after you've done the cushion? Yeah, we can talk about okay. it. Okay. So you do, you do exactly the same. So the chart basically will work off the centre of the fabric. So you work out where the centre of the, the fabric is. But the centre of the fabric is. will be, oh, will yeah, be empty. Yeah, but it's a double. So what you do is you've got the centre of the fabric, and what they'll probably do with this is they'll have this as a repeat. So you can see that end and that end are the same. Right. So what they do is you'd fold it in half by the centre. Oh, and fold then start there. Again, I've got it. So you're not starting there. there. No. Oh, got it, got no it. No one wants to count that much. Well, no. Well, no. You're just sitting there thinking, well, that be count 77 no, or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, six hours right. later, you're half blind. <laughs> yeah. So we get the chart out, we yes. find the centre. Then yeah. what do we do? So me? then what you do is you look at whatever you've got there. So I'd started with this triangle symbol, found it up, found what that was on the side and then got that in my needle and that's this colour. So I started doing this and what I do is I like to mark off the colour that I've worked when I've worked it so I don't lose myself. It means that it's really easy to pick up and put down. So you do all the same colour yeah, so if you want to work it like that, you do all the same colour, you mark it off, and then you know exactly where you are. Yeah. That's a nice, easy way of doing it. And also, it may be that you get a bit bored of doing squares. So some people like, it, this is, you know, psychological assessment. Yeah. Which way do you like to work a cross-stitch chart? So some people like to work it like that, and other people like to work it square by square. So they'll have a lot of threads. Oh, OK. So if you like to do it like that, you'd get, in this square, you do all the ones in this square, mark it off, and then yeah. you do all the ones in the next one and mark it off. Oh. Now... Well, that means you could be swapping colours. Yeah. Because so, if you went onto one of these squares here, you've got yeah, loads of different colours. Yeah. Yeah. So, but some people like to see it emerge that way. It's really funny, like the way that people like to see their embroidery oh, emerge. Oh, OK. So, like, some people like to get, oh, well, I've got all that colour done, and I can tick that colour, and that's done. Um, and then and then you can be working across the piece. And then other people are like, I'm doing this square. I'm going to treat myself to this square today. OK. This square. So, and it feels like it's developing that way. So, it's as I say, it's a psychological assessment here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so you do... You do you're not a square person? No, I'm not generally. I like to work... If it, if you've got a nice run of it, then I'm a bit of a hedonist. Right. I like to go for the run of stuff. Oh, yeah, no, me too, me too. So, because um, so you can see it kind of coming along. And then, like, so I started to work down the branch and then I started to get into this and I thought, oh, I'll start my petal. So, because you can see it's all, all located near to each other, so you can start that. And now I'm going to start my leaf. Because, okay. You know, that's how I run. But are we on. still in the same colour? No. So these are... These were all that brown colour, all the triangles there yeah and then here I did two different shades so I'd got a light blue and a dark blue, oh, okay so see and I'd started a little bit of white and now I've got a little bit of green in my name so it doesn't matter that you've got lots of different colors going on no and one of the things you can do with this is if you think you're gonna get a bit confused I just get a bit of scotch tape or washi tape you pop it on the top of your frame and then what you can do is you can draw the symbol onto the tape and then you can park your thread up in front of that Oh. Um, so always bring your threads onto the top if you've got multiple threads. Right. You'll end up with a nest. Right. Like the uh, best do you catch them underneath. Every yeah. single time. So bring it up out of the way so it's not going to bother your stitching in front of the symbol. And then you know when you come back to that symbol again, you're like, oh, there's my thread. Of course. Um, you could so. use the Crafter's Companion um, yes. uh, low tack tape for that. Yes. Which would be brilliant because we had a really good deal of it this oh, week. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. So that would work. And as I say, just mark it onto the tape and then you're good to go. So that one. I've finished with the white one at the moment, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it underneath where I need to have it, and then I can bring that up in front of the symbol. Oh, all the there. way over there? Yeah, because I'm working on this section at the moment, so I know it's going to be out of my way. Yeah. So I can get rid of it, so I can just do that, and yeah. I'm good to go. Okay, before you go any further then, so the thread, do I split it, or do no. I use it as... the nice thing about this is it's a purlay, because we've got a nice scale of Ada, and you can see it's a good scale. If I put my hand next to it, you can see the crosses are really good scale. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, what we're doing with this is it's a twisted thread, and you just use it one thread. Oh, so you haven't got all that... No, no. faffing around. No. Good to go. Also, quite nice for a beginner, mm. this, because the squares are quite big, aren't it they? It's quite big, so, you know, if... Your eyesight is not as it was, potentially. If you want something that's just a nice, easy flow project, to do, something you can sit and do while you're doing something else, mm -hmm. um, or a beginner, it's a nice scale. This is even suitable for introducing children to the craft as well. Oh, because okay. it's one of those things that it's a relatively small-scale, self-contained project. Yeah. But it's something that's going to really develop reasonably rapidly and feel really kind of productive. Yeah. So they'll see it working. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's easy to go with the hand as well. So the eye hand manipulation so okay. the way i'd start is i'd got my knot in the end of the thread and you can see i've brought it over here i know that whole area is going to be covered right so i've brought it up here ready to use so the knot's on the right side yes 
And then what you can do is, once I've worked over this with other colours, I can snip that knot off and it's self-contained. Oh, OK. So, so when you've done the other colours, it, it's fixed it into absolutely, place. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So the other colours do the work for you. Brilliant. So then what I can do is I can then start stitching. So with the cross stitch, you just want to try and be consistent with which side of the cross is in first. So I go bottom left to top right. Bottom left to top right. OK. Always, the, on all of them. Yeah, generally. So I want that one in first and then that one. Right. And then you'll get a nice uniform finish. Does it look different then if you do it some has slightly different motion but what i would say with all of this is if you've got someone come to your house who's going you've got one stitch in the middle that's crossed over the other way send them away yeah yeah you know this isn't the stitch police it's yeah. a, it's a an, it's an enjoyable beautiful hobby but so in in if you're going for evenness yes always yes. go all the, all of them or every single yeah, cross or the whole picture absolutely. the same way that one in first yeah. and then that one but in i suppose you'll you'll get like muscle memory with it, where you'll eventually get used yeah, to it. Yeah, it will start to feel a bit weird when you do it the other way around. Yeah. You'll be like, oh, 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 hang on. So, um, so, so, hang on. So, mm. if I've found the centre, yes, and I know that my first cross is there, yes, then okay. is it just oh, it's next to that one? So, so, like, how do you know those blue ones all go there? Yeah, I know that because when I started my chart, I started over here with this. Yeah. I put that row in first and I fed up and through there. Right. That was in done. And I've marked it off on my chart so I know I've located myself. And then I could count the amount of um, threads of the fabric or the holes, whichever you prefer. I was going to say, what do I count? So, some people prefer hole counting. Right. Some people prefer um, threads. I like to count holes. The reason being, you can put your needle into the hole as you go. So I like to count the holes. And, and each hole is one of those squares. So isn't? the thread is the white of the, gra of the grid and the grey is the hole. Right. OK, so yeah. you see the white is representing fabric. Right. OK. So oh, so where it crosses. Yes. That's a hole. So, so yeah, exactly. Where these two meet on yeah, the grey line, yeah, yeah. that's a hole. So Fine. I prefer that. Yeah. But it's, you know. Yeah, because they say, don't they, when you're working on Ada, yeah. you count the holes, but when you're working on linen, you normally count the threads, don't yes. you? Yes, yeah, threads per inch. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. But it's as I say, it's because as I, as I count, I put my, my needle into the hole, so it helps So you're me physically remember. counting like, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, you can count the threads or the holes to the next one, so you can locate everything in reference to everything No wonder your boyfriend gets weird, because if he opens the door and you're going, one, two, three, <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody said to me the other day, I was talking, it was International Women's Day and I was with a group yeah. in Scotland teaching and I was saying, you know, what, what's the great thing about, you know, International Women's Day, what's the great thing about being part of this group? And they were saying like, you know, community and, you know, the crafting together and learning and the hive mind. And somebody went, we've got the patience to stab things thousands of times. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. She was like... I feel quite angry about some things, but not after I've crafted. No, I suppose not. Yeah, you take it out on there. So, yes, so he, he really should be happy if I'm stabbing the fabric. Exactly, not times. him. Yeah, exactly. I'll be coming out so zen. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Right. So, so we've located right. where we have to do the yes. stitch. And we've said that we always do the, all of them the same if we can remember. Yeah, exactly. Now, you can see I'm, um, I've got my star thread here. So I'm in the green. And I'm starting to work along, so I know I need to put in two stitches and then four above it directly. So here, there's one, two, and then... A oh, the star four. motif. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can put those in. Now, you can put them individually like that, or if you know you've got a run of them, so I know there's four above, some people like to really treat themselves to a slalom effect. Okay. So you can go... Um, for the full run of the half stitches first, so you could do one. Oh, to do all the uh, first stitches exactly, first. Exactly. Okay. It's you know the nice thing is because if you've got that bit in your head, you don't have to count it, and then once you've got the half in, you don't. Have yes, to yes, yes, yes. You don't have to remember oh, to stop. So, yeah, so you can kind of hop about a bit with it because you're not going massive diff like distances. And how so. do we do the tension then? How do we? How do we? So basically, this if you're pulling too tightly you'll start to create eyelets. So you'll know that you're creating big holes in your fabric. Oh, so OK. If it's sitting too loose, it's gonna, the thread's going to move around a lot on the fabric and there's going to be a kind of looseness and bagginess yeah. to it. So I pull it until it resists a little bit and then I know I'm done. Yeah. So, but but no, you're not pulling it tight, tight. No, yeah. no, there's no, there's no need for tension in your embroidery or yourself. Like, there's no stress in this, in yeah. this hobby. So you can see I've got those stitches in. What I'm going to do is, as I say, I have a terrible memory. I'm going to mark those off because I know that I've done it. Yeah. So you're crossing it up with, but if, 
is crafting cum bingo. Yeah. <laughs> like, so you can see I now need to get three from the, above the end one and then another two. Yeah, now we okay. sell those friction pen highlighters. Mm. So the friction, so you could do this and then iron this piece of paper afterwards, mm -hmm. then you don't dispense it, you register it again. So Absolutely. Because you, you now you've drawn on yours. Yeah, so some of the highlighters. So if you know you're not going to need this pattern again, then yeah, of course, you, you just um, use it with anything, a yeah. felt it pen, anything. But if you know you're going to want to use it again, friction pens you can use, or um, you know the gel pens, also things like the yellow highlighters, you can actually photocopy and you don't see the yellow. Oh, so, don't you? No. Shouldn't do. So um, so that's quite good. But I'm using a purple highlighter. No, 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 that's fine. I'm just so. thinking about some people like to reuse. Yes, absolutely. So, um, but yeah, I mean, equally, you could use a pencil and rub it out. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, the frictions are good for that. Um, but yeah, so you can see it's really straightforward. And, you know, you can chat, you can, you can... Oh, I wouldn't be able to chat. I'd be too you can, concentrated. <laughs> you can watch I can't talk movie. and drive at the same time. Can so, you not? No, I only found this out because they were filming oh. me in my car a few weeks ago. And they were like, so if you could talk to camera while you're driving. And I was like, <laughs> what? You were like, you want me to do what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you were like, give me the rig. Set yeah. me up. So I'm going to hop across here. And then that's all of that particular shade. So I've got three of these. And if you jump in short distances like this, don't worry, because I know that area is covered up. So I'm going to be doing um, embroidery over the top of that. So it will hold all the tension of any slightly longer stitches in. So it's really nice. So you can start to see the edge of the leaf coming in now. I just think the size of this, it's really going to, like, like Charlie said, oh, it comes together really quickly, it doesn't does, it? Yeah. It's nice to see, because sometimes we need, while we're sewing, we need to be able to see what we're doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes when you work on something very intricate, you can be at it for three hours, you know, well, can't see anything. Well, you can see it's a really achievable project, can't you? Yeah. It's one of those things that you kind of think, some things we spend, it's laborious, like the amount of hours, you know, you've enjoyed those hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. lot of hours. Whereas this, as I say, you can, it goes quite rapidly. Well, it's that instant grat gratification Absolutely. thing, Absolutely. And I, th I do think there's that, that really lovely thing about having different projects at different scales on the go of different techniques. Yes. There's something really pleasing about that, and yeah, it changes well, so, the pace. Yeah, because sometimes you can be the most extreme seamstress, yeah. but actually you want to do something really simple and mindless, yeah. mindful, well, whatever, is, you know what I mean? You, well, sometimes you just want something that's going to quiet your mind. Yes. Just, just quiet yeah. the noise. Yeah. And this is, like, cross-stitch is brilliant for that, and like I know so many people who, they, they, they do all sorts of types of crafts and embroideries of all different levels, and cross-stitch is the thing that they come back to when they need a bit of chill time. Oh, OK. So, because yeah. you, you engage with it, you just... Now, when you go from different areas, yeah. you don't stop and start. You've th taken the thread from where you were yeah. last to there. Because these are relatively... I've jumped from there to there. Yeah. Those are short areas, so I don't know that it's going to have embroidery over it. Yeah. So, the tension of that thread on the back is fine, and it's all going to be held in when I put the other stitches So, in. what's the biggest amount you uh, would... For this, I, would, I wouldn't go over an inch. Jumping wise, yeah. so if, if so, say, so for example, say your next green one was up there, yeah. you wouldn't jump all the way over there, no, you finish no, off no, that I'd one. I'd normally finish off, yeah. So, um, and again, I mean, it's one of those things we leave tails and you work over it to finish off, yeah. Or if you've got to the point where there's nowhere to finish off, you can turn it over and you can weave through in the back, yeah. Um, but again, you'd weave through between half an inch and an inch to make sure that you've got a nice, secure finish. Brilliant. Right, lots of people asking what else we've got for the hour. So before we carry on with the demo, I'll just remind you that this one here was a cushion. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm going to have to put it over your work now. That's that one. one there's your cushion. 49.99. Then we had the uh, table runner. Now, I need to tell you, it's 36... Oh, it's quite big. 36 inch... Oh, no, hang on. 14 inches by 35 inches, that one. 14 inches by 35 inches. Right, I'm going to run through everything else we've got this hour, and then we won't might not necessarily get to it. As well. Anyway, this one, now this one's on linen. We are going to be showing you how to do this one in a minute. Agapanthus. Now, they've got that one in a frame. They put that one yeah. in a frame. Um, that one there is 23 by 16 and a half inches. Okay, ten pounds coming off that one. Don't know why. I don't know. I'm taking. Oh, don't take ten pounds off everything. 
Beautiful. We will, I will talk to you through this in a minute. I just want you to see everything that's for sale, that's all. Then we've got these table runners, which are 13 and a half by 37 and a half. So I've gone back to Ada now. Mm -hmm. uh, right, so this one I'm doing here is this one. This is violets. So it's that one that you're getting. You're not getting all three, you're just getting that one in there. Ten pounds off. It's going to happen. There you go. There's all your threads. It's like a little sweetie shop, isn't it? I love mm -hmm. those colours. Sweetie shop. I love those colours, yeah. Gorgeous. They're beautiful colours. That yellow is lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Uh, then we've also got this one, which is the table cloth, 26 and a half inches square. Beautiful, isn't it? Mm. Really fresh and kind of delicate, isn't it? Mm. Spring, all delicate and spring-like yeah. with the colours. Uh, Ten pounds coming off that one. Beautiful. Then we've got this one, which is quite bold. Uh, with the pop, are they poppies on that one? Mm -hmm. Again, this yeah. is the tablecloth. This is what you're getting in this one. Oh, now that one's more affordable. Oh, look at the. I love the colours in there. Yeah. Um, that one's. Uh, has that got the ten pounds off? Oh, going to forty-four ninety-nine. That one. Beautiful. Any questions, obviously send them in. Now I've got one more to show you, which is completely different again. So is this on linen? That one looks like linen to me, yes. isn't it? Yes. Linen. But look, this is an, an old house. Uh, so uh, where's my size on that one? Oh, 40 by 30 centimetres. Now is that cross stitch? Yes. Don't you think they've all got that kind of theme of like the quintessentially kind of English. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, no, no, they're, and yeah, they're all from got, Copenhagen. I know, it's really strange, <laughs> isn't it? So. Little English country yeah. garden, yeah, exactly. Oh, and then the little uh, bonnet there. So and you everything. should be having a cream tea in Somerset Ooh, or something, yeah. don't you, Devon? Oh, not so, I don't like it down there. <laughs> uh, no, no, in Cornwall, I found all the roads too close, too small, and everything, oh, and I got very hedges. Yes, the hedges. hedges. Are really high. But, it feels like but also, hedges. it's not a hedge at the bottom; it's wall at the bottom. Yeah. So, and if a bus comes the other way, yeah. you're done for. Uh, my Don't first. Me only if you're talking at the same time as driving. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> my first memory from saying at school was on Binka. Oh. A giant style of cross stitch. Yeah. I'll shut up now, says Alison Marion. She's <laughs> only ever worked with one colour of thread when cross stitching. What fantastic tips about multiple threads. Uh, Sue says, What a lovely surprise. Didn't realise Helen was on today. I love her work. What is her opinion of the back of the work? Is she team don't look it's rude or do be as neat on the front as the back? Um, Carmela says, congratulations on Helen. Oh, congr uh, congratulations. Congratulations, Helen, on becoming a freeman of the Worshipful Company of Broderers. Yeah. What does that mean? Very exciting. So, um, I was honoured to be invited to join the livery company um, for the Broderers, which they were definitely founded by the 13th century, but we think they were possibly as early as 1066. So, it's one of the oldest livery companies in the country. Uh -huh. And, well, in, in existence anywhere. And the idea was that they, within the City of London, there were livery companies and guilds to look after the quality of the work that was going out and also the people working within that trade. So, this was for the embroidery. And so, they have looked after embroidery um, ever since. So, they do a lot of charitable work now and funding a lot of things to do with textiles for training and heritage training yeah. and things. So, in fact, um, part of the training that I had was funded by livery companies. Um, and, yeah, so, yeah, I've been invited to, to join. So, there's three stages to it. So, I did the first part the other day, which was you take your oath to the company. Oh, it's totally serious. So, then. it's, yes, and it's in um, very kind of unwieldy old English so, and you do it in front of a room full of people. Oh, you had to learn it or speak it? You had to re recite it. They had got it there in front yeah, of you yeah, yeah, in case yeah. you needed it. But yeah. it's, it doesn't trip off the tongue. Uh. And then the second stage, you go to the Guilds Hall in London and you become a freeman of the City of London. And that means I can take sheep across London Bridge. Perfect, and, um, that's what you need. And yeah. if I'm inebriated in the city wards, you 
they, they're responsible for putting you in a taxi and sending you home. Okay. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Um, and then, um, we'll try that sometime. And then the third stage of it is that you go and get clothes. So you get your robes, <gasps> the old style of robes, and it's at the livery company again. So, and then you're a freeman of the city. Oh, at, at the wow. Company, so. So very exciting. So um, yeah, very very. And does that make mean you can charge more money for your job and things like that? No, it's just it's a real honour to be asked to, to join. And yeah, like twenty five years next year is how long I've been stitching. So um, and so I went through with one of my best friends who was who trained with me. We were housemates together. So it was oh. just a really special moment for us. But it was just a really important um, part of our. Oh progression. no, it's fantastic! So, Congratulations! Thank you, thank you. Right now that you were what's it to what's it? Yeah. Um, can we do some Aga <laughs> Panther? So this is this one here. So now this one measures 23 by 16 and a half inches. The pe they've put it in a frame, mm. but you could do whatever you want with it, really. I think this you? would be lovely with um, kind of patchwork and quilting around it. Oh, yeah, lovely. Because you can it's do beautiful. that, can't you? With yeah, fabric, absolutely. Yeah. Pick up all the tones in it. It'd be yeah. really good. So this is on the linen. Yes. Now it's got a starch or something in it, has it? It's quite yes, a solid it linen. It's quite it? stiff. So yeah. you might want to just, if you don't like that, you can just agitate it a little yeah. bit and soften it up. Okay, so now I see you're starting right at the beginning. I am, yes. Have you so, got the chart for this one? I have, yes. Brilliant. It's here. So that's all the information that you get yeah. in there and all the threads. So again, they're on these little cards, so with numbers. So yeah. You can number them up. And you get your. Um, Blimey, hang on, hang on, hang on. So the charts are enormous. Well, the reason being, you want to be able to see them really clearly. Of so course, so they join they together. Yeah, so they've got numbers, so you can see how they fit together. Okay. And you can see at the bottom here, this says four of four. So you oh, can okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, All right, so now do I find the middle of a quarter, or do I find the middle of the actual thing? Yeah, so completely up to you. So what you do is we know that the edge of this, where there's the arrows is the center line of that oh so you okay can say okay this is one of four so that that's, that's that one. so i know that the central point of the fabric that's where that attests to. yes so, so the bottom right hand corner of absolutely. that is the center yeah. of your piece exactly so you can start however you like with that so you find the center of your fabric by folding it yeah you can see what i've done is i've just used a water erasable pen yep. to pop my lines on now how do we know the, the scale of this? So people always ask about the scale of the fabric. Yeah. We've talked a bit about this. But what you do is you measure that an inch. You yes. put two pins in at an inch distance and you count the threads. Right. So this particular fabric is 26 threads. Right. So it's a nice scale. They're completely different to the Ada, but still very manageable. Yes. So but it's important to know what you're comfortable with, um, with or without magnifiers. Yeah. So do I get a needle in the kit? You do, yes. You oh, so, so you don't need to worry about having no, to go no. and buy a needle. You've then. got everything except for your scissors and except for a hoop. Oh, yeah. Now, you know the little red scissors? Did you bring your little red scissors today? Red scissors? Yeah, for the next hour. I've got scissors in the next hour and we haven't, haven't sent them. And we all went, oh, Helen's got these. Red ones? Yeah, the tiny size. little ones. They're not yours. No, oh, it doesn't matter, don't worry. We'll find it. We'll find it. I wish, I wish I'd got red scissors, though. I like red. They're the only little, they look like they're going to be tiny. Pinky ones. Yeah. And we can have a look after this, anyway. Right. So now, you, now I'm coveting the red scissors. Well, no, we all thought you had them already. But there you go. So we've done the inch thing here. Yes. And so we've just, counted how many yeah, so threads are between. Right. That doesn't reflect at all on how you stitch it. It's just the scale. So some, pe some people like to know what the fabric scale is because yeah. they know, oh, I can easily see that without glasses or magnification yes, of course. or whatever. Right. But always work in good lighting just anyway. Yeah. Now, you can see I've put some pins in here. So I'm going to take those ones out because we don't need them anymore because I talked about that. Right. So I found the centre point and I've put some pins in because the other way that people like to do is sometimes people like to, if they've got a big chart, sometimes people like to put in their grid because you can see the chart is gridded yeah, so you can see these dark lines yeah there's 10 threads of the fabric in between oh is that not so not, so, not that's not an inch then no it's Th 10 threads, threads. Of fabric. right okay that's yeah. where i would have gone wrong yeah so. so it's really important to remember that so some people really like to mark that out because again it depends on how you like to work some people like to start in the center and work outwards and mark out on their chart as we've talked about yeah. some people like to be able to start wherever they like and they'll just grid it up so again oh. if you just where you've got that i've got um an air and water erasable pen so if you put your grid in it means that you know exactly what your measurement is uh, and where you are in the chart. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's kind of five to ten minutes at the start of the project, yeah. which saves you a lot of effort afterwards. So, you so that's why your chart's so much bigger. Yeah. Because actually, 
they're inch squares, aren't they, there? But actually, in reality, they look like centimetre yeah, squares. Yeah, exactly. So you can see it will come out as a beautiful, compact design. And yeah. the, the reason why that really is important when you're stitching is because the scale of this, it looks so much more delicate and there's so much more information in it. So they've given you a really lovely scale of charts so that it's easier for you to see, easier for you to work in yeah. um, without kind of squinting at it and hurting your eyes. But then when you're actually completing the piece, it really comes together. Right. If I, so in the kit, you yes. get all of this and everything. Yes. Then I've got my chart. Yes. If I then think, oh, I like the picture, but I want it to be bigger, mm. can I still use that chart, but on bigger, bigger linen yes. so that it's a bigger picture? Yeah, so there's two ways of doing that. So what you can do is you can think to yourself, OK, have I got enough to have double the scale of the area of stitching? In which case, you'd simply use each of these... Um, symbols is over one square of the fabric at the moment yeah but you could do it over over double that oh, okay the other thing that you could do is you could use a, a bigger grade of fabric yes yes yeah. so there's two ways of approaching it yeah so yeah either would work no 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 i'm just saying so your chart is very versatile yeah you can absolutely. use it again to do this size but then if you want to do bigger yeah you could do and the bigger. thing is like say you like this motif you yeah could even you can even go to the point where you've got potato sacking and stitch right. it with a ribbon over the right you okay because it's all gridded it, as long as you've got the grid you absolutely. can make that to whatever and depend on what so we could use that size ada absolutely. to do that butterfly absolutely. and we'd end up with a butterfly this yeah, big rather exactly. than a butterfly that yeah big. exactly yeah. so that's the lovely thing about the grid they've done all the work for you yes you just then have to follow it step by step uh, but, but it's also transferable it's absolutely. not like you can only use this grid with 26 absolutely. or whatever this was yeah. you know what i mean yeah yeah and that's the nice thing because like if you'd got a piece where the the pattern's marked on for you you're you're obliged to work in one scale so you can play with the stitches you put on it, but course, the scale yeah. is chosen for you. Whereas Perfect. this, you can do what you like. Lovely. So right, okay, so when we've drawn our chart out, where yes. do we go then? Right, so this is telling me that I'm going to use two strands of my thread. So we can see, again, we've got all the different um, ordnance survey maps in yeah. maps. Tells us what colours we're using. So where do I go? So well, this one, we do split our thread down. So this isn't yes. the same. Is that, so do you call that pearl? Yeah, that's pearl, which is a twisted um, right. cotton. And this is? This is stranded right. cotton. So this is, we strand it up. Yeah. So it's six strands in, uh, in a thread. And um, this is normally a DMC um, one as well. Yeah. So we're going to find the symbol. So I've got the one that looks like a dot. So we're going to find that into number 25 going to show up nicely should do because it's a black so um so the, the threads already come carded up for yeah, you they're on they? the numbers and you can see they've got the appropriate amounts of thread for you right so you just find the one that says 25 so this one's this dark gray have you got it yeah so oh and this is where you now draw I that and draw my dot on there yeah okay so i would then um i personally prefer to take these off because they're in the cut lengths anyway. I yeah. find it easier to split them. You don't end up with such a nest. The best thing to do to get a flat finish is you want two of these. Take them separately. So take one out and then another out. Now, um, you'll then put those back together. Well. Now we're good. We're all good. So put those back together again. That I would put back onto the... Um, onto number 25. I'll put back onto 25. Which is here. Oh, you got it. My there. dot. Yep. So you can get back onto the thing. Tie a knot in the end of the thread. Yep. And then thread it out. Good to go. Right. Right. So you can see we're ready to go. What we've got, some people like to pin this to the, to the piece as well. Some people also like, you can get those little stands that look like a music stand. Yeah. And stand it up. So um, I know that everywhere I've got that dot. So I'm going to go up from the centre. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I've got four of these in a row. Right. So um, if I park that up, I know I've got a lot of work there. So I can park that up over here with my knot on the top. And then count upwards. Seven, and then I've got four. So again, I'm going to work um, four of these. The other thing is, there's a lot of fabric here. If yeah. this is getting in your way, just pin it up. Right. 
so just pin it out of the way and always make sure your pins are going downwards so you don't hurt yourself yeah so it's much easier to control so have you gone on the, on the central blue line Yes, um, just to the left of it, because this is on the left. Oh, of course, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you're go. doing each cross, or you're doing all the Well, do you want to treat yourself first? to a run of them? So that's my first cross, so you can see the scale a bit. You but see, it's, I'd be rubbish at this, because that's way too small for me. Do you know what, though? Some people just love the miniature scale. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, it's... if you look at Jane Greenoff, she can do this without her glasses on, yeah. and you're like, I can't even see the fabric, let alone count the threads or whatever. <laughs> so, but this is so important, as I say, it's the natural lighting makes a big difference. Um, failing that, if you haven't got the good natural lighting, you want a good Native light. lighting. So you want, you want your daylight lamps, really. Yeah. Um, and then magnification if you need it. So It's funny, isn't it? Because a lot of people think they need a magnifier, but actually what you just need is a really good lamp and you'll suddenly realise you don't need the magnifier yet. It's just the light yeah. that's not right. The other thing about it is that people quite often get a lovely lamp and then they're working in their own shadow because they don't position it in the right place. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So, um, so that's quite important. So remembering to position it so you're not actually hiding the fabric. <laughs> you know, um, do not turn yourself into a sundial. No. So, um, so that's quite important. So you can see that's the first run of it. And again, this is the kind of project you'd kind of think yourself, I, I, if I was working this, I'd be like, right, well, I'm going to do all of this section. Right, OK. Today. But I've you haven't got another that. dot for quite... A, oh, no, because you've got a cross one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Oh, I see. So if are we... Oh, yes, on that. So you do your four, yeah. then you come across there and do your yeah. two. And then I'd look what's nearest, and that's nearest. That's and then new. I could work... Go down one. that way, yeah. So you go to the nearest yeah, one, really. exactly. Yeah. So that'll work really nicely, so I can get those two in. Yeah, because otherwise it's a great big jump, isn't it? Up exactly. The and there's just, one, exactly. Oh, there's just one on its own right the way up there, and you wouldn't want that one. Exactly. Well, it's not as near as the other one. No. So... Um, so I can work this one. Now, somebody was asking about the back of the fabric. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now, this, I always say, um, this is a Victorian. No thing. swearing, now. I won't swear, I promise. Okay. So I always say this is a Victorian thing, and the Victorians were brilliant and a bit odd. Right? Yes. So um, this is a bit of a control issue. Right. So to me, it's not a flag, right? Right. You're not actually aesthetically looking at the back. It's a functional area where you're supposed to work neatly and effectively across it, yeah. right? And people who, the first thing they do is they go, oh, yeah, and then flip it over. Yeah. These are not your friends, right? right? They are not the stitch police, and we always say, I always say, asking to see the back of somebody's work, unless they're helping to teach you or learn, you're, you're going to learn something from it rather than just nosiness. Yeah. It's like asking to see someone's knickers, right? It's a personal area. Yes. And do you really need to see it? Yes. I don't think so. Okay. Right? So keep it covered. Yeah. Right? Keep so it covered. Keep it covered. Right? Nobody needs to see that unless there's a physical reason for seeing it. Like, are we going to be teaching you something? Yes. If you're at the Royal School of Needlework. Yes. And they're, and yeah. you're, and they're teaching you to be point workers, are, then yes, by all means, people are going to have to look at the back. And also, you can see as a teacher, you can see yes. whether they're going wrong or right. Yeah, or the, the, me the mechanics of how they're, they're doing a stitch. So, But it, if your friend comes round to your house and they look at the back and they're like, yeah. Oh, you see, I'm like that. When someone sends in a picture of work, I don't look at the work and go, oh, you need to cut your grass, you do, or you haven't tidied that away yet. <laughs> so, so maybe I won't come back to your me house. So it's that thing, is it a friend with a capital F or a, or a small F? Oh, oh, you thought about this, haven't you? Friend with a capital F, yes. You want to be a friend with a capital F? Yeah. So that's who we all want to be. But yeah, so I always kind of think that. And quite often when I'm teaching, I can tell if there's problems by running my finger across it. I don't mm. need to look at it sometimes. Yeah. So if it's a nice, effectively worked, neat area, the only time that there's problems is if you've travelled long distances, if your tension's a bit of a funny issue, yeah. or if you've got knots on the back. Um, so that's the thing. But that's a teaching thing or a thing on your own. It's not... You're not making it for someone to look at the back it's of. It's not both sides alike. It's not a flag. Yeah. It's so it'd be different if you do... What was that stitching that Henry VIII had? Like the black one? The whole bind. That's the same yeah. on the back and so the front. So both sides alike um, and black work, they're sometimes designed to be seen from both sides. So as I say, if you'd got an embroidery on a floppy cuff and you wanted to see the decoration as yeah. you moved, you'd see both sides. Yeah, yeah. You stitch it so that it's 
as close as possible. Yeah, and as but that's not, possible. that's not this. That isn't this. No, no. And I just think it's that it's absolutely bonkers. People torture themselves yeah. and it's not supposed to be like that. No. So please don't be like Also, that. if you put it in a frame or the, on a cushion or something, nobody's ever going to see the bird. And as you say, as long as the tension's right and as long as the finishing off is right and everything like that, because what you don't want to do is for it to finish and then for it all to unravel and the yeah. thing. But you don't need somebody so coming up and not If you're do. creating a lot of bulk on the back, then, yeah, you're going to have problems yeah. when you come to mount it or whatever else. Yeah. And, you know, if it's on a garment, you don't want lots of threads hanging around and knots no. on you against your skin. But the rest of it, as I say, it's, it's functional. Mm -hmm. That's a functional space. Exactly. So. so there you go. Answer your two question. Right, so carry on then. Right, so you can see that we're working across this piece. Would help if I'd got my chart the right way, wouldn't it? Where am I? So, yeah. So I got distracted then by the back of the work. Oh, sorry. Oh, she's got all a bit flustered now. So... Right, so you can see I've got a gap and then a stitch and then a gap and then three stitches. Yeah. So I tend to remember it in sections like that. So I'm kind of like, okay, gap and then a stitch. And again, you're still wanting to do your directions in the same way. So bottom left to top right and then the other way. Um, did, has cross stitching always been a decorative thing or does it come from a utilitarian mending sort of thing? Um, so we've kind of always had this divide between embroidery is decorative. Yeah. So um, if you have embroidery in within a society, you know that they're celebrating things. Okay. So because it's beautiful, but it's aesthetic only. There's yeah. no function. No function because it's like Sashko. Absolutely. You know, you know that it's come from you know make and wear sort of yes. thing, hasn't it? Whereas, I mean, you can the roots of all the stitches are from function originally. Yeah. But um, but as I say, the decorative. Things. Quite often, embroidery was made to imitate something else. Um, so, yeah, but yeah, cross stitch. There's well, I suppose no it was some, uh, doing f um, art on fabric, wasn't it, originally? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And I think it's that thing that, you know, if you look across the world, it's an art form that has been in existence for such a long time across the world in different cultures, societies that would never have touched. Each other, to yeah. Each other. You know, so even within closed societies, they have embroidery. Yeah. And, it's, and actually, that makes it a really important thing because we've had it for such a long time. It's been so um, yeah. kind of long-standing. So we're using it as a form of expression and, and, and a joy as well. So, and, and the process of doing it as well. So it's just such an enjoyable thing to do. Yeah. And I think people who don't stitch don't understand that. They kind of go, oh, I wouldn't have the patience for that. But it's that thing about finding the thing that makes your hours disappear mm. in a good way, mm. you know. And actually, now, we have so few things where you have something physical to show for your time. So, you know, all the stuff we do on computers, there's nothing in your hand. No. You know, so there's the satisfaction of having something developing there in your hands and you're seeing how it builds. Yeah. And you know that you, you know, the hour spent on it, you've got something to show for every moment of that. Oh, yeah, because if you think you can waste two hours on Facebook... Absolutely. So easily, and at the, the rabbit hole, yeah. Yeah, and then so at the end of it, you're just frustrated because you're angry with something. Like that. Where's two hours of this? Absolutely. And you've got, you know, a Absolutely. flower or something. It's so beautiful. Yeah, and also the the pleasure that you have of making it. But then, if it's for you, looking at it, other people coming and seeing it, or gifting it, and also those things that they become so strongly associated with mm -hmm. you. So when people come. Yeah, you know, if you've given something to somebody and they get it out for a special occasion and it's the thing that keeps coming out and mm. then it's it's so lovely. It gets tied into everybody's memories. Oh yeah, well it's like those so. tablecloths when you were in last yes. time with me. Yeah. My my nan had those and my mum had them and they came out for special occasions. Like the little serviettes came out yeah. for like posh afternoon teas and things yeah. where people came to visit. And Celebrating. Things. Exactly. Celebrating. <coughs> Brilliant. Right. So, yeah, so you can see the scale of this is entirely different. That, yeah, that's tiny, isn't it? So though? it's a much smaller scale. Um, and I think it's actually quite important to explain the difference between Aida and the... Oh, yeah, um, yeah, linen, yeah. So the, the basically, you've got even weave. There's three types of fabric that you'd normally do for oh, okay. this type of work. So there's linen, there's Aida, and there's even weave. Oh, I thought... Oh, th okay. No, so even weave is designed to be as even as possible. So all of the fibres within it are evenly spaced and are as evenly sized as possible to make it a regular, completely uniform stitch that you mm -hmm. achieve. Linen is the traditional fabric that we were using. So it's been used, made from flax, made for centuries. Yeah. Um, this is what we originally started with. Um, and you can get in different counts, as we've talked about, so different threads per inch. Um, and it's got irregular um, thread sizes in mm -hmm. it because it's a natural product. Of course, yeah. Um, and then Ada is groups of threads grouped together, 
so you've got a bundle of them, so you've got a bigger cross, for right. example, when you're doing cross stitch, and it's much easier to see the whole, the holes larger, so it kind of self-identifies mm -hmm. easier. So those are the three different counts. Oh, okay. I, th I always thought there were only two. I didn't realise even weave no, was different. No. Yeah, so we've got even weave was inspired by linen. Yeah. You see, but it's it's a more controlled. But made it more, more easy. But yeah, basically. So even weave can't be the natural linen fibres because otherwise it would automatically go wobbly, would it? Yeah. So linen isn't necessarily even weave. So it's as even as possible. Yes. But within the fact that you've got possibly irregular sizes yeah, of yeah. thread. So for those of you who must have a very, very regular finish, it's even with you want. Okay. So, and, and, and the linen has more of a, an irregular surface touch to it as well. Well, also you get slubs in linen yeah, and things like that, can't you? Exactly. So you can't guarantee that it's going to be... Yeah, and that can be really beautiful. And it's funny because to the point where... Um, some of the even weaves, they dye them and treat them to try and keep the threads regular, but to give the look of the finish oh, uh, a bit of a linen y feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Ada here, you can see that's um, that we were working on earlier with the uh, blue tip. That's designed to look linen y. Yes. Yeah. So, but um, it's not linen. No. It's no. got a lovely feel to it. This is the one we talked about earlier. Yeah. I'll go through everything now because it's been such a fabulous hour, but it's nearly gone already. I know, and haven't always. stitched anything. I know. We've got a lovely start. Yeah. So, but again, I mean, it would be one of those things if you get to the point where you need to stop because we're finishing or yeah. go and get a cup of tea or whatever, life. Again, put your sticky tape there, mark it up with the symbol that you're on, bring your thread up out of the way and you know where you are. Mark up your chart and then you're ready to just pick it up, put it down. It waits for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a craft that pressurises you, which I love about it. Yeah. And, you know, you don't have to be faithful to one project. No, but the only trouble with it is... Mm. It's not, not that this is not if it's a hobby of yours, but if you're making something for somebody, yeah. if you're making a dress or a bag, mm. you can speed up and think, oh, I'm going to finish this really yeah. quickly. Whereas, oh. Well, well, you say that. The more that you do it, the more that you will speed up to it. You get to an optimum speed. Yeah. And so if you, you, you kind of come to it and you're a bit slower, you're getting your eye in, your hand in, but you will get to the point where you're optimum speed. And actually one of the things about not changing your thread, so being one of those people that works all the one shade, that does group in the design a bit quicker so it's easier to identify where yeah. you are. Gridding your fabric makes it easier and quicker. So a bit of prep work. Failing prepare, preparing to fail is uh, no, oh, no. Failing to prepare is fail, it, preparing to yeah, fail. Yeah. So it's that thing about prep work first makes it much easier and quicker to see where you are. Yeah. Marking your charts, but as I say, doing all the same colour means you're going quicker. You're not changing your thread so often. Oh, uh, so, so yeah, but I mean, no, we're not saying you have to do it quickly because it, it, it's a it's a it's your relaxation time. I was just thinking. Yeah, but if you've got a deadline <coughs> for somebody's birthday, yes, yeah, or, you suddenly need or an to important finish. occasion that you wanted to have it out then, yeah, you, there are tricks yes. that you can speed up. Or, you know, if you want to work with multiple threads, then that's fine, but have multiple needles. So get your needles out of your stash and get more of them. Well, actually, see, they watch the 11 o'clock hour. Yes. What's the, uh, 12, 12. I keep 12 o'clock. Because you're normally yes. on at 9 and 11, <laughs> yes. aren't you? Right, OK, let's recap then. Let's recap. Yeah. So we started off with the, the blue tit. <laughs> of course, that's exactly what it looks like. That's so we had the cushion, exactly. first of all, which is this one. <laughs> yes. So it measures 40 by 40. It's Ada, 100% cotton, Ada, uh, 16 inches square. Oh, sorry, 16 inch square. That's your, all your... Th so in here, you've got your Ada enough for front and back of cushion. Yes. All your thread, your needle, your chart yes. and your cards and everything. Absolutely. You don't need anything else. That's a complete set. Yeah, absolutely. It? Yeah. Need scissors. Scissors well, and That should be 59 10 pounds off, 49 Then we had the table runner that goes with this. And again, you've got everything you need in there. Now, we didn't talk about um, that one there. Obviously, mm -hmm. you just sew it together like a cushion, but yes. this one must have a hem on it. So, yeah, you could double turn it, hem it. Yeah. So, um, I mean, you could even, if you wanted to, you could actually do a traditional drawn thread hem, like a mitered hem, but you, yeah. This That's not now. Different. Not in the next this one. This is a whole 30 seconds. Yes. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, it's versatile. Lovely. Then we moved on to um, this one, Agapanthus. Yes. This is on linen. Now, it just makes you... So that finished thing there is 23 back. There's an awful lot of stitches on there. There is, but what a good amount of stitching for your money. Oh, no. Yeah, no, no, no. I think, it's, I think it's brilliant. But yeah. we've seen... Let me move that out of the way. Mm. How tiny that yeah. is. 
Yeah, but this is the kind of thing people would go, right, this is going to be my year project. So this is going to be a long project. Yes. And then I'll have short projects that are quicker or, you know, bigger. Yes. That you'd have... Yeah, because sometimes we want to finish something. Your side hustle. Exactly. Your side, side hustle. hustle. Side hustle. <laughs> right, then we'll go on to violets. Yeah. Uh, so this is the table runner here, this one. Again, all That's good. Thing. You love scale. these guys. All these got ten percent, uh, ten pounds off. Remember, ten pounds off all of them. The scale of the stitching on that is similar to the blue tit as well, so it's big. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can see, can't yeah. you? Yeah. Beautiful. Then we had the, uh, we went on to, no, that's yours, that's not mine. When we went on to this one here, which was your tablecloth, your square, with beautiful, look at the colours in there, beautiful spring-like. That's a medium scale of stitch as well. So oh, that's medium. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can see, yeah, yeah. A smaller scale of yeah. either. That's the kind of size I kind of would fancy. I think yes. that's too big, that's too small. That's it's like mummy bear. Day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Should be 66 99 remember? £10 off. Then we went to Poppy, which I love the colour. I'm calling it Poppy, I don't know if it is, but mm. love the colour. Now, this one is, again, the tablecloth in the middle. Beautiful. And then we went to something completely different. We went English Country Garden. Uh, so this one again. Now, what size is this? Oh, this is tiny again. Yeah, so it's the linen. So, but it's going to look really intense and beautifully. So is it this well. size? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then, but it's forty by thirty centimeters. So there's mm. a lot of stitching in there. A lot of stitching. So good value for your money. Yeah. But also, because it's so intense and small, you'll get such a jewel-like finish to it. It's going to look like one of those beautifully hand-painted, like miniature portraits. Oh, lovely. So. Not so miniature though. Forty by thirty. Yeah, but all right. the detail of it. Oh, what? All the detail. Mm. Oh, no, it'd be beautiful. And when you look at it, you'll see the little bonnet, the flowers. Well, it's, it's, you kind of look at it now and you think, oh, that's a pretty picture. But then you actually look at the detail of how they've got flowers growing round the, the park bench and thing, or the garden bench, and that's lovely. Uh, thank you, that was brilliant. We'll see you in an hour's time. Yeah. What are we doing in an hour's time then? We're doing embroidery tools and we're doing hard anger. Yes. So it's very exciting. Now, uh, what's the make? So, the, the needle. Um, Bowen. Right, last time we had these needles in, by the time we got to Helen's Hour, they'd nearly all sold out. We've got way, <coughs> way, 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 way more stock today. Helen will be able to tell you about all about the history of them and everything like that, because it's fascinating. And it's like su such a high brand, yes. isn't it? But yeah. not high prices. Yeah. Not high prices. And you think all the history and everything and the, and the quality of, of workmanship behind them, you'd think you'd be paying really, really high prices, but you're not. They're fantastic. Go ahead and look at it now in the break. Um, Helen will be back in an hour. Uh, I'll be back in four minutes with Lucy Pickersley when we're doing a, like, oh, I'm going to call it a project bag and a pouch. It's really lovely, made out of PU. I'll see you in four minutes from now. Hi, everyone. I'm Yvonne McAtamney. I'm a patchwork and quilter. And what do I do the rest of the time? The rest of the time, I actually own and try and manage village fabrics in the town of Wallingford. How did I start my sewing and journey? Well, I've been sewing since as long as I can remember. I uh, started out dressmaking with uh, my mum and my big sisters. And since then, I've tried my hand at most things and have finally ended up with patchwork and quilting. And I think that's probably due to one of Elner Burns' Quilt in a Day books. Let me assure you, you don't make a quilt in a day, but it's been a passion of mine for the last 25 years and I'm still at it, so there's hope for us all. So what do I enjoy sewing? Well, I like to do a bit of most things, to be honest, but my favorite thing is anything to do with my Japanese fabrics. So as you can see, we've moved to a different part of the shop and here we are in another of my favorite corners. And I really enjoy combining the lovely Japanese fabrics with some hand stitching and um, hand quilting. So I've moved to the permanent Christmas room at my shop here. And as you hopefully can tell, this is quite a large shop here. So most of my time is uh, involved in keeping this running successfully. So I don't really have a lot of time for claims to fame. So what I suppose I could say um, is that my claim to fame is actually managing to manage John Scott. 
Um, I'm sure he'll take that the way it's meant. So um, love you lots, John. My top tip is that children's colouring in books are a really valuable resource whenever you're crafting. You've got nice, clear outlines that can become templates for your applique work, or you can transfer them and use them as quilting patterns. I can't draw, but I can create lots of things using bits and pieces from things like children's colouring in books. Give it a try. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. Head over to your app store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the Schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. This Sunday we see the launch of Sizzix on Sewing Street. Sharon Curtis will be with John Scott to launch the Sizzix Big Shot Switch Plus which will help you enhance your designs with ease. So tune in this Sunday for the launch of Sizzix on Sewing Street. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one P&P throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard P&P is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items you can spread the cost over two, three, four or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with Split Pay. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye. Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Even after we've finished broadcasting live, just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one P&P with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub 
and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to SewingStreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Look at this. I love this. It's a project bag. It's a project bag. It's not one that you put on the back of your bathroom door to put your shampoos in the thing. It's a project bag. Lucy's taking us to the NEC this afternoon with the project. What are you making there this afternoon? I'm going to make in the maiden bag. Oh, well. The maiden bag. You've had it on here once before. Okay. So that's uh, this afternoon at the NEC if you're there. Um, on the, the uh, Hall 19 F01 is the stand. I know. Uh, anyway, this is lovely, isn't it? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through everything that's for sale first so you can start checking out while during the demonstration. But it's lovely because it's got like um, sheeny shiny on the back there. Now, this one here has got a pocket with, um, what's this called? Mesh. Ours has, well, ours has got mesh in. If you've got mesh at home, you can put mesh in, but we've got vinyl to go in there today. Uh, and lovely, lovely fabric. So let's just start then. I've got so much on my table, I don't know where to start. Right, so the bundles, first of all, Oh, and it's a two-project bag. It's a two-project um, pattern, by the way. Look. It's fancy, isn't it? Because the way that zip goes like that. Fancy. Nice. No, so you're getting two projects in the instructions. Two projects in the instructions. Right, so let's start with that one there, because that's the one that's been made up. So what we've got in this one is you obviously get the instructions... Then you've got your William Morris one metre of canvas. Then you've got your gold PU one metre. There's an awful lot of fabric in this bundle. Then you've got your white PU, or better, that's called ivory PU, that's half a metre. <coughs> Excuse me, then you've got a fat quarter of your green. £42.99 for that lovely bundle. John, can I just say, out yep. of all the PU there, you're going to get a few bags you know, a few project bags, a, a few pouches. But oh, OK. Without a doubt, you, you'd need to add more um, of your contrast fabric. Yeah. But in terms of your PU, that's going to do a few sets, that. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Forty two ninety nine. That's that one there. Now, which one are you doing? You're doing this one. Right. Now, I'm going to be up front with you on this one. Uh, but I'll, do, I'll tell you the bundle first, right? So you get the instructions. You get a meet, Now, you get a metre of your chambray on this one. Half a metre of your floral. Half a metre of your pink and one metre of your PU. Now, I'm, I'm not being negative, but I just want you to be aware that this PU is very different to all the other PUs. And we're gonna, you're going to need to work out a way to stabilise it because it's got, a, it's got a more than a bit of a stretch. It's got a proper stretch in it, look like that. So we're, we're going to be... Yeah, you can get stretch PUs. Um, but, but what we're going to do is we're going give to it, give it a go, aren't we, in the demo. Oh, sorry, wasn't this not the one you are doing? I thought we decided we were going to go with the solid pink. No, no, no. I said, oh, you can do. I turned I thought we were going to go with it to show them what it was doing. No, no, I thought you'd prep the floral one. I'll prep both. <laughs> OK. Well, what we'll do is we'll just show you what we mean in a minute. We'll show you what we mean in a minute. OK, uh, 42 99. Well, no, no, all I'm saying to you is, what Lucy and I don't want you to do is to buy this one and then get it home and go, well, mine didn't work like Lucy's worked. So we don't have to do the whole thing in it, but we can just show them what we mean, Lucy, by the stretchiness. Is that all right? Right, OK, so that's that, 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 that. So that's that, 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 that. I'm, I'm just... Uh, oh, you know me, and I'll, must, I'll get into trouble for this from the management, but I, if something doesn't quite work properly, I don't want you to get it home and be disappointed with it. Now, I'm not telling you not to buy it, but I'm also telling you, you, you may not be sitting home going, well, you're a stupid boy, all you need to do is this, this and this. Let me know, because I don't know, right? But all I don't want you to do is to get it home and then go, oh, mine's not working, and there's nothing worse than buying a project where it doesn't work. Do you and know what I mean? And I'm it's just... a beautiful print. No, no, it's it gorgeous. And it's a really print. lovely PU, but it's not the same PU as all the other PUs. It's a finer, stretchy one. I, 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 no, no, I, I, I just think there might have been a mistake somewhere in the... In, and I'm not blaming anyone, but when you buy, you know, it's just, it's just not the same PU as all the others. That's all I want to say. And I'll get told off for saying that, but I'd rather you knew at home what you were getting, basically. So I'm going to put that to one side. Then we also had the navy version. So we've got the navy version here, so you get the instructions. You get um, a metre of your blue navy. You get a metre of your... Oh, that's nice. 
You, this is your cotton, uh, it's not cotton canvas, this is a cotton quilting, right? Plus you get half a metre of your silver PU, plus you get your fat quarter there, Liberty Fat Quarter, at 42.99. 42.99. Then we've got the re Cafe Rainbow, Cafe Rainbow, right? So you get your instructions, you get your metre of your, I want to call it elephant, it's not called elephant. Half a metre of your burgundy. Ooh, that's nice. Half a metre of your floral, one metre of your rainbows. 42 99 So there are all your bundles. You can buy the pattern on its own. Sharon says your blouse looks lovely, Lucy. Thank you. There you go. Nine ninety nine. Nine pounds and ninety nine pence for your pattern. Right, -o. now you will need some H640. Half a metre of H640 here. Is that enough to do the project? Yes. Yep. Enough to do the project. Half a metre of your H640. Decaville. Decaville. Oh, you need the Decaville in this one as well. I need the Decaville from the last hour, please. Dan. Or oh, you can just borrow my square. Hmm? Lovely. Uh, where do I need the Decaville for? I'll use, just use your piece there. You need your, you get half a metre, you can buy half a metre, uh, half a metre is enough, isn't it, for this? Yes. This is the, Lucy's cut out piece here, but you need your Decaville, which is um, adhesive on one side and, and not on the other. So that's uh, 8 is for your half a metre, you don't just get this little square here. You get your half a metre of that one. Lovely. Then you'll need some handles. Loads of handles, right. Um, right, okay, so this, I'm going to do these first. So they're like your burgundy ones, faux leather. Wine, wine. 8 99 I'm just going to whiz through these. And you've got red. These are your sew-on ones. So the holes are already punched there for you to sew them on with. 8 99 Faux leather, soft in the red. Then we've also got the um, tan. They're the ones I used on the market bag. Oh yeah, that's one you used on that nine o'clock project. Then we've got these which do come with rivets, but the rivets have been packed away. So there's your tan one with rivets. You get enough rivets in there plus spares. 8.99. Then we've got dark brown with the rivets. That's very, they are really, really dark chocolate brown, those. Well, there's, there's black next to it, just so you can see. Oh, on the telly, it looks the same, but that's black and that's dark brown. And then, of course, we've got the black ones. Lovely. You will need some zippage. So we have zip on a roll now. Uh, now, have we already cut it or is it by the half metre? Five metres. Five metres of zippage there. No pulls, just the zippage. <coughs> Size five, white continuous, five metres. Then we've got the black. Five metres. $9.99. Now I've got zip pulls for you to buy to go with this. Okay, so we've got silver, coloured. You get all five for four ninety nine. There you go. That's your four ninety nine for those. Also come in gold. Now is it rose gold or just gold that? Gold, gold, that. Looks a bit rosy to me, that one. Dunno, dunno. Four ninety-nine. We've also got some double-sided washi tape. Well, not washi tape, wash away tape, sorry, quilters tape. Yeah, got the code. You put this in, Ben. P Y Z W forty three. 
Oh, this is the new packaging. Yeah, it's the new packaging. It's the um, recyclable tap packaging. Six ninety nine. That always sells out when we bring that on. Then your uh, PVC for your pocket. Yeah, on the bag, on the original bag, it's got mesh, but we haven't got any mesh in stock at the moment. So this is an uh, alternative. Two ninety nine for half a meter. Then we've got the glitter. Glitter. PVC. Now, I don't think they call it. I think they call it silver. Oh no, clear glitter. They've called it clear glitter. Two ninety nine. Yeah. Good God. What? Cheap. Affordable. Sorry, very affordable. Affordable. Yes, thank you. Affordable and achievable. Yep. Then the one other thing we've got in the hour today is l lamin. I never get the right name Lamy right. Laminex. Lamiflex. Lamifix. Lamifix. Right. So now this is uh, this is what you get here. This piece here is what you get for two ninety nine. What is it, Charlie? What is it? What is it, Lucy? What is it? It's a water. It's a, it's a fabric, effectively, that when ironed on makes anything waterproof. So I'm going to use it on this project here, but think beyond that if you're making caddies, anything you want to waterproof. So if you're used to using eau de coat, this is going to do it. But I'm going to show you. I'll show you the way. Oh, okay, brilliant, I'll brilliant, convert brilliant. you all. So how much is that? Two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Right. I've shown you everything for. Oh, yeah. I've, I've shown you everything for sale now, so we can just concentrate on the. Um, Demonstration. Demo. I'm straightening my hair up. It's just all chosen to fall down. Okay. Brilliant. Okay then. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to make up a whole big sandwich, a nice big fat sandwich. Oh, okay. So you just bind it all at the end, flat. All gets bound at the end. Really? Yes. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our beautiful cotton fabric. Um, I've chosen this one rather than the plain. Yeah. And we're going to need two pieces, one for the inside and one for the outside. And we're going to fuse one piece to the H640, as I've done here. And then we're going to fuse one piece to the Decaville. Right. The Decaville is there to obviously make this stiff. Now, when I designed this particular project, it's because I want to do a bit of EPP, English paper piecing. And I thought... It's the kind of project that I don't sit and do very often, and I definitely pick it up and put it down rather than start it and end it quite quickly. So I want to be able to store it away um, quite easily. And it took me back to when I first started out in my sewing, and I had a wardrobe instead. So I tended to hang things up in the wardrobe in, in there instead on the little okay. pole, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought this would come in handy if it had a, a hanging feature on the top so that if you were doing something, for example, like... I don't know, Jenny Jackson's doing a block of the month. Yeah. And you've done this month, you want to pop it all away, you want to keep your threads together, the notions that you use, all the instructions or whatever, until next month's come out, you can pop it all away and bring it out again next month when you're ready. So that was the thinking. The purse I made to go with it was so that we'd got, you know, something extra to go with it for all our extra little tools and bits and bobs. And then different to other project bags, what I've done is two big pockets that go onto the front of the bag as well, which okay. we connect with one long zip, which is lovely. So that's the H640 fused. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fuse my other panel to the Decaville. Now, don't worry if you've got these little crunchy marks. They'll all take care of themselves as we go through. But do make sure that you um, fuse this really, really well together. So it does take a little bit of time. I know that still a lot of people that I watch, they still just kind of do this and expect it to be done. Yeah, no. You've got to remember, the whole point is, by keeping it still, you're giving time for the heat to penetrate to melt the bits of plastic. So if you think of them as particles or a jelly tot, those little jelly tots need to melt. Other sweets are available. Yeah. They need to be able to melt so that they can all bond together. So give it the seconds that it needs. It will <coughs> be play on sort of fusible products, how long it might recommend. Um, so it could be anywhere up to eight seconds. Trust the process. And let's make sure it's going to stay beyond, um, you know, the, the short length of time. So just work along and get that all in place. Now, the only big decisions you've got to make, other than having two vinyls to choose from for this Okay, I think is, this is a relative of yours. Oh. Toke. Brother. Oh, your brother. Lucy Elizabeth. What have I done? Exclamation mark. What have I done? What did Gran get in trouble with when she was at the milliner's saying it was cheap? 
It's inexpensive. Oh, dear. It's an unusual name, Toke. Is yeah. it short for something? No, it's not. It's to do with, and I always get this bit wrong, so I'm not going to try. Okay. But it's all to do with um, lipstick all over my hands. Oh, no. Um, can I have some cough, please? Um, it's all to do with um, a popular TV soap that begins with E. And, and Oh, no, not that one. And um, an actor that was on it, yes. An actor that was on it that my mum and dad particularly liked. And that was his name. Oh! His actual name. Uh, have we got a wet wipe or something that Lucy could just wipe this lipstick off her hand, please? Or a blue cloth with a bit of damp? I prefer the lipstick on my lips rather than the hands, really. On your lips. That's definitely there. I don't know how you got it all over your, uh, your hand. So you can see I've really taken my time for using that on. Yeah. But we've got to have it right. Um, so the next thing we're going to decide, what I was about to say, was when I've trimmed this down, is um, we're going to put Lamifix on now. Right. Now, the Lamy Fix, you can choose wherever you want to put it, either on the inside or the outside, depending on the job, job you're doing. I put mine on the outside, so in effect, the piece that's touching John's desk right now. Right. Because I kind of think I'm terrible. Sometimes I tend to sling things around. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you. Oh, he's, <laughs> he's brought a whole pot of wet wipes out, and he went like this and gave Lucy one. <laughs> yeah. We're on a budget, aren't we? We're yeah. on a budget, love. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, no expense spared, eh? Have we got any blue? Have we got, have you got blue tape there to dry them with? Oh God, yeah. There you go. Oh sorry. You can have a whole roll of that. Sorry, sorry to be <laughs> wasting time like this. Oh no, oh. it's all going horribly wrong. Look at this while we're doing it. So, um, what was I saying then? Oh, the Lamy fix. So what I tend to think is. Um, think about how you're going to be using your project bag. Like I say, I can be a bit rough and ready sometimes throwing things in cars and I want to make sure that back fabric, I mean, this one's cream. We don't want to get it dirty, do we, or spoil no. it? So we're going to let me fix it instead. So I don't know what your boot, boot of your car's like, but I know exactly what the boot of mine's like. Oh, thank you. Was that just because uh, the light was in mine? So it was... Uh... So I'm just trimming this one down and then we'll get the Lamy Fix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the Lamy Fix to go against the H640 piece so that, because I like tactile things. Uh -huh. So I want the squidge to be on the outside. But it's just one of those very personal things. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter so much. But it's definitely worth having the H640 in to create texture. And you definitely want your Decaville in to make it, you know, a bit more sturdy. Otherwise, it's still going to be quite soft and floppy, and we don't want that. So just work around quite quickly. It's a lovely bag, this one, because it's, it, it, it kind of builds quite quickly. You see there's lots of instant gratification, yeah. I think, in this make. So, okay. Now, the only scary thing about this is that I haven't used Lamy Fix here with this iron before. Uh-oh. But we'll all live and learn together. <coughs> Are you taking my piece as well? Yes. Um, do, do we know what temperature it needs to be? I don't, actually. OK, that'll be interesting. Yeah. Uh, and I don't peel anything off then. I literally just put it... There's nothing to peel. OK. We lay it down on top, and we're just going to tentatively check the corner first. Yeah. And see what happens. We'll turn away now. Yeah. And we'll work our way in, OK? So there we go. Instantly, you can see it turns clear, like proper clear. Yeah, yeah, this I was going to say it's slightly it's gone from cloudy to clear. Yeah. And it just runs across quite smoothly. Just go along in circles, keep it moving. Yeah, because you ultimately, when you look at it, you think this will just melt. It doesn't. Just keep it moving. And when you've done it, go over it again. I might well do this a few times during the process. Maybe not constantly, but I'll go back over the areas again. Oh, is it called UP? P, U, P, what's, what's, P, U, P, what is it? What are the letters that Sarah Patterson uses? No, there's only three. Okay, so Sarah Patterson designs her cotton fabric, then she sends it, well, has it made in the factory, and then the factory melt ah. on TPP. She says, U, P, T. You know, she shouts at me because I get it wrong all the time. Um, it's exactly what the factory's doing to her fabrics over, over in um, Korea. Yeah. So you can see that's as easy as it gets, but now I've got something waterproof. So now let's think, it's, it's, <coughs> it's summer season, we want to make some lovely mats to go in our garden. Yeah. Can you imagine the difference this is going to make? Yeah. On the top, 
um, you've got like a, a whole new look product again. But um, yeah, I was introduced to this in January and that was it. I was off. I wanted a roll. I wanted a big roll of it. Yeah. And I love using it. Have really you bought good. a big roll of it then? I have bought a big roll of it, yes. Yes. So I'm just going to trim down any extra. And don't worry, if you want to sew over afterwards as well, you can absolutely do that. So if, if you want to go in and quilt this now, maybe you want to put your ASR on. Does that take machine. away the waterproofness then? Um, You're punching holes in it. I suppose every time we're perforating, the truth is yes. Yeah. yeah. But you know I what? wonder if you quilted your fabric first. Yeah. And then ironed it on once the fabric. Oh yeah, built you could in. do that. Absolutely, is, is the possibilities are endless, yeah. really, aren't they? But it's a nice product. Um, I mean, I I'm going to be the first one to say I was a bit frightened of like, like you. I'm not going to put an iron on that. No. Are you absolutely crazy? But yeah. yeah, no problem whatsoever. Just like I say, just keep your iron moving. So everything I just told you about the Deckerville, keep your iron still. We're not doing that. We're yeah. just keeping it moving this time. And it's a beautiful product. Do you want to feel it? Oh, wow. It's fantastic. <laughs> so, we've got our inside with our Deckerville. We've got our outside now. Yeah. And I'm putting everything so it's now wrong sides together, like so. And I'm going to clip. So I am going to clip. And we're going to clip all the way around. And then I'm going to base them together. UTP. Is that the letter? Are they the letters? Something, something polyurethane. If you wake up around midnight and you remember, please don't ring me. I won't. Don't need to know. Okay. Oh, you, you can ask Sarah. She's at the NEC now. Oh, is she? Yeah. She had such a huge crowd around her stall yesterday, I can't tell you. So I would definitely put lots of clips in on this. Um... I'm not, but, uh, and all I'm going to do now, like I said, just to make it as one and make things easier, I'm just going to base about, I don't know, two eighths, is that a quarter of an inch? Quarter. All the way around. I always say two eighths, and my mum says, you mean a quarter? Quarter, of an inch. you mean a quarter, I'm with your mum. Yeah, yeah, I know, it's bad, isn't it? Um, so we're just going to quickly do that, just keep it nice and still. If you've got a walking foot, absolutely would recommend it for this whole process. Well, it makes a nice noise as well when you sew through it. Yeah. More eggs said, hello, John, is it P-U-L you're thinking of? No, not P-U-L, I don't think. T-P-U it is, T-P-U. Just off to the hairdresser, says Sue. <laughs> Bye then, Sue. Don't have too much cut off. Right, nearly there, and then we'll be ready to think about the other vinyls. You'll have lots of fun making the purse. Yeah, the purse well, yeah, it's that funny point. twisty thing. Yeah, lots of fun. Um, the asymmetry can be a bit of a head scratcher, and it's ridiculous. But actually, you have one, one pattern piece, but you have to lay it in particular ways to make okay. sure your lines come out right. Now, are the linings, I suppose you might use plain, non-directionals. You might have no issue whatsoever. But, oh, um, what, because if you use a direction? Yeah. yeah. It, it, it doesn't matter how sensible you are in your head. It'll still, it'll just throw you a little bit. It's just, it, <coughs> and it literally is the asymmetry effect. It's a weird thing. Lovely. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start with this big bottom pocket down here. So I've pulled out two options, like I, I mentioned before. So we can either work with this plain pink here. Yeah. Looks absolutely beautiful. Or we can work with this vinyl here. Okay, we're not going to work with it now. Let's just talk about it. So it's got a bit of a stretch in it. It has and got a bit your of a con you were con Your concern was? I was just concerned that um, you, you, I think you're going to have to stabilise it in some way. Yeah. Else it's going to sort of distort a little bit. Now I've added two layers of interface into the back here. Um, it didn't massively fuse. It, it did fuse a little bit, but you've got that chicken and egg situation where if you go too hot with your iron to truly let it do its job, 
then you are going to um, have the opposite problem where you're going to start melting. Well, you're going to compromise your PU, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other thing is, and I don't know how much you can see through the camera, this is what I was showing, that it can, because it's hard to get this to lay flat, it almost created a, its only slight distortion. And like I say, you might not be able to see it, but I just wanted to raise people's awareness. No, 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 they... no. And we like to be honest here, that's all. It, I just think it's, it's, a, it's a question of we've bought a PU that isn't the same as all the yeah. others, and it's a beautiful PU, yeah. and it's slightly stretchy, so it'd be gorgeous for other projects, but not necessarily this one. I think it'd be very, it would think it would be perfect to work with the clutch bag. I would try it with that, yeah. yes. And maybe, Make a lot of those then. Yeah, or maybe you don't want to do two colours and just want to use this oh, yeah. on that. I think it will be fine on that because Lovely. it's a smaller project. Yeah, um, yeah that's it's what just, I we, think. We like to be, I mean, Lucy was stressing a bit during, I heard during the last hour because it wasn't fusing properly and everything. And there's a solution to everything. And I'd rather be totally, utterly honest with you and not say to you, oh, this will be make it perfectly and then you get it home and it makes your life, well, you spent 42 99 and you're like furious with us because it's not going to work the way it should really work. So you're just going to carry on with the pink now then? You're yes, just, you know, I'll carry on with yeah. pink if you're happy. No, okay. I'm absolutely, as long as we've got that explained why we're doing it then, I'm fine. Yeah, no yeah. problem. Right, now, the, the thing I would definitely recommend now is that you use um, tapes. OK, mainly because we can't um, pin these areas. Of course, we can clip. Yeah. Um, but if you've got tape, I would use tape. Wash away quilters tape, double sided. Um, so <coughs> I am going to open that up. Well, you've got a great big roll of it. Oh, I bought loads the other way. I bought four rolls. Thought no messing. I always seem to run out of this yeah. stuff. So I'm going to apply that to the vinyl edge across the top here now you there are cheaper products on the market for this sort of thing however it can gum up your needle she's allowed to use the word cheaper on that one toke so don't worry um because i um what was i going to say then you put me off them there are cheap ones but they clunk up that's what you said they do they will they will ruin your your, your needle yeah. your sewing machine needle yeah and you're using the brand new machine have they don't be doing that now it's not to say I don't use um, the cheaper ones. I do, but it's about using it in the right place, and I'll okay. show you where, okay? <clears throat> so we're just going to... So what I've done here is I've cut off a piece of that beautiful tape. I've decided to go with silver pulls against the white. I think I'll probably use the gold against the black. Yeah. Um, and we're just going to put one in from I either end. Okay. okay. Now, when they come to the middle... You want it to sit so there's no bubble or misjoin. You see, it fits perfectly. There's no bubble at all. Yeah. And the way that I've got that to be so perfect is when I've got one in, I held this up and, oh, sorry, let me just do it this way. I held yeah. this up and then on the length that was just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit longer, I put that in first. I attached it to that bit first. And then on the opposite side, I cut away some of the teeth like so. Can you see? Yeah. And that allowed it to go in and feed in exactly on point. And that makes sure you don't get that horrible little effect down here. Lovely. Just do bear in mind, although this I, I do always cut mine a bit longer, to be honest. If you're going to do that to keep your pulls out of the way, I would advise you pop a clip on the end. Yeah. Just as that little psychological reminder not to whip it off. So we're just going to press that along like so. Now, I always do one length of sewing at a time. Don't rush the process with this bit, people. It's a beautiful, beautiful bag. You're going to see some gorgeous zip when it's done. And what we're aiming for is straight stitching wherever possible. Now, I'm going to play devil's advocate, and I'm not going to switch out my foot. But at this point, I probably would put on your um, zipper foot. Yeah. If you have these machines or the brand new model that's just come out, I'll show you another foot that I, I absolutely love using it throughout this project, which is this one, which I'm really sorry because I don't know the name of it. All right. Um, I'm going to pop it on there. Can we zoom in at Yeah, all? Charlie, can you come in on that? Just because I want to hand out all my best tricks, really. This comes with this machine, does it? The it does. It comes yeah. with this foot. Yeah, with this machine, yes. And it's got this little hole just here. Yeah. And the needle will go down there, which means that when I want to sew close to the edge along here, the needle's going to go in that hole. And yeah. it takes me about one-eighth 
away from the edge. Brilliant. And it makes it so precise as you go along. It's being edge stitching foot, is it? It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. Um, Dan, did you make my tea, by the way, my love? <laughs> I'm not being a diva. I'm not being a diva. I did put the kettle on to boil. I just didn't have time in the break to... Um, it's only 11.36 now, Dan. I'm just going to slide one of those zips pulls out of the way just to complete that step. And trim. I'll move my zip out of the way again. And now I'm going to add more tape onto the top. Right. And then we're going to add the lining to this part of the pocket. Lovely. And I'm going to be using the blue fabric for this. You can really have a bit of a mix and match of what you want wear with these bags. So just make sure you line it up down the side. Yeah. And then we'll work along that same line of stitching again. If you've got um, a roller, a seam roller, great yeah. to have that as well. Because remember, you can't really iron these fabrics. that out the way again Oops, the up there. it's moving this uh, uh, zip pull out the way okay and then we're going to flip that lining up and over to the wrong side and this is where you really want to have your um, seam roller yep and then we're going to top stitch along the bottom length just there. And like I say, this is where I would be pulling out that cute little foot and switching it over. But I'll just leave it for now. And I will do it, but I'll do it when I've attached this piece as well. Okay. So now we're going to do the upper panel. Um, do you want this to show us off? Yeah. Thank you very much. So we've done this section here effectively. And now we're going to attach this strip just here. So, in a similar way, we're going to add tape to the upper part of the tape. We're adding tape to the tape. I was going to say, yeah. And place that down, making sure that the set side of it runs in line with the, uh -huh. the rest again. And so. So I'm not using a, using a zipper foot? I'm not, no. OK. The walking foot's managing very well, and unlike other sewing, I don't need the stitch line to be close to the zip. Yeah. I want to see my zip. Yeah, yeah OK. So, OK, now... Now we're going to go... Let me just do a double-double check quickly. He's saying to me, I'll leave your tea over here, on the other set. I was like, no, I'll have it here, please. Right, so now more lining. There is more lining. I'm just trying to remember. It's been a little while since I made this. I'm not going to lie. Uh, which way I did it. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm thinking instead. Okay, so this is going to come up and down. Yeah. So I need a line into that. But I need that to go in. Just bear with me a second. So I go through the bundles while you're um, while you're considering. Right. So the bundle we uh, the, the original one's made out of is this one here. So that's the Clarendon instructions. Remember, you get the instructions for the Clarendon and for the little pouch bag as well. Uh, this one's been the most popular. So you're getting one meter of your canvas, your um, William Morris canvas. You're getting one meter of your gold PU, half a metre of your white PU, a fat quarter of your green, and your instructions, £42.99. £42.99. We've also got the rainbow one, um, which is the CAFE one. So that's a metre of your CAFE rainbow, half a metre of your CAFE flowers, 
Uh, half a meter of your wine, one meter of your mushroom elephant, plus your instructions, 42.99. And then we've got the navy one. So that's the instructions. You get a meter of your blue, a meter of your William. You see, I'm going to say William Morris, but is it? Oh, it's Liberty. Liberty William Morris. Then you've got half a meter of your silver and a fat quarter of your Liberty there, 42.99. Beautiful. I'll leave that there. Are you ready? Yeah. So um, what we're going to do now is in exactly the same way, it's this size together. So yep. the linings are touching. Clunk, clunk, clunk. I just want to get that back just a teeny weeny bit. That's it. Right. So let's have a little look at this. So what we've got now yeah. is all the front with a bit of lipstick on it. Yep. Lovely. Is there, you got more lipstick on your hand? I've got it on the PU oh. now. <laughs> it's good lipstick, isn't it? Yeah. Buy cheap, buy twice. Um, right, so the, like I say, we need to be top stitching along here now. Yeah. And then we're going to be going in and adding in the lining part of all of this, which is this big panel here. Lovely. So I might just switch out my foot because I do think it's worth it because it'll look smashing. And it's only a quick change. So it's just a quick unscrew. And then the... Oh, she's so taking the walking foot off. I've taken the walking foot off. Yeah. I've put this new foot on. So you don't need the shank from your regular foot to be in there. Like I say, it's just a quick switch out. I always, always hand lower the needle down first to make sure it's in the, in the correct position. Yeah. And it's going through that hole, which it is. So we're nice and happy there. Lovely. And now I'm going to switch up my stitch length to a 3.5. You can go to a four if you wish. Now, because I haven't got my seam roller, it's okay. I'm just going to be pulling this ever so slightly to make sure it goes open and flat on both sides. Lovely. And we're going to work along. So I'm going to hand lower it down to start off with until I know it's taken a nice bite and then work my way along. Let me just do that again quickly. <coughs> I'm just going to actually go down the side first and feed it in. There we go, much better. Never like starting on an edge really. So if you just go down the side first, up and then along, it'll be much, much happier with you. No, it actually does want the walking foot in. Oh, is it jumping? It just wants to do lots of little stitches, and that's just you, you just got to practice and see what the yeah. machine is going to allow you to do. It's only because it's got the PU in, so it can be like a little bit sticky feeling, I suppose. But if we don't try, we don't find yeah. out. Always have a spare bit of fabric next to you and play with that first. Now, I can't unpick what I've done, but um, that's okay. That's okay. So instead, you would move your needle across now. I'm not going to. The walking foot will handle going over those um, zip teeth perfectly well. So just a gentle pull as I go, like I say, just to make sure those layers are, are nice and flat. There we go. And then we'll rotate it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come back down on the other side. Lovely stitching. While I'm here at this end, I'm just going to sew across the zip end at this end. So we don't have any whoopsie moments. Yeah. 
And then I'm going to go across to the... Oh. I need that. Is that important? I need it. Dan! <laughs> There we go. And that's that bit done. Thank you. That's all nice and straight. Thank you very much. So take my clips out. Take them out as soon as you can. And now I'm just going to tidy up the end and strain it all out. We're looking for 17 inches there. There we go. Don't give away your secrets. I know, sorry. <laughs> as soon as my <laughs> mouth opens. We go. Okay, and now we're ready to put in the lining piece of the pocket system. Okay, now I'm just, yes. So we're just going to do it in exactly the same way. We're going to line up that edge. I haven't cut this down to absolute size. Uh -huh. I can do that after, it's not really a problem. So, in a similar way, we are just going to now sew our one centimeter again, flip and then base the sides. And then we can get the vinyl in. Oh. Okay, up and over. Again, if you've got your roller, please use it at this point. Yeah. If you no, are using... We had the seam roller on today, did we? That was yesterday, a day before yesterday had the seam roller on. If you're using clips, all I'd recommend is, because they arch like so, make sure the flat side hits the vinyl, because then you're not going to leave little dints in your fabric. Oh, uh, the seam roller was in 8 o'clock this morning, so you can get yourself a seam roller from 8 o'clock this morning. And then when that's down, what you can do is you can base those, so those areas. Blimey, had you not put it away yet? Here's the seam roller. Would you like to borrow it? Um, right? No, thanks. OK, fine. I'll just show it then. Oh, here it comes. And I'm just looking for... What do you need now? I was looking for some washi tape or something, actually. Don't worry. It's only because we can't really use friction pen, but yeah. we sort of subdivide around about here. It's okay. I will just eyeball it instead and say it's going to be about there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to sew a row of stitching across the top, come down the side, across, up to divide the pocket, yeah. down and all the way along making sure we've got a zip either side. So a nice long stitch length again. And work our way in. taking the mickey out of me in the gallery because I bought one of those, you know, those loomy cold tub where you jump in the cold water in the morning. Oh, yeah. And I bought one and um, it was broken. And they were brilliant, loomy were brilliant. There was a new one there, like, within the day, within two days of me complaining. But, of course, it's still in its box now on the dining room table. So everyone keeps saying, how's the cold water tub? How's the cold water tub? And I'm like, it's in its box on the dining room table. I'll get, I'll get it, I'll say, it's just I've had a day off, have I? It's just been a bit of a... You've had a busy week, though, haven't you? Busy month, this month's been yeah. frightening. Yeah. Must be due holiday. No. I'll, I'll go away for three days on my birthday, that's about it. I'm just going to house in Spain for th a few days. And then uh, San Diego in October. Oh, lovely. I've got a day off tomorrow for my birthday. Yeah, it's her birthday tomorrow, everyone. It's Lucy's birthday tomorrow. 
Happy birthday. Oh, you can't sing that. Oh, or other songs. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are you going to do then? Are you going to a spa? Do you know what? No, I'm not. Do you know what I've actually asked for? And we, we, what you're asked for and what you get in are two completely different things. Girl can drink. The girl can drink. Yeah. Just, I just want to go home for the day. <laughs> I just want to go home. I don't want to cook anything. I don't want to make myself any drinks. And will they, will they, I... um, will that happen? Yeah. Yeah, Mark's good, isn't he? Oh, just the husband. None, none, none of the kids are going to help out there. Well, I mean, they might do. All my youngest one seems to talk about them in it is trains. It's all we hear all day, every day. Trains? Trains, trains, trains. Okay. Yeah, so he's today. No, it's Friday, isn't it? Tomorrow, we're, his room's being reconstructed so he can get boarding in so he can do a train layout. Yeah, but you're not doing anything. Oh, I'm not. Oh. I'm not. Um, but I'm at a social on, sewing social on Sunday. Oh, OK. And, yeah, I'm just somewhere all of the time at the minute, so I just I just want to stay at home tomorrow. It's not a lot to ask for, no. is it? So look how beautiful that is as soon as yep. I do that. Gorgeous. Okay, so I know you all want to see how I'm going to do the vinyl. Not hard, and it's the same with the mesh. All we're going to do, and I am going to take my stronger tape now, okay? But please, yeah, use your normal tape. It's absolutely fine. But I'm just using this to grip, not necessarily so. So I'm not really worried. Yeah. And I'm going to stick it in place. I'm going to use my grid lines on this mat to help me out a little bit to make sure I stay straight. If I can, you, you know. Go. Oh, no. She just sort of stuck with the decent stuff. I told you, buy cheap, buy twice. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so we're nice and straight. We've got a nice little line there. And then we can just overlap this a little bit. As I said, I have cut this a bit long, but that's absolutely fine. So that goes in like so. And yeah. then guess what we're going to do? Top stitch. No. No, we're not. We're going to add some more tape. Oh. No, we're not ironing it, Charlie. We're not ironing it. No. And then we're going to get ourselves a nice little bit of ribbon, grow grain, Whatever you've got in yeah. your stash. What kind of width? Well, it's as wide as you want it to be. Yeah. I just, I mean, I've got this, which is quite nice. You're not going to see it. Oh, okay. So just use anything that's sort of knocking around. Maybe yeah. you've got some bits to hang off your clothing or something. But it's just to cover it, so don't really worry too much. And then from the top, we're going top to, stitch. We're going to row another row of top stitch, yes. And that will just secure that off and make it look quite pretty. And I might even do another row. Oh. Well, the stitching's so nice. Why, why, why not? Yeah. Why not? Have you made the stitch big? What size stitch are you using? It's a big one. It's 3.5. Excellent. Is there a taxi bike ready to take you to the NEC? Oh, what, sorry? Taxi bike. Ta no, no taxi bike. We used to get them in London all the time. Whenever I was on this morning, I had to be somewhere quickly. You get, it's a taxi, but it's a motorbike. Oh, So you nice. go out, they're waiting for you, and they give you all your leathers to put on, your oh. helmet, and you can talk to the driver. You have to hold on to the driver. And um, one time when I was going, I was flying to New York to, for the fashion show. So I'd done this morning, and then literally had to get to Heathrow in seconds. So uh, I got on the bike and he was like, uh-oh. I said, what's the matter? He went, I know you. You're Dale Winton, aren't you? And I said, no, I'm not Dale Winton. And he went, I've had trouble with you before, mate. And I said, I'm not Dale Winton. But is the Dale Winton life story on Channel 5 soon? I don't know who's playing me. Right, do you want me to carry on? Yes, please. OK, right, we're going to work on this top section now. We've got five minutes, because I won't do a recap. We'll just so carry this, on with demo. This bit just here at the top. I'll keep on going, then I'm having a lovely time. Right, so we're going to get this zip pull on. This time we're only putting one on. So if I create that little bubble, I'm not going to worry. I'm just going to keep going. So this one just wants to be the width of the fabric again. And pop it in. 
wiggle it in, and off we go. Like I say, I always, always cut them bigger than they need to be. Oh, yeah, yeah, Just yeah, have definitely. it. Just have it. I'd rather trim down later. So now we are going to, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh. Quick revert to instructions. I can't see because it's black and white. Oh, don't wait. Oh, what do you need? You need the instructions? Yeah, just to have you still got me instructions from earlier, I think, haven't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh. There is an addendum. Oh, sorry. I when it gone to that. print, I, I did contact Kerry to say, I'm so sorry. And it's a, just one number, five. Yeah. It was wrong. It's right. three quarters. We'd written five and three quarters. It's not. It's three. Oh, no, not that one. Sorry. One of the people. Well, it says in here because I wrote it anyway. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was just wrong. That's fine. Okay. So, yeah, we've got to get our zip in next. So, we... I'm I can't remember. Don't worry, because we're going to have to go to the end now. Don't oh, is that all right? Just okay. talk me through it. Just talk okay, so basically what we need to get to is pockets get loaded on like so, and it all get clipped in to be held. Yeah. And then this is going to go into the top Yeah. with a zip Yeah. like so, looking beautiful. Yeah. And then you're going to have, and obviously the lining piece, and then you're going to have one more piece of fabric that is like so. And again, the tape needs to be put down like so. So that's a piece of PU, is it? It is yeah. PU in exactly the same way. And there's going to be one both sides. And that will just hold that all into place quite beautifully. Lovely. And then your handles, you can, if you don't want to buy the handles, you just yeah. cut two lengths. Again, I always pre-tape them wrong sides to wrong sides. And just work around. Just make sure you've got a real nice sharp blade on your um, rotary cutter and just top stitch all the way around and then secure into place. Oh, yeah, okay, so they're, they're raw edges then? Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, great yeah. with vinyl, isn't it? Uh, and then but you bind the edge, do you? And then you bind the edge. Is it a bias binding or a straight binding? It is a straight binding, yes. Oh. And that's it? That's it. And then Perfect. your little purse. Lovely. Uh, Lucy, is at the NEC this afternoon? If you go popping along, do you, what time are you on the stand? Two o'clock. Oh, you've got to be quick. Well, it's only 12 o'clock, so 12 o'clock. 2 o'clock. At 2 o'clock. Uh, and when are you in here next? 21st of April. And do you know what you're making? I do. It's a beauty. Ask for your fabrics ahead of things so you can see if there's all this um, malarkey going on. Yeah. And I'll go and slap Kerry's legs for you, for you later. Oh. She's at the NEC. You can see her. I know her. she is, yeah. Get there. Yeah, I'll go say hello to her. All right, then. Thank you very much Thank indeed. Thank you. Now, this break's going to be a little bit longer because Benjineers had to come in uh, because there's something wrong with our, what's it called? AQ which means we're going to be about five minutes. So don't panic if we don't come back. We will, well, we'll definitely be back, but don't come back within the four minutes. I'll see you straight after this. Hello, everyone. I'm Delphine Brooks. I've been part of the Sewing Street family now for over a year, and it's been the most incredible journey so far. Some of you may already know that I like all things sewing, anything from quilting, to toy making, needle felting, and of course, applique, which is my favorite. The best thing about being part of the show is being able to share with you my imagination and bringing you new ideas and new designs and patterns and seeing how you interpret those designs and make your own work and then sharing your images of those is the most rewarding part for me. I'm currently working on lots of new ideas and exciting projects that I cannot wait to bring to the show and share with you all. But in the meantime, take care everyone and happy sewing. Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects, and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8am till 1pm, and you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. This Sunday, we see the launch of Sizzix on Sewing Street. Sharon Curtis will be with John Scott to launch the Sizzix Big Shot Switch Plus, which will help you enhance your designs with ease. So tune in this Sunday for the launch of Sizzix on Sewing Street. Never miss a show by watching on the go with the Sewing Street app. 
Head over to your App Store now and search Sewing Street and simply download to your smartphone or tablet. You can watch the shows live and see your favourite presenters and guests. Click on the Today button to shop all of the products that are featured in today's show. Want to know what's hot? Then click here to see today's bestsellers and highlights. Have you missed a show or want to watch one back? Then click the Schedule button and you can go back seven days to watch and shop and you can also see what's coming up over the next seven days. Want to say hello or ask a question to our guests? Then send a message to the studio. You can also keep in touch with all the latest news, events, product launches and much more by clicking here for our social media pages. Never miss a show by watching on the go with Sewing Street. Here at Sewing Street, we only charge one p and throughout the day. You can add as many items to your basket and check out and still only be charged once. Once you've checked out the first time and want to order again, you simply add the item to the basket and click on the Combine Order button. Remember, standard P&P is £3.95. Charges may differ for outside the UK. Or upgrade to our premium option for £5.95 on certain items. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. Are you having trouble finding the ideal gift for that someone special? Then why not treat them to a Sewing Street gift card? Simply head over to the website and scroll down to the bottom of the page and click where it says gift cards. You can decide between posting the card or delivery by email, then decide the value that you would like to send. Whether it's for a birthday, a special occasion, or just a way to say thank you, the Sewing Street gift card is the perfect answer. Did you know at Sewing Street that on various products we offer split pay? That means on certain items you can spread the cost over two, three, four or sometimes even five interest-free monthly payments. Just pay the first instalment when you purchase and you're away. So shop your way with split pay. Shopping with Sewing Street couldn't be easier. You can shop via our website at www.sewingstreet.com where you can watch our live shows and see all the products from that day. We also have a huge amount of products on our website from your sewing room essentials to fabrics, sewing machines and much more. You can download and shop on the go with our Sewing Street app. Simply head over to your app store and search Sewing Street. Alternatively, you can contact our UK-based call centre 24 hours a day on 0800 001 4433. Shopping made easy at Sewing Street. And we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye. Did you know that you can continue shopping 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even after we've finished broadcasting live? Just head over to www.sewingstreet.com for thousands of sewing supplies available from top brands. You still pay only one p and with split pay available on certain items and an easy checkout service too. Plus, you can get expert advice and tips from our Sewing Street hub and UK customer support is available 24-7. So head over to sewingstreet.com and continue your sewing journey. Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? Check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Every day, our experts will bring you a wealth of knowledge. They'll take you through the steps of making projects and we feature fabulous tips along the way. Whether you're new to sewing or a seasoned pro, you're sure to learn something new. We're live every day from 8am till 1pm and you can also watch back all of the demonstrations featured on the show on our YouTube channel. Sewing Street is now available on Virgin Media, channel number 754. 
Did you know that we can deliver to over 20 different countries worldwide, spanning four continents from the UK to Australia? Check out our website for the list of countries and delivery costs. Sewing Street, stitching the world together. Hello, my cook's back. How are you? Good, thank Good. you. Good. Now, tell me who are Bohin? Bohin are just the most amazing company. I love them. Right. So they're a company that uh, they make in France. They've always made in France. They've never outsourced any of their making. And they were founded by a chap called Benjamin Bohin in a place called Lagle in France, which was the centre of French needle and pin making in the medieval period and all the way through. Wow. And all of that tradition he brought together and then started manufacturing in 1833. Right. So he started this company and then they really focused on, in the 1860s, he'd sent his son out to go travelling across, came to England and Germany and all over and China to look at the best manufacturing um, ways of working and the best materials, brought all those together in his company and then looked at the best way to create a good quality needle the best way to create a good quality pin. What do you think, all of the tasks that you need it to do, yeah. how do we make that the best possible product? And that's how they approach all of their items. So it's basically a tool that's designed very well, made very well with high quality materials. So I'm not saying that every single pin and needle will be absolutely perfect because it's impossible in manufacturing to make that, but generally, the majority of the needles there are smooth as glass when they pass through the fabric. They don't snag. They're, they're beautifully made. So that's what they do, pins and needles mainly? Pins, needles, anything for the fashion and textiles trade. And again, they haven't out, uh, kind of outgrown and outsourced their, their making. Yeah. They've chosen to do particular things very well. Yeah, so they, they keep their, their range limited, but yes. what they do, they do fantastically Absolutely. well. Yes, okay. Exactly. Now, last time we did a show like this, yeah. which is the first time we've done it, by the time we got to now... Everything had sold out. Yeah. So today we've ordered loads more. So we're fine. We're fine stock wise. But um, I'm going to start with the needles now. So these are betweens. Now it's really funny. When I was at Wimbledon, I used to have to. Well, I was doing my costumes mm. and everything. I only ever used to use betweens. That's all I'd used the whole time. Yeah, you know, it's funny because embroiderers don't tend to use betweens no, very often. No. It's not. It's not an embroidery needle. So no. on the whole. So it's more, you know, when you're attaching fabrics to fabrics and, and you know, fashion, costume, Or doing your binding yeah, and doing yeah, all exactly. that sort of thing. Just little stitches. Exactly. Because you get tiny little yeah. gorgeous stitches. Yeah, they are. So these are your betweens. There's number 10. They've got the... Now, these have got big eyes because people always go, oh, little needles can't thread them. They've yeah. all got big eyes, Yeah, because that's the thing because, like, shops tend to have the small eyes, whereas yeah. these actually have a good long eye. So it makes it much nicer to work with. So, yeah. So you see what I mean about the price? So you get £3.25. Um, you get uh, 10 in there. Uh, is that right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, 10 in there. Lovely little betweens. £3.25. You're looking at this. Really, really, really high, 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 high quality, these are. Fabulous. £3.25. Now, we've also got more betweens, but I haven't got the packet here, so I'm going to pretend that, because the shape, the, the shape is there, but these are assorted sizes, I seem to remember, aren't they? Assorted sizes, betweens. They go to get 20 in the packet, so you get sizes 3 to 9. Sizes 3 to 9. There, oh, there you go. Use the image rather than me showing you the wrong packet. There's the image, sizes three to nine, different. Look at the big eyes in them as well. They're so easy to thread and fantastic to use. As Helen said, they glide through the fabric when you're sewing with them. Beautiful, three pounds and 25 pence. Then I've got embroidery needles. Yeah, that's this one. So now you can talk about these. Yeah, and again, these are great because they're embroidery needles. You'd use them for anything from the large scale with your, um, your perlays. You can use them with your fine scale, your silks, your strandeds. You know, they're going to work really well. They've got the big eye. They're just so nice to use. And, and the rule of thumb, people always get confused about needles. So what you, when it comes down to brass tacks, are you going through the fabric or are you going through the hole in the fabric? If you're going through the fabric, you want a sharp needle. Uh, a, a pointed needle. Yeah. If you're going through the hole, you want a blunt needle, so right. a tapestry needle. And then you ideally want the smallest scale for that job that you can comfortably thread. Because if you can't thread the needle, you're not getting very no, far. Exactly. So don't talk to yourself, <coughs> but essentially you've got a good range there. And actually quite a lot of people buy the mixed bags because what they do is they'll then train themselves. 
So you, you'll use it for the thickness of thread, but also training yourself to thread that needle smaller. Yes, smaller. exactly. So. Exactly. So that one there, that's your um, size is one to ten in there, three pound twenty-five. I'm presuming how many did you get in there then? One, two, three. Flip it over. Does it say? I can't remember. Sixteen, is it? Fifteen. <laughs> Fifteen. Why would there be sixteen? Well, this one's got sixteen. Oh. Oh. What craziness is this? I know, because that one's got 15 in it. <laughs> I don't know you 15 said that. in that one. <laughs> How funny. <laughs> Do you mind? This is Jimmy's, by the way. <laughs> That's all what the noise was. Jimmy's in the building. <laughs> right, okay, 15 of those. Right, then I've also got embroidery sharp point 18, 20, and 24. Yeah. <coughs> They're good solid needles, those. You could, I mean, you could even get away with using those for your wool. Like yes, yeah, exactly. Wool. So they're all £3.25. Look, so you've got sizes 18, 20, and 24. You get two of each size uh, for £3.25. Gorgeous. Then we move on to sharps. Now, uh, I'm going to do sharps at one to five. Yeah, mm. They're a good long needle. Now you get 16 in there. <laughs> no, no, because the next one you get 20. I know, you're collecting. <laughs> Changes. <laughs> it. Anyway, so there you go. So I put it a shot. There you go. Uh, you can't say that, Charlie. That's the French for you, we say. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Three pounds and 25 pence. Size is one to five. Then... We have the sharps three to nine. The thing that I like about their needles and pins as well is that they used a particularly developed type of steel. All right. So they, when I say they went into detail, they really went into detail. So they looked at the way that they roll the steel <gasps> to make it even stronger. No. Yeah, they're, they're so good. They're it's so weird, good. Isn't it? But it's, if you think about it, these are the things that we use. I mean, every day of our work. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're the thing, and like, in reality, so many of us know so little about the tool that we use every day. Yeah, of course, no, no, you just pick it up, don't yeah, you? Yeah, it, yeah. And I, I, the thing that I like as well is like, in Japan, they've got a ceremony to, when they, they keep all their bent and broken needles and pins, yeah. they've got a ceremony to like, honour the tools. So they do it with different types of tools. That they right. Use. But all the needles and pins they keep, and they have this ceremony where they kind of thank the tool that's done the job. After, so like their funeral? Yeah, almost, yeah. And like what do they do with them? Do they then melt them down or do they? I'm not sure what they do. I have to look into this a bit deeper, but Ooh, I just yeah. thought it was lovely that they had this thing where, they, you know, the thing that's done the work, the tool yeah. that's done the work. I was so oh, I love, I love uh, uh, stories of pe different people's yeah. cultures and yeah. things like that. Now, I've, n oh, hang on, I've got more needles. Got, yes. Let's do these first. This let's do these first. You've got, you got one open. That one, it's open. So, so this one's called a needle, uh, there's 40 assorted needles yes. here. And Ben kept calling it a case this morning, I think. Well, it's, like, it's like a pocket, isn't it? Oh, so a, a, a pocket? A, a pocket. Oh, pocket. So, um, so it's the same design as they used to use the, to keep their letters in. And it's a, it's a pocket. So you basically, it's, got, you see, it's oh, beautiful. No. But this one, it's the original design. They brought these back. So they'd got some that were collectible. And they used to, uh, you, people were finding them in their kind of um, relatives' sewing boxes. Yeah. And then we're like, why can't we get that now? So they brought them back. So this was the one from the um, kind of 1940s. And you can see the, the outside is that beautiful rose pattern. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trellis. But it's just beautifully laid out. And you can see you've got something for everything. So you've got your embroidery needles, your tapestry needles, your straw. Oh, Only actually tells you what they're shots. for across the top looking at it. Tells you the name at the top and tells you the size at the bottom. Oh. It's just so beautiful. It's just so, so considered. Everything is considered. What a lovely gift for a sewer. It is. It is. Yeah. And these, as I say, people collected them. And then the antique ones, they were like, well, why can't we get these now? So they started to bring them back. And they, as you say, they're such a lovely, self-contained gift. I'd be so thrilled if somebody gave Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So thoughtful and so useful. Yeah. So, but, but yeah. isn't it funny how um, they kind of think of, like, um, I, I don't know how to word that. Like, any industry has to move on. It's always yes. like, we've got to get better, yeah. we've got to get better. But actually... Sometimes you lose the gorgeousness because yeah. they'll have thought uh, the productivity mm. and things like that. They'll have got rid of those and brought in a different yeah. packaging or something. But actually, they'd have been better off just keeping that lovely packaging yeah. the whole time. And I think it's that thing about sometimes we think we need to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, that's, that's what and I'm trying to say. And it's that yeah. thing about actually there's something really beautiful about when they founded the company, they looked at where those skills were, where that craft was and how they could harness into the tradition, tap into the tradition yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. 
and they've done the same thing all along with their company. They've looked, they've kind of cherished what was fantastic and changed what yeah. could be bettered, if that makes sense. So yeah. that's, you know, I'm very evangelical about this company. I think they're fabulous. Yeah. So um, just everything's lovely. Gorgeous. <laughs> right, now, while we're on needles, mm. I mean, uh, this morning when we were doing prep and Ben yes. said, oh, you need to get a needle gripper, I was looking for, like, a machine, not a machine, <laughs> but, like, a pair of scissors, you know, the things... Yes, you... like pliers. Yes, yeah, but yeah. not these. I just put it yeah. in the shop, because look at these, right? They look like two, pla two corn plasters, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> yeah, they look like they're definitely for something else. Right, so you tell me what they, yeah. how you use So, them. basically, this is fantastic. If you know where you've got multiple layers of fabric that you're trying to get through, and sometimes your needle gets a bit stuck, it's very difficult, and you can end up bending your needles a lot, yeah. because you're putting a lot of pressure on them. Mm. So, you end up with a banana-shaped needle. Um, it's really hard to get accurate stitching from. So, this is a little piece of the rubber, and you basically wrap it around the needle and use it to grip so, oh, so, so, so you get two in the packet, you, get two you, don't, in the need, pack. you don't use both of no, them at the same time. No. You, well, you can have one in each hand if you're working oh, with two-handed. Yeah. So like when I stitch, I'm quite often work, I work with both hands. So you have one in each hand and it means that you're quicker. But that's why there's two. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. You stitch with... Both hands. So if you're doing like, like an, an embroidery, yes. you've got both hands going at the same yeah. time. Yeah, doing the same thing. I'm not doing different things in each hand. That would be crazy now. No, 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 no. But, no. Um, but yeah, so what you do is um, you put your dominant hand, the hand you write with, underneath the frame because you need to... Oh, I thought you meant you had two, th two needles and threads. <laughs> you going like I'd this. I'd love to be able to do that, like a machine. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, productivity right, is right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, but, yeah, so you're working with both hands. So pulling and then pushing and then pulling and pushing. Yeah, together. yeah, yeah, yeah. I so if you've got one... <laughs> Just double checking, John. Um, so, yeah, so you've got one in each hand, a, a needle gripper in each hand, not a needle in each yeah, hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, and then you can use, that's where you've got the two. But, yeah, it just helps. And also, if you have arthritis or rheumatism, it means that you need less pressure. Yes. So quite often we say if you have, like, um, arthritis or rheumatism, people quite often stop. Yes. But we quite often say maybe scale up the... Um, Scale down the type of thread you're using or make sure you're using a nice sleek fabric, yeah. a nice, nice sleek thread, something with less twists in, but also a, a looser weave, but also a bigger needle because yeah. it helps you to grip. Oh. So, and then this also. So you again, don't give up the love? No, absolutely not. You can tailor it to where yeah. you're at. So, uh, what did you say this was? Because it feels funny. It's rubber. So it's, yeah, it's, it's completely rubber. Yep, there you go, rubber. But um, so it's, but it's just. I say they're brilliant. I mean, and, and again, simple. simple. You know, it, you don't have to do anything complex with it. It sits there, goes in your embroidery case, in your tool bag, and then, as I say, really good to go. But uh, it's really two good. Seventy five. Yeah, it does, and it feels a bit like on the old-fashioned mm. plasters. It yeah. does feel like that, but yeah. it's not sticky or anything like that. But it's substantial. Mm. Sometimes, as well, when we use very, very fine needles, sometimes they can go the eye, even though it's blunt at the eye end, sometimes when they're so thin, they can be quite... Oh, no. Uh, when I was saying all these fingers yeah. had... If you didn't have... If you have your thimble on that one, but even these we fingers... We used to say you'd earned your stitcher stripes. Oh, don't. But it so, was so, And yeah. you get in the bath at night time. And your yes, hands are like... Yes, it's disgusting. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, well, this is quite good, actually, because we used to sometimes use micropore as well. So we'd use micropore and then use those, and it would just protect... Um, and it's actually really Fanta useful. Well, fantastic so. idea. £2.75. Now, pins. Yes. These, have you got these? Oh, uh -huh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so these are epingles. Uh, quilt, uh, they're called quilting pins, these. Uh, 50 of them. Uh, uh, they're two inches long, 0.6 millimetres wide. But what's so special? Oh, they're nice. So, quilters pins. Yeah. So, first of all, they've got a flat head. These, you can run your iron over them. They won't melt. Um, and also, so they lie flat in the fabric for your ironing. Yeah. Again, they've used that special steel, so they have a bit of whippiness oh, to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, considering how long that is, they're not kind of going, you don't get the feeling it's going to break. Right. So it's got a whippiness to it, which means that, as I say, you're, you're fine to run over it with your sewing machine. It's not going to do too much you know, damage to anything. And, um, and as I say, but they're nice and long, so they're going to hold multiple layers of fabric. Well, no, no, I like, I, I love pins that long. And I yes. do, I'm not a quilter, I'm a dressmaker, yeah. but just when you're doing fittings and things, or you, when you're doing a long yes. um, evening gown, to pin all the seams together, Take forever, nice and yeah. they're nice and fine as yes, well. Yes, exactly. They? Well, this is the thing because quite often with fine fabrics, they end up snagging. Yeah. So they have a nice fineness to them with the strength. Yes. So that's um, 
that's why you'd want a quilter's pin like this from Bohan. So, Perfect. Yeah. £12.99. £12 now, you might think that Helen's got a pin cushion on her wrist. Um, oh, this, this bag's broke. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the bag's broken. I'm going to open it. <laughs> well, no, no, look, look. You're oh, my yes. this. But it's kind of got a bit funny, actually. Ooh. It's sealed underneath. I won't open it. Would so, you like, yeah, like do that, that one. Do that one. So, there you go. So, so now, it's a soft, cushiony pin cushion on the top. Yeah, but it's not heavy, is no, it? No, it's not. It's got like a bicycle clip style uh, bracelet to it. Yeah. All fully kind of engraved with the Bowen um, li logo. Yeah. Um, and then it's, you've, got, you've got your pin cushion on the top. So you, I put my pins and needles in it. And, um, and they're just really versatile. They're all on hand then. Um, and so if you put them into your jumper or the yeah, arm or of your, your sofa or, yeah. you know, your mouth, as you say. Oh, how many times have you been sitting yeah. in the oh. armchair and you turn, you just go like yes. that and put it in there? Yes. Yeah, forget that they're there. Yeah, um, exactly. But it's weird. It feels... Um, I don't know what it's got inside it. It's, it's got like, um, it's got fabric inside it. It's stuffed with kind of fabric, but it's, it means that if you get sponge in there, for example, there's particular types of sponge that disintegrate. Yeah. So the more you put your needles into it, the more it more kind of degrades. Yeah, yeah. So this won't do that. But, and the other thing that I love about this, I mean, considering the price is ridiculously cheap for what you're getting. 23 but also, yeah. this is a staple of a lot of the couture houses. The, um, when they're doing their twirls and their fittings, they have these yeah. um, on the arm. And we know that Jean-Paul Gaultier used to use this with his bow hand to the point that his statue in his hometown has this on his arm. No. On his, on his statue. Yeah. So you're buying into fashion history as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when I say they're a good brand, they're a good brand. Yeah. You're using the same, you're buying the same as the couturiers use. So, yeah, can't go wrong with that. And I love the branding on it. Yeah. So, so that's the black one, the plain black one. But we also have it in the black and white stripe. Now, this looks like a different fabric. Your fabric it's, yeah, it's was a like, more woven. Yeah, um, it's like a jersey, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. There's the black and white. Can you see the black and white one there? Mm. It's nice, isn't it? So exactly the same thing. You've got your um, bicycle clip. Yeah. Most people won't know what a bicycle clip is anymore, will they? <laughs> bicycle <laughs> clip uh, bracelet on there. Yeah. Plus your... Pu and it's nice and sturdy. But it's not heavy at all. Yeah. It's not in the slightest bit heavy. Twenty three ninety nine. £23.99. Right, just two, a couple of other things from the same company. We are going to be doing some sewing. We're doing hard hanger and cross stitch in this app. Uh, so this, oh, you got that one there, right? Okay, so this is a mechanical pencil, isn't it? Yeah, so it's like a chalk pencil, but it's got um, kind of the ceramic um, lead in it. And it's um, got the fabric eraser in the end. Yeah. But they're just, I just really like them. They're very versatile. But they give you a lovely fine light. Well, I was going to say, this would be good for, I know you showed us with this yes. earlier. But now, does that come out if yes. I mark my... Yes, yeah, so you can use the fabric eraser in the end. You can use a damp cloth. Um, so it will come off. And you can also use low-tack tape to help ease it off. Oh, OK. Well. OK, perfect. So, yeah. And they've got uh, refills here, which have got multiple colours. So... Um, you've got the pink. The oh, that's the good, because normally you just get the colour that, exactly. that you normally yeah. buy a pink one and you've got pink refills. Exactly. So I've got the um, pink on here, but it's it's a nice line. You can see it nice and clearly. Yeah. And um, as I say, so. So in the refill, what have I got? I've got pink. You've got pink, you've got white and you've got kind of black grey. Brilliant. So that's fantastic. Isn't it? 13 99 And all, all beautifully. Located. Now these all come from, this is what we call drop ship. These don't come from our warehouse. They come from Bohans or whoever yeah. supplies yeah. Um, them, don't they? Uh, and, but you're still only one PMP. So even though, so if you've come in today and bought something from us, that'll come from our, our warehouse. You've got anything from this. Uh, is it the same hour, is it the same place as the yes. um, table, yeah. the yeah. cushions earlier? So they'll all come from the other one, but you don't pay any extra PMP. It's all included in your one daily PMP. And then the last but not least from these uh, things before we go on to sewing. What's this then? So it's an air and water erasable pen. You see, because normally you either buy one or the other. One or the other. Yes. So what you can find is that some air erasable pens, you draw them on and then they either disappear really quickly or you've done multiple lines over the top and you can't erase it. Right. So this is air erasable. So if you do just one fine line, it will eventually erase on its own. If you've done multiple lines over the top of the area in the same place, if you then find it's not removing, you can water erase it. Oh, OK, brilliant. So it's kind of... And it was a nice fine line as well, this yeah, one, wasn't it? Yeah, nice fine line. There so again, go. nice and controlled. So, yeah, really easy. They've called it self-vanishing. Self-vanishing fabric marker, £6.25. 
Beautiful. Yeah. Right. So now, mm. uh, we'll recap that later, but what we're doing this hour is we're doing a bit of hard hanger. Yes. Hard hanger. So now I'll show you both the kits that are available because one is straightforward hard hanger and the other one is hard hanger with a bit of cross stitch in it as well. So we'll start with this one, which must be this one here, the table runner here. So now it doesn't look very much because all you've got is white fabric and white thread. Yes. That's all you need for hard hanger. White thread. There you go, and it's this that you're making it. Ten pounds coming off the price tag. Eighty nine ninety nine. It's quite big. It's uh, forty one by one hundred. Oh, there you go. It keeps going. Oh God! Imagine how Good impressive size. that would be. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Now this is something you're going to make, and it'll become a family heirloom. You'll pass it down, like the ones I said my nan had and my mum had, and I've now got the embroidered one. This is going to become one of those. So on split pay as well. That one split pay. OK, so that's that one. But then if you just want a little um, a kind of something for your... Um, I want to say a dressing table. That would be yeah. nice on a dressing table, wouldn't it? This one here. Right. This one goes to 19.99. So if you've never done hard hanger before, what a brilliant way... Because you might not want to spend £100 no. on your first time you've done it. Whereas this... This has also got cross-stitch on it as well. But you don't have to do the cross-stitch. You don't want to. You can just leave it as it is. But So if you want to practice hard hanger for the first time, £19.99. You get the fabric, the yarn, the needle and the instructions in there. So now hard hanger, you most probably thinking, what on earth is hard hanger? What on earth is hard hanger? Well... It's a very exciting... Well, we start, sorry, we're starting off with the, with the yes, table runner yes. and then going to the other one. So hard is a very exciting type of embroidery from Norway, so from the west of the country, by the Hardanger Fjords. And so basically it's a type of... It became a national dress item, actually. They, they use it quite often um, on um, apron fronts and they'll put very brightly coloured fabrics underneath because you're cutting parts of it away. And then it kind of creates these snowflake patterns. Now, we actually originally think it originated from a technique in Persia in about the 7th century. Oh, wow. So, and then what happened is... That oh, so the Norwegians have just taken it then? Well, as many things with embroidery, we, we kind of adapt and imitate. So it's, you know, a very flattering yeah. form, art form. Um, but what we take the best things and adapt. So what we do is we, we think it came through Europe and... It turned in Italy into kind of things like the reticella and the Venetian needle laces and, and bobbin laces yeah. inspired those. And then as it travelled through and got to Norway, it turned into hardanger. Oh. So it's got that lovely history to it. Yeah. And as I say, it's now, it's a little bit like, I always think my family's Scottish, so I always think it's a bit like their national dress and approach to national dress is a bit like... Scots with kilts. Oh, no, no, I can tell you exactly yeah. what it is because Jan Olaf's so uh, obviously proud. from Norway. Basically, um, his mum mm. would have, because in Norway they wear national dress with pride. We yes. don't, we don't, have, it here. We it, don't yeah. have it here at all. So the national dress depends on where you're from. So that the, the dress that the ladies wear and the clothes that the men wear are from wherever you're from. Mm -hmm. So that's not a hard hanger at yeah. all. That's just your traditional costume. And Jan Olaf got married recently and they both got married in... Yeah. Their, they both came from different parts of Norway, so they both had completely different yeah. outfits on. But the ladies had, first of all, silverware, which the buckles on the front of the dress, the buckles on the shoes and some sort of... Um, the matriarch would have a, like a little crown sort of thing. And this isn't something that just comes out it can, you can wear it to church on a Sunday, you wear it to christenings, you wear it to weddings. You, so if you go to a wedding or a funeral or, or, or something in Norway, there'll be people like you and me sitting like this Absolutely. in our normal clothes. And then there'll be a lady there yeah. in complete tradition. Yeah. But the pride and joy wasn't just the silverware, because the silverware is the one thing that gets passed down from the generations. The aprons that they wear. Mm -hmm. Now, these aprons, I was really shocked. So we went to one of the traditional um, costume, not even costumes, fashion shops that sell them. Mm -hmm. The... the Basic clothes cost a fortune. I mean, a whole, we're talking like thousands for yeah. an outfit. Yeah. Like trousers, jacket, a man's trousers, jacket, shirt, four or five thousand pounds. We're talking, ma but then you can get ladies' aprons, which are like ten thousand pounds of things because of the hard hanger that's on the apron. And it becomes, and, and if you put your foot through your apron, there's all sorts going on. So when, with little kids, they make broad your onglet, broad your onglet ones for kids because they don't want to rip it. But you can buy. 
panels of Hardanger for hundreds and hundreds of pounds. And that's exactly what this is. Exactly. Right, I've talked enough. So exactly. tell us what how we do it, because it's it's right. not drawn thread work, is no, it? No, well, it isn't. There's elements of that to it, because we're withdrawing some of the fabric threads. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to get rid of this. Yeah. Um, but having said that, there's parts of it called cluster blocks. So what yes. you do is you kind of put your cluster blocks in first. Now, a cluster block is, if you can see this, it's this satin stitch that goes around the outside. Yeah. So it's very textual. You use the perlay threads that we talked about earlier. Yeah. So it's a twisted thread and you get lots of that in the pack. So, and you get two sizes. So the thick one you use for the cluster block and it's basically a block of satin stitch. Yes. So what you do, very similar to what we were looking at earlier, oh, sorry. you get a grid. So if I just grab these grids, so you get your picture of what you're doing. Yeah. And then you've got this grid. You've got two parts to this particular piece, one and two. And it explains to you on your diagrams at the top how you're doing the actual stitching, just to remind you. I can just open that out. So the stitch diagrams at the top there. Yeah. Okay. And then, again, it's gridded. You count your way round it in the same way as we did with our cross stitch that we talked yeah. about earlier. And then, um, as I say, you can see I've highlighted mine so I don't lose yeah. myself in the pattern. What you're doing with your cluster blocks mm. is you're actually making a framework yeah. because in a minute you're going to cut threads away, yes. aren't you? Yeah. And you can't cut the threads away mm -hmm. without the cluster blocks being in no. position, can exactly. you? Yeah. Exactly. Now, each of these squares, and it tells you this clearly on your pack, each of these squares represents two threads of the fabric on this. Right. So it's important to remember that because otherwise you're going to end up something in half scale. Right. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So each of these is two threads. So I've got five stitches over four threads of the fabric. Right. Yeah. So, and they change direction. So I'm going to come up with my thread. I'm going to put my stitch. So up in hole one, I'm going across four threads. So one, two, three, four. So I'm going to do a repeat of those, yep. there's five of them in the block. But it's very, very simple. It's just yes. a straightforward, straight stitch, isn't it? Absolutely. But they, they always, as I say, the effect of them, it's very lacy, very delicate, very structured. It always reminds me of snowflakes. I just love yeah. the look of it. And, and also, I think because of the part of the world, you know, it's so closely associated with. But uh, as you say, I mean, it's where embroidery is elevated mm. um, and kind of elevates the outfit and just makes it so special for them. Yes. Um, so I've done them horizontally. The next block goes, because you're making these triangle shapes yep. around the edge, the next block goes vertically. Yeah, so I mean, they're triangles on this one, but a traditional cluster block is a sort of a, a square on point, isn't it, when, yes. you, when you're just doing the traditional? Absolutely, one, yeah. but they've kind of adapted it yeah. over, the, over time to create all of these decorative kind of borders and edges. Yeah. It's really interesting how they've made it work. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's a really fascinating... Um, technique and you can see it grows quite quickly yeah is this so, cotton what, what's this um yeah so I think I'll let me just check with this I think I'm just gonna cotton. check now yeah. uh, content 100% yes. cotton yeah 100% cotton and the yarns 100% cotton as well so it washes beautifully yeah. as well so oh yeah well they have to because they wear them because yeah. they 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 there's their traditional costume but if you're to christening mm -hmm. the last time I saw uh, uh, Liv Unni, uh, Yano Loves Mum, wearing hers. It was her uh, granddaughter's confirmation. Aww. And um, so they all had, they all had yeah. them. But they're, they're ones that were uh, in the generation below me. Yeah. So Yano Love, uh, not Yano, uh, Liv Unni was 66, I think. Mm -hmm. And all her generation all had their traditional, but yes. the ones who were in their 40s didn't. Yes. But then the little kids were wearing their traditional. So it's kind of like, I, what I love about it is it's not, you know, if we wear something different in this country, people yes. go, oh, what's she doing wearing yeah. that? Nobody thought, you know, and it's, it's not like a fashion item. It's like a costume, isn't it? But nobody went... Ooh, this is it. A, you know what I mean? It was, I, it, that's what I quite liked I, about it. I love the fact that there's kind of room in it as well. It's a national costume but there's, and it's regional, but there's also room for your own self-expression in it. Yeah. And I just think that's, it's such a, it's a living yes. art form. Oh, no, and totally. And the, the men have ties that are cross-stitched yeah. to wet their region. Sort of yes. thing. So each, each of them have a pattern. So they have, you, I mean, they cost a fortune as well because I went to buy one for Jan Olaf's Christmas present and it was like really a lot of like, money. <laughs> but it, they, so, so the tie is the tie of your region sort of thing. So it has the pattern and the colours of your yes. region. Yeah. 
Right, so you continue with that and you can see the pattern builds up as yep. we were talking about before. So I've just put in these ones here. Yeah. So you build up and the same thing on the other side. So you can see here I've started the other edge yep. of that. And you end up with a diamond shape in the middle. Yes. And in the diamond shape, there's these snowflake areas. And then outside on both sides, we've got these eyelets. So right. they're, they're not pulled too tightly. So you're not making a hole really. Yep. So, but they're stitched like an eye, like, like an Algerian eye. Yeah. So again, you're coming up um, with this one, you're coming up in um, hole one, going down in hole three over yep. two threads of the fabric. And you're using the finer thread for this. And it does tell you this in the pattern. Okay. And you do, or would you do all of your cluster blocks, all of your stitching before you even thought about putting a pair of scissors to it? Yes. The reason being, normally, because when you're cutting away the fabric, you're destabilising it. Yeah. So the cluster block is to stabilise. So you ideally want to do all of your clusters first. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I went to a show, um, I think I, I think it was in Glasgow, and I was on a stand, um, and it was really funny because a lady had come up and was talking to me, and she'd worked a whole dinner table tablecloth of hardanger. It's taken up years. Mm -mm. And um, and I said to her, oh, have you got photographs? And she had, but she hadn't cut the holes in. And I was like, where are the holes? And she was like, I'm too scared to cut them out. Oh, and I was like, but you've done, point. you've done all of that work and it's beautiful. Yeah. But the, the holes are what gives it drama. Yeah. And, um, and the delicacy of it. And she was like, but what if it all falls to pieces after all that work? And I was like, but it won't. But like, in theory, if the yeah. cluster blocks are all in the right place yes. it, and you've cut yeah. the right thread, you are stopping and close everything. <coughs> but, but it so. is frightening when you take a fabric like this and you suddenly start yes. cutting threads out of yeah, it. Yeah, which is why we're going to demonstrate it in a minute yeah. it's you know actually it's one of those things if you followed the instructions it, it works yes. and it's been working for a very yes, long yes, time yes, yes, yes. but I can understand if you sat for a year Absolutely. and sewn all your cluster blocks and it looks yeah. lovely already yeah to then go in because all it takes is one wrong cut and then you kind of well, not ruined it but it's kind of like yeah Instant regret. Yes. But I think the thing is, though, it's that thing. I actually said to her, I was like, are you back here tomorrow? Because I was like, it was the day one of a four day show. And I was like, I was like, I'm actually here tomorrow. If you, if you want to come back, I was like, come back in, bring your tablecloth and I'll start you off. And if it doesn't work, I will mend it for you. And she was like, I'm too scared. Oh. And I was just like, oh, no. But, you know, she was enjoying a tablecloth as it was. Yeah. But, yeah, so you don't have to cut the holes in. You can no, still but then do, it's not hard anger. Yeah, then, you can it? still do all the work. It's hard anger without your holes. Yeah. So, um, but, yeah, so we'll demonstrate how you do your cutting. Brilliant. And it all makes sense and you'll be like, oh, okay. Because when yeah. you see it, you're like, it's so simple. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but it is terrifying because you're taking your scissors yeah, to something you absolutely. don't think you should be taking your scissors to. Yeah, absolutely. And then, as I say, so I've done the... Um, little eyelets there right. and then again we've got these snowflake shapes in the middle so again they're satin stitch so they're just um clusters of five stitches and then a four thread gap so on here does it show me where my cuts are on, on this chart or is so that separate what it explains do you have to get to, if i'm jumping ahead tell me no to no up. it's fine um it's good to good to be asked can you see it explains on the diagram yep. step by step which ones you cut away yeah so it does explain that um, but also where you've got your little arrow kind of stitches, you know you've got stitches and thread. Where you've got a gap in the middle of the cluster blocks is going to be a hole. Fine. So good to ask. No, 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 so, no. no. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can see I've started my um, my satin stitch. Yeah. And you literally, as I say, once you've got your first stitch in, you just decrease by one, um, by one thread of the fabric for each of them until you've got five of them in. Oh, okay, to create the, um, the yeah, stars. Yeah, the snowflake or the star, yeah. So, one, two, three, four, five. No, can't count. One, one more. Mm -hmm. uh, there you go. And then a hole of four. So, one, two, three, four. And then mirror image that. So. And then just get bigger. Again, it's going to be totally addictive, isn't it? It is. Do you know, and the thing is as well, it's one of those things, if for whatever reason, white on white isn't your thing, you can swap out the perlay threads for a colour, for a coloured perlay. That would have to be a perlay, wouldn't it? Yeah. You want a perlay. I mean, even if your tea died, 
your pearl eye threads in your pack or just you know a dye of any kind just to um, make it color fast but but then it's still washable if, mm. you, if you've made it color fast oh no you uh, can make it completely your own you could do absolutely. rainbow or whatever couldn't you? Just, variegated this is the, this is the tradition it. isn't it yes absolutely way, yeah. but yeah some people do worry about the white on white mm. so for seeing it um so yeah so it's one of those things that again, yeah, but once you've cut your holes, absolutely, you see, that lady won't realise how amazing absolutely. hers would look if she did cut the holes. Absolutely, I was like, oh, come on, bring it, bring it in, yeah, I'll help like you to with it. Start chopping so, away at it. I so. know, I know. I was like, I was just really hopeful that I could get her started and she'd get her confidence up. Yeah, like, but then imagine if you cut two and then she went home and didn't, and she just had this thing with two holes in the end. <laughs> I'd have, I'd have made it nice and central. That's yeah, a feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you can see that those build up around yeah. there, how they kind of come round on themselves. Just repeat it. There's a lot of repetition in it, and that's actually a lovely thing. Yeah. So what I'm going to. So do are there any cutouts in the snowflakes in the middle there? Yes. So what you can do, same thing. So um, you can choose to take out the blank corners. Yeah. So what we do is we stitch all the way round, and that leaves threads in the middle gap. Right. Okay. And then what we can do is we can needle weave it, and I'm going to show you. Oh, so it's needle weaving. weaving. They also do things like. Um, yes. Pigeon's eyes or something yep, like that. Dove's or dove's eyes. And I'm going to demonstrate oh, okay. that for you well, as well. We better get move on because we've got so, a few minutes I left. I know, I know. We're running out of time. Yeah. So I'm going to swap over to my other frame. Okay. That's all right. So I'm just going to swap this out. Bring this one back. Oh, we've done the right one yet. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we've actually gone to the other kit now. Yes. Because this is, this is this kit. Same principle, same principle. The only difference is the 1999 kit um, has cross stitch on it as well. And it's obviously much smaller. Yeah. So again, you can see I'm working with a template. I've marked in what I've worked already. Yeah. And it's, it's a repeat here. So you can see this is for the four corners, it repeats. Yeah. Okay, so you've only got the one quarter of it illustrated. Yes, of course. So this one, what they've done is they've put black into where the holes are. Right. Now, if that helps you, take a marker pen to your mm -hmm. one and put your black holes yeah. in. So what I've done is I've started to cut out. And you can see also the texture on this. It tells you that is needle weaving. That's right. a dove's eye. Yeah. So, and it does tell you in your diagram. So There's a spider's web one as well, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. There, there's, see? Told you. See? So what we're going to do is you're going to identify... We've got blocks of four that we're leaving in. So right. I'm going to make sure that I'm leaving four threads. So one, two, three, four. Yeah. And then I want to get rid of those four. So what you're going to do is nice sharp pair of scissors. Well, it's a shame we haven't got some little red handled miniature scissors, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Show the picture. We can still put them through, though, can't we? Yeah, so they've still got them in stock. We just haven't been sent them, that's all. So you've just cut. So I've cut the four threads that I don't want. And I'm just taking them out carefully so I can take them through the woven bit and bring them up to the other end. So you can see it leaves that space. Oh, you only cut them at one end, though, at the moment? Well, it's easier to cut at one end. And if you've got a very big space, you can cut in the middle and weave it back at both oh, ends okay, and okay. weave at both ends. Because this is a nice, it's a small area. Yeah. And then pull it tight and then trim it. You see? So it leaves... Oh, the picture's not available, so I can tell you about the mini embroidery scissors, soft touch, red handles, 5.5 centimetres and the 28 night dive, but I can't show you a picture. <laughs> so, yeah, and you can see I'm going to get rid of four, these four as well. So I'm going to snip that. So you see, your cluster blocks hold everything in place. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just be careful not to stitch it, to snip it with your scissors when you when you cut in. Yeah. If it helps, you can have tweezers to hold the threads tight. You can see I'm manoeuvring them upwards so I can cut them, pull them nice and tight when I cut them. I wonder how many people at home are going... <gasps> <gasps> yeah, not, holding their breath, not breathing, yes. just in case. Just in case. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, Jenny Jackson says, Helen is so amazing. I could watch all day and listen to the history of everything. I so want to give this a go. That's from Jenny Jackson. Thank you. Christine, oh, Charlie. Christine says, brilliant camera work today. Trudy says, hello, John, Ben, Charlie and Dan. John, love seeing you yesterday. Thank you so much for asking about sewing classes. My pleasure. Uh, the flower head pins are flat. That means great for dressmaking and patchwork. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah. Carol says, uh, binker. That's a blast from the past. Yeah, that's taking you back. Right, what right. we're going to do is, can you see this leaves us with spaces like this? Yeah. Where they're not crossing over, yeah. the gaps in between. That's where we're going to needle weave. Right. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your thread and you're going to go over two and under two. 
and then you're going to come back and go over the ones that you went under and under the ones. Oh, that okay, over. that's easy. I thought you were going to have to go one, 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 one. But no, two, 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 you yeah. can do one, 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 but actually, it's the more traditional type is the double. Oh. So don't worry. So it's it's more traditional to have the kind of slightly chunkier. Um, and you just want to keep an eye on your tension because what you don't want is to pull it really tight in the middle and end up with like a triangle. Yes, yes, yes. That's, a, that's a different... It is a different looking tile, but, but yeah. for these, you, you want, want to try to, and yeah. keep it all square. So you can see, you can just, if you think you've pulled it too tight like that, yeah. you can just, just ease it back yeah. with your needle. So it's nice and straightforward. I think this 19, oh, this 1999 kit is brilliant because it gives you your first go at hard hanger and you can do some cross stitch and you make yourself a nice little doily something. It's 28 by 28 centimetres, so it's not small, 10 inches, just over 11 inches square. See, it doesn't take long to actually do it. looks like one of those um, Danish pastries. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Well, except Norwegian, Norwegian pastry. <laughs> so, and then you can bring it back and you'll do the next one there. Yeah. So, so it's just such a nice technique. Yeah. You know, so, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get halfway with this and I'm going to show you how to do the dove's eyes. Yeah. We've got time. Yeah, I've got 10 minutes. <gasps> there you go. Luxuriating in time over here. Yeah. We've done all right this morning. I had a little pocket history of, yeah. of um, hard anger and a little bit of a chat about tools. And, uh, yeah, good. So we're about halfway now. Yeah. So make sure your tension's where you want to. Would you ever leave these like that, or do they have to have sti weave stick? No, What's you it called? can weave leave stitch? it. Yeah, needle weaving. Need so weaving. you can leave them like that, but they're just they're more secure um, when you've needle woven them. And then it's just really pretty. No, 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 so, no, it is. Yeah. yeah, the traditional thing is to needle weave yeah. them. Also, they um, can catch on anything. Yeah, they? And I mean, the other thing that you sometimes do is they sometimes um, wrap them. So they'd wrap them in two pairs. So you'd wrap round two of them and then wrap round another two. And then like two little slim bars, circular bars. Oh, OK. So that can be we'll a nice thing okay. as well. So, right, the dove size. Have we got a diagram here? Yeah, you've got, got a nice diagram. <laughs> yes. So what we do is we have to go into each quarter, the centre of each um, quarter of the thing. We twist it round. Yeah, but it's so very, very see. clearly, there's yes, no mistaking nice, where yeah. your needle's going. It's a nice clear diagram. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come from the centre of so the So you make one. it in one of the empty ones? Well, you can start it in an empty one, but you can do it, you can do it before or after. Okay. You can do it as you go along. So you can come along here. Right, so you've just gone diagonally across. Yes, but leave it a bit loose so it's a bit circular. And then, can you see as I pull it, I've come up on the other side. So when I come to Oh, the side, I see, yes, he's distorting it into shape. Yes. So it twists it around a little bit. You see? You see, so you get that lovely little loop. You start to see when you do the fillings like this, you can start to see how it relates to the reticella, mm. can't you? It's really pretty. And you can put beads on it and stuff as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Little yeah. pearls or, you know, there's all sorts of things you can do with it. It's really pretty. Or like tiny glass kind yeah, of beads. absolutely. Yeah. But you can see you get these little decorations yeah. then. But then I can carry on with my needle weaving. Yeah. So... So you never really cut your, cut your thread? No. How do I, I, oh, how do I finish off when I'm doing these? So what you can do is, again, with this, you're not really going to have a section where it's fully worked. So what you'll do is you'll work along the cluster block on the back. So take it to the edge, work underneath the cluster block for at least an inch. Right. And then you know it's going to hold in, cut it off. Yeah. So, and if you're a bit worried about it, then go in two different directions. So maybe go underneath for an inch, go back over the top of one of them on the back and back underneath in right. the direction you came from. So it makes it a really pretty. Yeah. See, now you've gone to two-handed, what's it? I know. It's habits. Old habits die hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I can paint and draw with both hands. Oh, can you? Yeah, but I write with my right hand. Yeah. So, yeah. How did that come about then, painting? 
painting and drawing with both hands. Yeah. Um, just something I've kind of always done. Um, but it looks completely different, like in a good way. Oh, okay. Um, but it's... So if you drew a, if you had a daisy and yeah. you drew it with your right hand and you drew it so over the same daisy with your left hand, they'd look different. Yeah, but in a good way. Yeah, but I can't... If I'm doing things that are really precise, I use my right hand. If I want a freer look to it, more expressive, I use the left. Oh. So it's quite useful. Um, so... Oh, you see, you'd have been ducked in the village pond if you were... I know, I work. know. Well... I, I think there's quite a few in my family, would yeah. you to be honest. <laughs> that, if, you, if you're watching family, she... Uh, so, mean I mean it in a nice way, said so with love. So, yeah, but, um, but yeah, so it's one of those. But we, um, it's really handy, though. So if people are wanting to start to do more things with the do less dominant hand, you start with things like using your left hand, for example, if you're right-handed, to do your hair, brush your hair. I don't have to do that. Brush your teeth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So do your cardigan, up, your cardigan buttons, because we're so dominant generally. Yeah, 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 yeah. You focus on trying to do everyday things with the, with other, the other hand. With the other hand. And then, and then it starts to build up, and it's so good for you, so good for your brain. So Maybe you should hands. teach kids that at school, right from the word go. Do you know what I mean? Well, we encourage dominance. We, we have a natural dominance, but we encourage it with the way we work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so actually, it's a really good exercise. And also, if anyone, uh, you know has had a stroke or anything like that, if you've developed that, that kind of ability to use the other hand already... You, oh, it, yes, of course, because it, 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 yeah. it, when you have a stroke, it's one side normally, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah it affects oh. one side. So, But it's very, very good for you. And it also means your body's working in unison. Yeah. So when I'm stitching, if I'm working with both hands, otherwise it's just one half yeah, of my yeah, body. Yeah, 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 yeah. So actually it's much better balanced. And also when you do use the other side... It, like, for example, yesterday I was giving out bags at the oh, NEC, yeah. right? And all, everything in this arm was yes. covered with bags. So I was hand, yeah. handing out with my dominant hand. This arm at the end of the day was like, like this sort of thing. <laughs> and if you're you, you, you using <laughs> yeah. both of them... Yeah. That's oh, this one's sold out and we haven't even talked oh, about the cross stitch yet. There you go. We've only got a couple of minutes left. Just talk me through yeah. this cross stitch. So the lovely one. thing about this is it's got the cross stitch on it as well. So it's actually a really good crossover piece mm -hmm. so not only have you got the lovely white work you've also got the color yeah and I, I think they're like violets aren't they and you've got the two different types of thread oh, there yeah. so you've got the perlay thread which is a high shine which you get loads yeah of those, high those. shine twisted thread that you'll use for your hard angle which we've just been using and yeah. then you also get Again, on the same kind of board, you've got um, the stranded cottons, which are all there to use, as we've demonstrated in the last uh, show that yeah. I was on with you, how to work. And you use two strands of those for your work. Mm -hmm. So, and you just work... When you say two strands, you mean you split Yes, yeah, so each. you take a thread out. Yeah. So take two strands out of the thread, yeah. six strands in a thread. You take two strands out, pop them back together again, and then use them in your needle to work your cross stitch. It will give you a nice impact with your colour and your coverage. And you'll do it, it's exactly gridded in the same way. You know, we talked about the ordnance survey. Yep. Every symbol is associated with the colour on your chart, so you can see that. And, and would you use each bit, like, you know, we start at the centre. Mm. Would I use that as, a, as an individual bit and start at the centre of that one? Yeah, oh, I you mean... you wouldn't work to start here, would you? So what this is done... So you'd fold your fabric in half again and it shows you the centre of the fabric. Oh, OK. So you need to find the centre so of the So you've got arrows and you've got a centre of a fabric. So yeah. you can fold it. But what you can do is, on that fold line, you know it's a quarter design. So you know if you found the centre of it and that's there and you put a pin or a little mm -hmm. mark with your erasable pen or your chalk pen, you know that that line there, you can start anywhere on that line there or that line there. So I don't need to start here? No. Oh, OK. No, you yeah. don't. So that's the beauty of it. It's yeah. really straightforward. And as I say, you can work through... I mean, I would potentially think about doing my cluster blocks and my cross stitch, and then I'd cut out all my holes, and then I'd work um, all the decorations, so really? the needle weaving and the dove size and Fabulous. things. Uh, ben, do you want to recap on anything? Oh, just let's get this on screen. So this is the big kit. This is the... Um, uh, it's massive, this one. I'm yeah. just trying to... There it is, there it is, there it is. So it's a table runner mm. that measures 41 by 100. It's over a metre long. So don't think you're going to do this in an afternoon. And it's got the most beautiful um, hardanger stitch... Oh, sorry, mm. shall I put it in shot? There you go. Hard, oh, there you go. It's easy to see it without <laughs> the plastic. There you go, there you go. 
Beautiful heart, Dangapan. So now there's some cut out and there's some not cut out on that one as well. Yeah, so the ones on the outside, um, it's got the cluster blocks. So you've you've done the cluster blocks and then you've cut out in yeah. the same way that I just demonstrated. But on the graph of this, um, you can see it's this one. This hasn't got anything cut out in it on the inner edge. Yep. So it doesn't have this decoration that tells you you're cutting out. And as I say, if it helps you, where you don't have the decoration within the cluster block border, you know it's a hole. So anything that Colour it currently in, is yeah. white, if it helps you to just block it in in black, then you know those are where the holes are. If that's useful to you, then do it. Brilliant. It's, yeah. you know, keep it straightforward. Uh, when you're next. Start of the month, next month for my stuff. I was going to say, I was going to ask, and I thought I better not say this. So you're actually bringing some Helen Cook designs. I'm bringing some of my kits in. What yeah. date's that then? Uh, good sure question. Don't remember. worry, don't worry, don't worry. I'll look it up. At the beginning of next month. It is. Beginning yeah. Of next month. Yeah. Brilliant. Start of the month. Thank you. Oh. And when's the wedding? Always. Good question. Oh. Who knows? Who knows? That, this wedding's <laughs> been the longest in planning. It's, it hasn't is, it? isn't it? But then we did be, have COVID. It's going to be an minute. extravaganza. Yeah. Join your old age pension at this stage. Tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's menu, here we go. Bold and beautiful fabrics oh. at 8 o'clock. Now, Anna Sands in tomorrow. We're doing the 